でも音を立てなければエミーは気づきません物陰に隠れて見られないようにもできますそして対抗手段の代表格がサムスがエミーから見えなくなるファントムクロークという光学明細アビリティですこれの使い方がゲームの進行を大きく作用します歯が立たない敵に見つからないように行動するエミーのゲームパートはメトロイド体系の強烈なスパイスになっていると思いますここまで新要素を中心に話してきましたので全体のゲームデザインが変わっちゃったんじゃないかなと思われたかもしれませんでもそこはご安心ください従来通りのゲーム性に磨きをかけてアクションや探索要素の強化や工夫はバッチリですサムスリターンズのアクションを洗練させてフリーエームやメレーカウンターなどを扱いやすくしました基本アクションとしてスライディングっていうのを追加するなどアクション面はかなりの充実ぶりですのでゲーム体験はより快適になっています当然メトロイドを遊んだことのない方もいらっしゃると思いますので最後にメトロイドの探索要素について簡単に触れておきますねメトロイドは探索型のアクションゲームですパワーアップアビリティを取得するとサムスのアクションがどんどん増えるそれらのアクションでサムスの行動範囲が広がっていくという仕組みですこれまでになかったパワーアップアビリティも当然追加しています特定の壁や天井に捕まって移動できるスパイダーマグネットなどはその一例です他にもいろいろありますのでお楽しみにいろいろなアビリティを使う自由度の高い探索は今まで以上だと思いますよりダイナミックになった快適なアクションによる自由な探索と自分が追われる身となって行動する恐怖という2種類の刺激が融合した「メトロイド・ドレッド」はシリーズ経験のあるなしにかかわらず楽しんでいただけます新しいデザインのメトロイドをこの後の任天堂ツリーハウスライブで紹介しますダンよろしく Thanks, Sakamoto san. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nintendo Treehouse Live. I am super excited about this next segment where we're going to delve into an early work in progress version of Metroid Dread,、uh, show some of Samus' s new moves in action, and also, I think, get to a little bit of the、uh, way the game develops this、uh, suspense and tension that、um, gives the game its title. So, I'm joined by Audrey and Teresa from Nintendo Treehouse, and Teresa's going to take us into the depths of Planet ZDR. Yeah, all right. So let's、uh, take a deep dive into、uh, the very beginning of the game.、Um, so we're going to backtrack just a little bit to show Samus's、uh, free movement here.、Um, so, like, I just spent a little few missiles, so I'm going to use this、uh, interactive here to replenish.、Um, but one of the things I want to show here is、uh, free aim, which for those that have played,、uh, Metroid Samus Returns. This has made a comeback.、Um, you can see a lot of the, the area around as you use it.、Um, also has this little tracking system that、um, when it's、uh, targeting an enemy, it'll make that sound. I also want to take a moment to say that, as Nate and Sakamoto san already mentioned, this is the first new 2D Metroid game in 19 years. That's almost two decades. I don't know if you did the math, but、uh, that's a lot of years. We've been waiting for this for a long time, so we're, we're really excited to be finally showing this to everyone. <laughs> Here's another returning move from Metroid Samus Returns, which is the melee counter. Um, one of my favorite、um, features.、Um, and then a new one is or the development of the melee counter. I'm going to let that guy move a little bit back. <laughs> Come back. The melee dash. I really love that because it doesn't break momentum. I can immediately do. A counter and immediate damage to an enemy.
Yeah, something this game does really well is improve upon the improvements from Metroid Samus Returns. So like you mentioned, we had free aim and uh, the melee counter in that game. And here we have the, frenning, the running free aim, which gives you even more freedom, and the dash melee. So instead of having to stand still, uh, still and wait for enemies to attack you, you can just go get them, which uh, really uh, has great movements to this game. Yeah, I, I love that like Samus moves so well and it's just all that freedom. It's just, this is probably the smoothest I've uh, been able to control Samus in a really long time. Absolutely, and you've opened up the map screen here, something that uh, Metroid fans know to love and adore. <laughs> yeah. uh, the map system is just as important in this game as ever, and it, it really shows you uh, the classic Metroid gameplay, uh, gameplay progression, which is back in full force in this game, where you look at your map, you identify areas that you haven't been to yet or aren't able to access yet, you try and find another way through, find a new ability, push your way forward, fill in the map, lather, rinse, repeat. So that's back and better than ever, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, and this area here is blinking away because there is a something here that I haven't discovered yet. Um, so I could use markers to kind of pinpoint it just in case I don't have an ability um, and I have to backtrack here once I'm able to explore it. Um, yeah, don't sleep on those markers. Those can be really yeah. important in this labyrinthine world. <laughs> sure. Um, but this looks curious. It is really uh, a, a part of the charm of Metroid, though, having this uh, renewed uh, sense of purpose in your backtracking paired with pushing forward. Yeah, and one, another thing I want to pinpoint is the amount of work the dev team put in in Samus's animations. Like, mm -hmm. just her animation of gripping the walls when she can't move or like holding onto the ledge. It's mm -hmm. just so yeah, looking cool. around. Yeah, you'll notice little touches everywhere, so keep an eye out for them. Mm -hmm. oh. That seamless transition to these sort of uh, story scenes is great. Little moments like this when you're in uh, helmet view for a moment really add to the isolation uh, and the tone of this game. Yeah, no, this game is a, a sequel to uh, Metroid Fusion, but you can see that her suit looks a little bit different than that, so um, that'll be a story element that people will find out what happened uh, when they play the game. We don't want to spoil too much. So these are the Emmy that mm -hmm. Sakamoto-san was talking about, and none of Samus's weapons seem to do anything against them. <laughs> So run. <laughs> yep. Oh, that slide move is so cool. She looks so cool when she's yeah. sliding. <laughs> yep. It is. Nope. Okay. Oh, no. Just, just no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, missiles don't work either. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, so scary. Uh, about this being called Dread, <laughs> that would be why. Yeah. They're very relentless. Oh, my. Oh, oh <laughs> wow. Okay. Did a little reach for me there. <laughs> <laughs> that was new. Oh, yeah. That one's clearly not well, but it's still quite frightening. Yeah, um, I'm glad that it's a bit damaged and can't completely reach to me. But we're gonna have to find a different way to tackle that enemy. You know, this thing is a uh, central unit which uh, controls various areas of the planet. Um, it's sort of a biomechanical computer, kind of an homage to uh, maybe similar units in previous Metroid games and. From this unit, uh, Samus can power up, uh, get a temporary power up uh, for her um, arm cannon to turn it into the Omega cannon. Yeah, so yeah. in typical 2D Metroid fashion, we've always seen the camera like, panned around here. And now with the uh, Omega cannon ability, there's this dynamic camera that you get to see over Samus's shoulder, which is so, so cool. <laughs> Yeah, little additions like that really flesh out the classic 2D gameplay without it feeling uh, like it strays too far from what we loved about it. Mm -hmm. Just makes it seem really powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Let's see Special. if this works against our, uh, oh. our Emmy friend here. It takes a little while to charge up, so it does. don't, don't oh. wait too long. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, I wanted to make sure I had it line <laughs> yep. of sight. I hope you enjoyed that. That's your <laughs> one shot at it. <laughs> Yeah, so it was so powerful that uh, in order to take that Emmy down, um, our, we lose the ability of the Omega Cannon, and it goes back to a regular arm cannon. It was worth it, though. We can breathe mm -hmm. easy now. It was for a moment. <laughs> I'll 
also want to point out while you're scrolling your way through all of these uh, different halls is that there are so many different ways to play this game. Uh, like Teresa is amazing with a missile. She's the queen of the missiles, <laughs> but you can also just uh, shoot your regular arm cannon. Uh, you can try and avoid enemies altogether, try and hit them all. Uh, really, it's up to you what kind of Samus you want to be. Yeah, and as... As uh, Audrey pointed out to earlier that you could use free aim to do more like line of sight shooting, but you could also just free aim shoot while you're moving as well. It's good because you need to shoot a lot of different things in this game. So many different yeah. things. <laughs> I want to see a pixelated door and now I feel distressed. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a new entryway. Um, Yep, these are the entries to the various zones that the Emmy are patrolling. And uh, once you're in there, you need to be on the lookout for those. Um. Yeah, you can hear in the background, the music is so atmospheric. It really puts mm -hmm. you on pins and needles just it listening is to it. Very, I, I am completely on edge because yeah. it's like really <laughs> eerie. <laughs> can't seem to climb these yet. Not yet. Yeah, just the detail in the backgrounds and things is great. No, oh, and there he is. There it is. Now, especially during moments like this, you can really appreciate how cool it is to have an HD uh, 2D Metroid game. <laughs> we, we tried that already, Sam. Oh. <laughs> it's not gonna work. Hey, it was worth a shot. <laughs> just one. try again, maybe we'll work on this one. Now run. <laughs> So luckily, this Emmy can't go through tight spaces, so I have an advantage here. Somehow, Emmy doesn't seem oh. worried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it's fast. Oh, you're following mm -hmm. me. I see. Okay, you gotta, you gotta get away from that. That's my recommendation. Yeah, when they go into this <laughs> uh, patrol mode and turn red, um, the door locks until they sort of lose track of you. It's still trying to get at her. Oh, yeah, it's still <laughs> looking around, but... Ooh. Try to find another way to get to me. Yeah. Also, I don't know if it's my heart throbbing through my <laughs> hands or <laughs> the controller, but it's, yeah, it was pretty nerve-wracking when facing the Emmy. They're terrifying mm -hmm. species. Yeah, T makes it seem like she's calm, cool, collected, <laughs> and badass. I like to pretend that she's actually as nervous as I am when I play it, but I don't think it's true. <laughs> I do you want to point out, like, also the backgrounds, like, the amount of detail that the developer, the development team has put into, like, not just the enemies in the forefront, but also in the background. I don't know if you guys can tell the shimmering thing in there. Out and there, it's moving. Mm -hmm. it's okay, that doesn't bode well. <laughs> yeah, well, probably. Wait, note that for the future. Uh, yeah, some of those details kind of tell the story as effectively as, you know, uh, a voiceover or anything. Yeah, if you want to be a bounty hunter, you have to pay attention to details. Mm -hmm. And watch out for gooey enemies. <laughs> <laughs> this is morbid. I love the detail of like the the rib cage in the <laughs> background. You just know something went down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, the thing about Metroid enemies too is that some of them have patterns and and you can counter them, um, and others don't like this one. So I'm just gonna <laughs> just blast him. <laughs> move him out of the way so I can use it. Um, and this room is a communication room with Adam who happens to be um, Samus's uh, ship's PC or computer. Uh, we're going to skip this part here just because we don't want to spoil any of the lore, but Dan, if you could summarize for the folks at home. Yeah, so as Samus is exploring, uh, she uploads data to Adam, or should say I, and Adam kind of gives little analysis, um, just, just really hints though, not necessarily uh, telling you where to go or anything like that. It's still up to you to kind of explore, but there's some interesting lore in there and, um, you know, some, some little hints that you can uh, potentially use. And um, in that one, Adam was basically summarizing the, uh, the Emmy and kind of the limits that they have of patrolling a zone and um, also how dangerous they are, which we, we've kind of seen, but hopefully we won't see too much firsthand here. 
Kelsey, you see T doing a great job of just shooting at the environment, looking for secrets, looking for a way forward, because it's not always going to be obvious. You really have to, it's like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's not just action. It's not just exploration. There's also a lot of puzzle elements here trying to find the way forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's really cool too how Metroid Dread does this really sweet balance of, you know, the moments where you're allowed to have like some quiet to uh, solve the puzzles and then it's interspersed with this really heavy intense action yeah. so here's nope. the uh oh, <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> nope um that was uh the emmy as dan had mentioned they have kind of three modes one is the surveillance the other is uh which is uh, marked with blue they're just scanning the area um it's yeah. so bad intense. One. I'm like yeah. playing a game no. of chase with so it. Fast. With it. Oh, God. Um, and then when it has Samus on I, uh, eyesight, uh, it turns red, which is the um, chase mode. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yellow is it's heard. It's heard a noise or sense the vibration, and it's going to go investigate that. Oh. Oh. Oh gosh. Mm. No. And. <laughs> No. Oh. 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 So the Emmy uh, are pretty re relentless and ruthless. Uh, it is sort of like a permadeath, which is very unusual um, for you know, enemies with uh, in the Metroid series. But luckily, it's not very. It's the game's pretty forgiving. Uh, it allows you to respawn at an area that you were in recently, so we're able to just go back and counter that again. Yeah, as T said, insta-kill is new to the series, but uh, it's really great because it offers a chance for you to have that challenging difficulty that I think Metroid fans expect, but without being quite so punishing with the respawning that you just have to play the whole game to get back to where you are. So it's a really wonderful balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when the Emmy are in patrol mode, which is that uh, right now, it's in pursuit <laughs> of me, um, they're scanning areas where they last sensed movement mm -hmm. and so they'll go and investigate it and then if they see something in eyesight then they'll go chase it mm -hmm. this is such a, a small but really neat touch the way that samus moves slower in the water mm -hmm. yeah and the audio change too yeah. i mm -hmm. absolutely love that detail There's always one little <laughs> that one straggler there. <laughs> I don't need to save. I I'm feeling brave. <laughs> oh, dash. nice dash melee. See, that really shows how you you don't have to to stop to fight these enemies. If you really master that dash melee, you can just mm -hmm. kind of run and gun. Mm -hmm. A little water puzzle. Yeah. really love the animation of the water flowing from one area to mm -hmm. the next. Such a cool detail. Yeah. Now that the water levels change, you have access to other areas. And here is uh, a map room. So interacting with these room will grant me more visibility to the um, area that I'm currently in. Um, so we sort of lightly touched on um, the, the narrative of this game, which occurs in the events post uh, Metroid Fusion. And so that's why Samus's look um, looks different. But um, also to point out, back to Audrey's point about, you know, the game is about exploration and action. And so this area of uh, map uh, upgrade allowed me to see more about the map, but you can see that there's still a lot of obscurity here. And so you need to explore in order to uncover more of the area and also um, any secrets involved. So 
Yeah, it's also worth noting that uh, this series and this game is full of really juicy lore. So <laughs> uh, whether you're a new or a returning Metroid fan, uh, if you've never played a Metroid game before, it really gets you up to speed with anything you need to know to enjoy the story. And if you are a longtime Metroid fan, you have a lot to look forward to. Uh, as Sakamoto-san said, this concludes the story arc between Samus and the Metroids. So uh, we've been waiting a long time for this and it delivers. It's that little enemy that uh, Teresa just blew up. It's kind of like an item pinata. It gives you <laughs> a lot of <laughs> missiles. Yeah, defeating enemies is a, definitely oh. a boon because oh, um, <laughs> it grants you replenishment for e for energy and also um, missiles. So definitely want to defeat enemies for that. Yeah. I just didn't expect the Emmy to be right on top of me when I destroy <laughs> the autos. That little beeping sound, just I hear oh, it yeah. in my nightmares now. <laughs> they always come up with... Oh, it's persistent. Oh, it's yeah. persistent. Very I... convenient. <laughs> Another little interesting detail about this game is normally in Metroid games, you start at the surface of the planet and you work your way deeper. But in this game, you actually start deep within the planet and try and work your way to the surface. And so that, that yearning towards ascension really adds to the tone of this game as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was oh, a that sick was slide. Really cool. oh, <laughs> I also love that you don't have to necessarily wait for an enemy to attack in order to counter in this game. If, if you keep an eye out, you can actually sometimes mm -hmm. counter before they, they start their attack. Here's a throwback. So mm. I have to use a missile in order to destroy that cover and then I'm able to access that door. Just one missile though, that's good. Oh. There you go. I got it. Yeah. That's the other thing about the uh, dash melee is that uh, if you use that on an enemy, you will get, I think, a few more extra items. Here's our first upgrade, the charge beam. So very iconic to the Metroid series. Um, so Samus, you know, starts off without any abilities and slowly um, becomes more powerful and able to tackle um, stronger foes, but also be able to uncover or explore new areas that you weren't able to before. Yeah, and uh, suit upgrades are another classic part of Metroid gameplay that is alive and well in this game. I also love you can see if you keep an eye on the background and stuff, there are all kind of uh, cool statues and architecture that really uh, piques your curiosity about the lore of this world. I love that too, mm -hmm. using the charge beam to make a charge beam spin attack and defeat mm -hmm. some of those enemies is really handy. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> Got some more life, which is always a plus for me. Mm -hmm. Need that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, with all those items. Yeah, T T's doing a great job of showing that once you you really get to know these abilities and uh, become adept at them, you, you start to feel like Samus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at first you're like, mm, maybe not quite there, but once you get the hang of it, you, you really start to feel like a badass bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just so smooth. It's like she's parkouring through this. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's more great architecture, but we're not here to look at architecture. We're here to <laughs> shoot <laughs> things <laughs> and explore. Yes. Doors. <laughs> so now we can't go through this area because of the water, so we're not able to slide. But we are able to access this door that we weren't to before. Ah, and here's another Emmy door. Um, but in order to not spoil any more surprises here, we're going to leave this as a cliffhanger and uh, end our segment here. All right. Well, that's all we've got um, on Metroid Dread for now. Um, thanks, Teresa and Audrey. Uh, next up, we've got some uh, Mario Superstar, Mario Party Superstars uh, to show you.
So stay tuned. everyone and welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live. I'm Kay and I'm here with Rob, Riona, and Brandon and we are going to show you some gameplay from Mario Party Superstars. This is a, a superstar game because it's uh, made of a best of, you know, it's mini games and boards from the past of the series. Uh, everything is on buttons and sticks so you can play with a pro controller, with a switch light, whatever you need. And let's just get started. So if you remember the N64 bar, the N64 board, Peach's birthday cake, uh, it was, it looked like this. And I think you'll see that the new board looks a little bit tastier. <laughs> Just a, a little lot bit tastier. <laughs> a lot <laughs> bit tastier. <laughs> yes. That powdered sugar hits in such high fidelity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never seen such detailed powdered sugar. <laughs> uh, if you haven't played the series before, Mario Party is a board game series. Uh, you run around the board trying to collect stars. You play uh, mini games to, uh, to earn coins. And the coins can be traded for the stars. So that's the basic idea. You'll see as we go. And of course, there's hijinks that ensue on different spaces that you'll see us demonstrate. Oh, I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another chance. It's it not is actually my first time playing this board, but well, board. sure, we'll take a little tour. So over here, we have the scary Bowser pudding. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, gonna leave it there. We're just gonna leave yeah. scary Bowser pudding. It's hanging for a drama. And <laughs> And as Toad just told us, yeah, the Goomba t uh, decides or helps us decide which part we take. Oh, all right, so let's um, go ahead and tell everybody who, who we all are playing. Uh, I am Rosalina. I'm Peach. I am Birdo. Oh, yeah. I'm Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we all get some coins to start with. Now we're going to start getting going on this board. It starts nice and even. It does. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it doesn't last very long. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all friends right now, you'll notice. Yeah, for now. <laughs> uh, this board is unusual because the star is always in the same place. You have to get to basically to the center of the cake. Uh, on other boards, the star moves around each time someone get, collects it. So the strategy is going to be different depending on which board you're playing. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. I'm going to roll my dice here. Oh, ah. come on. Ooh. This is a great start. Oh, like, well, <laughs> he's got this advantage going. Oh, that's true. So, like I said, hijinks ensue on some of the spaces. This one is uh, is one of the event spaces where you can choose to plant a strawberry, but it's a weird strawberry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a cute little piranha plant. Very special strawberry. <laughs> it's very healthy looking. Yeah. <laughs> 
very hungry. And yeah, if any of the rest of us land on that on one of those spaces in front of the piranha plant, they will steal coins on Brandon's behalf. Yeah, please, please feel free if you guys no want to. No three or four. No I... three or four. Oh, oh. God. Dang it. <laughs> did you say three or four? Uh, no, I guess I did. <laughs> I'm just doing this, you know, for you guys at home to see yeah. what happens. Educational value. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, already starting off not fair. I think it's going great. Oh, it? no. <laughs> Get ready for bird domination. <laughs> <laughs> we are off <laughs> <awesome. laughs> <We> start, <laughs> you guys. But I did not land on the piranha plant. That's true. <laughs> you did. You landed on, well, you landed on the blue space, so that's that's good for you because you get Hi. coins. Yeah. Luigi. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. Luigi that is a strong out of the gates. Roll. Ooh, oh, lucky, lucky. Yeah. Good Dude, grief. I think Riona's the one watch. I know. <laughs> Luigi. I just can't help it. I'm just nice. a born winner. I know. <laughs> well, you're in good shape now because you have enough points to trade for a star when you get there. Woohoo. For now. <laughs> <laughs> so now we'll see which uh, messy mess. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, good oh, grief. <laughs> I have a great strategy for this game where I say everything out loud so I can remember. <laughs> so you'll notice that uh, the, the first thing it shows you is a quick uh, explanation screen where everyone can actually play the game a little bit, but it doesn't count yet, as we all sort of figure out how the controls work and everything. Uh, and then once everyone is ready, you can hit plus or minus to uh, say, yes, let's start. So, yes, let's start. Yes, let us, let's start. That's such a helpful so, feature. Okay. The point of the game is to remember where each item goes. Brown, and, uh, tie, hammer, Don't talk, shy guy, stop talking. <laughs> no, Mario, Luigi, <laughs> egg, <laughs> Wario. Oh my god, I forgot I everything. I forgot everything already. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, let's see how this goes. I think, okay. oh boy. Okay, okay. my strategy right. is to copy K. Yeah, don't copy me. <laughs> That's helpful because then there's the curtain feature. So as soon as I feel like I have everything in the right spot, I can close the curtain and nobody can copy me. My strategy was just try to pay attention to the lower shelf only. I, I don't think I can manage the whole thing. So uh, uh, I think I got the lower shelf right now. I I'll don't just actually know. Fill in whatever I can. I think this goes here. I'm just going to arrange them here. Okay, close the curtain. Be. No cheating. <laughs> no cheating. Oh, oh. oh. As a quick reminder, this game is still under development, so occasionally you'll see some, uh, whoops. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> a little menu. Some I, I, no! <laughs> what happened, Brandon? I was just trying to double check myself. Oh, no. <laughs> Before you double wreck yourself? Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's going well so far. I did oh, not wow. do very well. I did all right, I guess. <laughs> hey, I got the whole lower shelf right. Oh, no. My strategy failed me. <gasps> oh, Brandon. Wow. Nice. You didn't even, you didn't even put the bananas away. I am the queen of organizing. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> Turns out. <sighs> sure, I see how it is. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm sad already, and it's only round two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look how sad Birdo is. Oh. I might have to express my feelings. <laughs> oh, wrong one. I expressed the wrong feeling. <laughs> <laughs> So it's oh, a new feature no. in this game is um, you can, you know, put your stamps up there. If you're playing online with someone and you want to express yourself, there's a, a bunch of different stamps you can use. Or you can do it offline when, you're, when your friends are right there on the couch, but you just feel like throwing hilarious <laughs> cartoon art up. Yeah. What? <laughs> All right. I love this one. Big numbers. <laughs> Big numbers. Okay. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh. I'll take Let's it. see how it is. I'll take it. <laughs> Give me something good. That's pretty good. All right, yeah. Yeah, I'll take it. So items help on, in future rounds. You can choose to use an item. It usually affects your roll or someone else's roll sometimes. Oh, well, some of them do other fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes, I'll be planting a, a <laughs> alleged strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> I just love looking at the whipped cream. Like, it just looks so tasty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it, like it believes it's a strawberry. <laughs> Sport always makes me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Ooh. It's probably more delicious during the first round before everybody's walked all over the cake. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still delicious either way. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for putting that image in my head. <laughs> Stick to the path, everyone. <laughs> Don't get lost in the frosting. All right. All right, it's on now. One. Okay, hammer drop. Hammer drop. So this one's a coin game, so we all get to keep whatever we 
we earn during the game. I like these because they become <laughs> extra chaotic. Yeah. Some, I just apparently walked off the stage immediately. I didn't see where I was. The bold strategy. Yeah. yeah. So obviously I know what I'm doing. I'm going to hit ready. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I love that practice round. That well. practice round is so useful. Okay. okay. Oh. Oh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh -huh. no, coins. Oh, God. No. Coins. I want coins. Give me that bag. Oh. How dare you. Oh. How dare you. Yes. I'm flat. Deck perception is all off. Okay. Oh, no. Avoid the, you got to avoid the hammers. Because yeah, the what? hammer stuns you for a second, so it's no. really bad no. if you get hit by one. Oh. Yeah, I like that. Don't do not do that. No. Like oh, me. no. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I, I, no. I forfeit. I forfeit. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Brandon? <laughs> I got hit by I got hit by, I got like hit by a hammer. A <laughs> yes. I wanted to cool off a little bit. It's getting a little heated. Now, you see how I sharked you? I walked wow. off the stage immediately during the uh, practice. Look at that. 15, <laughs> 15 coins. Well, this how did you do that? Let's put, it, let's put some money on the next minigame. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> five coins. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. This is the one. It was not the one. <laughs> I mean, it was, it it was, was the one. one. Yeah. <laughs> Called shot. Nicely uh, done. Oh, <laughs> oh it's hey, not oh. a hidden block. All right, I'll take it. These are great. You never know what you're gonna find. Going you can even get a star out of those. Yeah. There's lots of fun surprises like this on on every game board. You, it's really difficult to, uh, you know, predict a winner with this game. It's part of what makes it so fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. Double dice. Double dice. That's how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> or don't. Why? Because. Why? <laughs> Why does this always happen to me? Dice are fickle masters. <laughs> they are. Oh, boo. Oh, oh yeah. really? Nice. Really show off. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Ha! Not so good. Not so good. Serves you right. I don't know what for. <laughs> <laughs> All my various crimes. <laughs> I know. It's Brandon we have to watch out for. Look how many coins Brandon has. <laughs> no, don't look at that. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> the cake. Look how delicious the cake is. Pay attention. It to is that. a good cake. All right. Here we go. Dang it. Oh, I'm going to trade my 20 coins for a delicious star and shoot up into first place for now. For always. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you see, there's at least two more people come in who have enough coins to trade, so. Well done. <laughs> I mean, look at this turn. We know who the real superstar is. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you just keep telling yourself that, dear. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear you all the way in fourth place. <laughs> Oh. I deserve oh, that. Man. I deserve that. So this is a one versus oh, three because I land in a different kind of space as everyone else. Oh, okay, oh, this, this one. So this is the one where I try to squish all my friends with rocks. Yeah. Oh, oh no. <laughs> like that. That's okay, easy. I've got the point of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the upper left um, corner, or sorry, upper right corner, it had the logo for Mario Party 3. That's how you know this was a game for Mario Party okay, 3. Okay, let's not oh, no. wrap the princesses oh. in the center of the... Of the Hill, though. Okay. Go up the side. Okay. Ooh! Oh, no! oh, <laughs> I definitely just I ran right her. into that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Serpentine, serpentine. Okay. No, oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, God. Oh, no! Oh, no! I fear my geologic mind. Leave me alone! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Just Too keep powerful. swimming. Just keep swimming. Okay, we go. You can do it. Oh, you can do it. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. You're so close. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Did we, we ran out of time! Ran out of time! Oh, no! So oh. That was so close. Oh, we made it. That was a struggle. That was. That was a struggle. We didn't well give up. Played. I think that's a moral victory. Like a, a victory of the spirit. Yeah. 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 Not I as good so. as an actual victory. <laughs> I, I, no, I agree. It's a, oh, oh, oh. You guys are full of it. <laughs> Full of superstars. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just you, Riona. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. You yeah, have I'm, enough for a large one. You know I am going to go for a large one. I like that you took the bait because now you don't have enough for a star. That's fine. <laughs> 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 and for those who don't know, the, the large. Oh my gosh. Look at that big take, oh drop my goodness. take a star from whoever lands on this. Positively <laughs> mouthwatering. So. Yeah, that's a little dangerous for you, dear, being in first place. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we were also going to make sure we uh, showed another board today. Yes. So we might just have to leave this game where Riona's winning. Oh, behind. no. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to leave oh. this board right now. <laughs> but I just planted my big strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> All the more reason to leave. <laughs> That's great. Oh, hey, a hidden block. 
there was a one of the, one of the cool things about this this game is that you can save. Uh, so if you you know something happens between games or in the middle of the game rather, you can come back to it. Right. Exactly. And it auto it saves at the top of every turn. Yeah, top of every turn. So we had a game a little while ago that came a little a little uh, uh, contentious. Yeah. You know? it's just Emotional. A bit heated. Um, heated. That's heated yeah. is a good word. Yeah. Heated, yes. Uh, and we thought we would finish it off. Are we? Are we in a place to do that now, everyone? Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So let's pause and get that set up for a moment. We've warmed up enough now. Yeah. I this think is the it's time to jump into the uh, into shark the real. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we are on the Spaceland board and on turn seventeen of twenty. This is. I'm really excited because this was getting pretty intense. We're all playing the same characters as we were before, and it uh, looks like Rob's up. Yeah, let's take a look at that board. Uh, oh. You'll notice this ominous counter in the middle. Yeah, that's not looking good. <laughs> it, uh, if, I don't know if you remember this board. It was also from the N64 games. Um, there's a, a scary countdown when you cross that space, and then when it counts to zero, hopefully we'll get to see. Mm. But uh, <laughs> I think chances are pretty high. Yeah. Chances are pretty high. All right, I'm going to roll... Oh, all right. Well. Fine, a two. I got a two. Are you happy now? I got a two. I think it worked out pretty well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. I love this board. This is what I would consider a superstar board. Yes. Uh, I have a lot of really fond memories of, of particularly playing on, on this board uh, with friends and family. Right. And this is one of the boards where the star moves every time someone gets one. So it's really random and <laughs> difficult to plan. But there's also a lot of sort of tactical value to it. Um, the the star moving means that, like the speed traps, which hopefully we'll see in a minute here. Uh, uh, yeah, like unlocking this gate right Matter differently depending on where the star is and where yeah, everyone else where is. Where do I want to? Let's see. Thirty-two spaces to the star, but who's down here? So oh, no. I think I will go through the gate. Yeah, it's oh, a no. smart one. <laughs> yeah. Don't use the boo. That's. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, That's Boo and I were real tight. <laughs> <laughs> He spent a lot of time in, in uh, dangerous places. Yeah, <laughs> we've spent a lot of time together, you know, bonded. He'll do me a favor now and then. One of the things I do I do really appreciate about this game is that uh, when you come to a fork in the road or like a you know, choice to use a key or not, it tells you how many spaces to the star any other direction you have available. Mm -hmm. So here it's just 28 to the star because Brandon's just gonna go towards the star. But when he gets here, he can ch check all the different routes and see which one's the, the shortest. Down to one. Oh, no. One. one. <laughs> I also have one of these keys, so I'm going to actually use this to unlock this gate and see what's behind it. So we'll go here. <laughs> Thank you, key. Thank you. Little... I love the skeleton key. Oh, my gosh. Ooh. Brandon, <laughs> you what are you oh. doing? Oh. Yeah. What, are you... yeah. what is this? <laughs> oh, this is chance time. Chance time. Yeah. Oh, man. This so. is such a blast from the past. Yeah. So the two wheels on the side say who who is something is going to happen to and from, and then the middle one says what what the verb is going to be. What you know are they going to oh, move okay. coins, change Start stars? A, a star is Start going to swap. Tokens. Oh my goodness! Oh no! Not me, this not is me, bad. Me. Birdo is. Oh no! <gasps> please, not Birdo. Birdo, Birdo, Anybody Birdo, 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 Birdo. Birdo. I don't have a star. Brandon, I'm begging you. One star. I'm Guys, you this could only be concentrated. If you just for a No. Oh, no! Oh, well, I'll that's totally it. fine. Yeah, that Nothing really changes. <laughs> We're safe. <sighs> I'm so scared. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is super is all spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. Cold and lonely. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. Here it goes. Okay. All right. Four players. The stakes are very high this time. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, yes. The stakes don't get higher. They stakes oh, my don't goodness. Get higher. I like Love this, this game. game. This yeah. is one of my favorite it's games from Mario classic. Party 2, which it says in the top corner there. Oh. It's from Mario Party 2. All right. Oh, my goodness. Oh, why do I have to go first? <laughs> well, you know, you know the strategy, right? Uh, pick the same color as my dress? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does it work? Okay. Yes. So basically, the objective yeah. of this game is to pick a pump and hope that you don't get blown up. Yep. <laughs> I will choose my only color, uh, the only color I'm wearing. <laughs> I know. The strategy of going before you means oh. I get to oh pick pink. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm actually going to go. Are you sure? At... <laughs> no. Oh. Get out of my head. I'm Be not sure. sure. I'm not sure about that, Brandon. Let's find out. 
Oh, oh my goodness. No. I think everyone holds their breath. When yeah, yeah I really do. I think it's I mean, an involuntary be reaction. It's gotta be, yeah, it's gotta green. be green, Luigi. Oh no. There's no way this could go wrong. Obviously. No! Yeah! Oh, yes! Oh. <laughs> the strategy oh, failed. Oh, strategy. Oh. <coughs> Bye. Okay, <fine. laughs> Have a nice trip. <laughs> One oh, well, no. Red's I not available anymore. Pick green. No, I, I'm gonna stick with pink. Oh, Pink, why did you that was a great choice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, no. Well, that's ominous. Good luck, Rob. This is when it gets real scary. All right. I'm I'm going yellow because I like yellow. Superstar solid, color. Solid choice. Oh. Ah. Oh. I was hoping <sighs> yellow would betray you. <laughs> oh, my oh, no. You're Man. mean. Oh, you can't watch. Meeny, meeny, miny. <laughs> Uh, I'm doing a hard I can't take it. No, we're going. I'm getting we're a lightheaded from all the breath holding. <laughs> oh, 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 my hubris! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Can I breathe again? <laughs> that game is so tense. It's so tense. Oh, I love it. It might be so the tensest much. thing. <laughs> well, I'm so glad well. they brought it back for yeah. this. Yeah. Because <laughs> so that is oh. a classic. So fun. Oh. Nice. Bracing. Shocking turn. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's see if I can roll more than a two. <laughs> that what do I have for items? For Three turns is still a lot of time. So oh, I can, I can make someone else roll short. Yeah, things can help. change quite a bit, especially during the last five turns of the map because the, the stakes get raised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just, I don't, I'm just going to go for it. The blue and red spaces uh, are double. <laughs> 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 oh, but you're going to land on a versus spot. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm going to land on a versus spot. spot. But the first question is, do I set a speed trap for the Sniffet Patrol? And I, obviously, yes. Obviously, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this never goes wrong, ever. I mean... <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. The answer's always yes. I mean, chances are you're going to trigger it yourself, and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> what I love when they revamp this board is just, like, all the things, you know, that were on the previous board, like the, the Sniffet Police Station and um, the little blooper super... Or spaceship is. I like love that blooper. Space. Everything looks so shiny. Yeah. All right, so we're doing a, a versus mini game now. And because it's a blue space, I got three coins to start with, and then. Oh, because we're betting okay. seven. Seven. Oh, okay. All right. Lucky seven. Okay. Comfortable stakes. <laughs> By which you mean cowardly stakes. <laughs> I mean, you're the one that picked it, Rob. <laughs> oh no! Oh my no! Goodness. Oh. Okay. 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 This oh. is a very. Uh, very <laughs> another tense game. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pass out soon. I, basically, <laughs> we're back to back doing what yeah. the shy guy says, yeah, mm -hmm. but not right. too fast because sometimes he changes his little mind, mm -hmm. his little shy mind. Okay, this okay. this game takes a lot of concentration and not. Oh, God. oh, oh, no. home oh, oh. I so quickly. <laughs> no, no. Come back for me. <laughs> oh, god. Uh, As someone who struggles with left and right, this is <laughs> my least favorite game. <laughs> you so shy, that, but so but cruel. You and I have a long history of of competitiveness when it comes to this game. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> I need to not talk. All right. Oh, and there's plenty of time left. I'm sure you guys will be all right if you want to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> my secret weapon is that I'm left-handed. <laughs> I have to think about this way more often than you right-handers. <laughs> uh, I think that's cheating, Rob. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, oh. Yes, for domination. Oh, nice me. work, Rob. Thank you. <laughs> nice work. Oh, man. Oh. That was one of my favorites from the original Mario Party as well. If we're ever in a pinch and we need somebody who knows their left from their right, I'm going to come to you, Rob. <laughs> I'm, your guy. I'm I'm there. Look at how sh look at how ashamed I am. I know you're <laughs> you are not doing great. That's f thank you very much, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just here to point out the facts. <laughs> Let's see. What item do I have? Oh, custom oh. dice block. This is an nice. amazing item. Let's you just it. choose your roll. I That's pretty think nice. I'm gonna choose a ten. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Little laugh. Condescending laugh, not necessarily included, but encouraged. Ooh, <laughs> item shop. 
Golden pipe. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And you can you, you could even buy the star afterward with your money yeah. bags. Oh, that's so I'm surprised you guys wanted to come back to this game since <laughs> you're winning so hard. <laughs> Look, Look, I lost the toss. Is it too late to go back to the cake? <laughs> well, it did save, so technically we could. <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right. I am going to see what I can do about my friend, Boo. Oh, no. Oh, no. I unfortunately don't have enough money to steal a star. So I think I'm just going to try maybe take some coins from Luigi. No. That's a, I think no. that's a fantastic idea. Do Birdo. Birdo, Birdo. Birdo. Yeah, Birdo. you know. But you have a star. I Birdo have doesn't coins. have a star, and you and I have a competitive history. Oh. <laughs> so, I think luck. at this point, we all have a okay, competitive history. This. this is well, also yeah. true. <laughs> this is also true. <laughs> go, Riona. Go, Riona. <laughs> The thing that we're not telling you at home is Riona's actually very good at chasing oh. Boo off normally, but that was, that was not your <laughs> really best performance, frankly. Oh, that was not your best performance. She's had like, you as eight coins, which is oh. extremely impressive. Yeah, I like that one, but mid sentence. <laughs> so not a good day. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Well, I know which way I mean, I'm not. Do you want to give us a demonstration, Kay? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just going to go this way, and uh, good luck. Where am I? Where am I on the map? I don't remember where I am oh, on the no. map. The eternal question. Oh, oh, oh no. Am I on the map? Where, where, where? Oh, no. Look at how amazing this cannon looks now, though. It's so terrifying. It's so cool. I love the upgrades to it. Oh, no. And it just slowly reveals ah. who's in the path. Ah. Which, it turns out, is no Oh, good. But <laughs> when it does hit, it takes away all your coins. Yeah, it's, it's, it's devastating. pretty brutal. Devastating. Yeah, I'll, I'll pay six coins for that. That's, that's probably how he afforded his own satellite. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a five. Uh, ooh, oh so here's gosh. a great example of the, the how many how many spaces to the next star thing. There was six or like And another great example of what the speed trap that Rob set does. I don't like Here it. comes a speeder. I don't like oh. it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> so if that speed trap hadn't been set. I just realized that if the speed trap pushes you back to the path of the laser yeah. in both cases. Uh -huh. That's great. Uh -huh. Very lucky for me that I was not already there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, right. This is a coin collecting Another one. Another coin collecting one. Another oh, Mario and I'm Party three. boat this From time. Mario Party 3, yeah. Well, I feel <laughs> sorry for you guys. <laughs> 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 because I'm just going to swoop up all of the coins and make you crash into all of the obstacles. I've got a, a tricky spot here because oh, I'm in no. the middle of these two. I can't, if they're <laughs> close together, I can't really move. Oh no, oh no, oh no! But we all get to keep whatever coins we collect. Can we there are no losers here. No, you don't hold this one. Yeah, right, hey, I'm just, you know, ah. clearing out the obstacles for you, actually, because I'm such a nice oh, princess. No. Oh. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kay. You're welcome. No. It's my pleasure. That's a log. Ow. Yep. <laughs> well spotted. You're welcome. <laughs> I was talking wow, about the three of us together got six coins. Wow. <laughs> I repeat, I Man. feel sorry for you that I was the one driving. <laughs> yeah, me too. I also feel sorry for you. You know, us princesses are used to being driven around and not driving when you run around. So how are you so good at it? <laughs> well, did you see how many logs I hit, though? <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I was busy paying attention to nothing logs myself. Everyone you know at what? home knows. <laughs> <I have a laughs> Everyone at on. home knows. They're nodding along. Ooh. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I felt a fit of peak coming on, so you got a cursed dice block. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that Berto laugh is very good. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Oh. <gasps> oh. I'm to duel. Oh, See, dueling. this is one of the things I was talking about when I say the stakes are raised during the last five turns. They landed on the same space, so now there's a duel. Uh oh. <laughs> Do it. Oh, Do my it, Rob. Goodness. Do everything. Don't. Oh, this is great. No, Don't. I'm a coward. Buy that <laughs> I don't like this. Yes. You know, my favorite part about this is, is that I don't have anything at stake right now. That is such a gutsy move. How nice. <laughs> I am going to enjoy this. <laughs> I really appreciate Luigi's battle stance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ready for something. Ready Birdo's for a big hug. Ready, though. Look at those fists. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 142 coins. Good luck to both of you. See, Rob, now you better not lose. Uh, obviously. No. <laughs> what the Oof. heck is this? Oh, okay. oh so my this goodness. Is the vine swing. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm on the top screen. Let's look at this. <laughs> ah! Start with that key information. From Mario ah! okay. Party 3. I get it. Yeah, I Mario Party 3 getting a lot of play in this. Yeah. Thing. Well, that was one of the great ones. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Two and three were amazing. Would you call it one of the superstar ones? 
Yes. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Hopping. Hopping. Oh my goodness. Oh. Does it help to say hopping out loud, Rob? It does <laughs> help to say hopping out loud. Well, so I remember what I'm hopping? doing. Hopping? Hopping, Rob? You guys Rob, are hopping. neck and neck. This is just too intense. Hopping, Rob. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> it backfired. <laughs> it backfired. Yeah. I like the slow and steady approach that Rob is taking. Hey, Seems to be working well for him so far. I'm also holding my breath again, so I'm really feeling pretty loud. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, okay. Just stop talking, Rob. Let us. Oh, oh, no, oh. no, no, no. Okay. Oh, okay, no. here we go. No. 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 Oh, yes, what's happening? No. No. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. Why is this difficult? How is this? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let go at the bottom. You got it. Momentum. Oh, no. Physics. Oh. Yes. Oh. Physics wins the day. <laughs> and also 142 <laughs> coins. Oh, I, oh, I am so pleased right now. <laughs> I feel very much like Luigi. <laughs> very that eyebrows up. Bird wow. domination at its finest. Yeah, bird domination coming through. Uh, look at that. coins. I don't think I've ever seen anyone have so many coins in one game. Before. Oh, and I get plus six too. Oh my god. Yeah, just oh, a cherry no. on top. Well, I what about so that sad. golden uh, pipe that you have? Well, I can't I... use it now. <laughs> what a shame. Roll. What a shame. <laughs> I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> oh, no, you oh, can't. That's like adding insult to injury right, right? there. <laughs> so as the Koopa just explained, you have to, when you pass by the bank, you have to deposit some coins, and then whoever lands on it gets all those coins, but Brianna didn't have any of <laughs> <laughs> and, and whose fault you know. is that? Uh, that's mine. That's, I will take all the credit I for that. I understood it was physical. Let's see. I want to take a look oh. at the board because I have a warp block, and I'm tempted to use it. And I, we've got a couple people that are kind of closer to the star than me, so I think it might be time. Uh. I think it might be time. Well, let's, let's think this through. <laughs> well, see, the problem is it's a random opponent, so there's a chance that I'll swap with Birdo, and it won't get me any closer. But I could swap with Brandon. Oh. And that oh, would be oh, Brandon. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mario Party gods, <laughs> for listening to my plea. Why must you hurt me in this way? <laughs> oh, but it's 14 to the star. And so somebody you're not cursed me. There. But you know what? <laughs> I just got an item mini game, so we'll see. Maybe it'll have. Something oh yeah, good. if you could roll extra on the next one, you yeah, have a shot. I mean, it's the only chance I have, so I let's go for one of. Let's middle. go for that triple. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. Plus five that's is pretty not bad. good. I, I, that's what I meant to do. Obviously. Were you so focused on the balloon you wanted, you didn't even see the balloon in front of you? No, I thought that if I held the button, then I could release it when I was ready. But that's then I pressed funny. it, and she shot the arrow. So. Read well, the instructions, you know. Gosh. <laughs> a lesson to all of us. Oh, I'll take that. Right. Ten's at least a little helpful here. Hey, look, you're right back where you started. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out, Kay. See, it, you know, no harm, no foul, really. <laughs> <laughs> it only helped me. It only makes her stronger. <laughs> I'm carrying this rage into this minigame. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, this oh one. I okay. love this one. I yeah. think that Prana Plants yes. have a prominent place in our hearts. Yeah. After this, this one's super simple. Did All you do is move, but you're trying to collect uh, as much water yes, for your prana plant as you can. <laughs> and avoid the Monty Moles. Start. Yes. Kay. Okay. The Stop rain is mine. the rain, you guys. I want a shower. No. Oh, no. Okay. I smell bad. No, Give me no, a shower. No. <laughs> That's not the purpose of this. If you need a shower, go somewhere else. <laughs> come on, come on, come Give on. me rain. No, out of oh, yes. Come on. No. Fine, this is fine. No. Monty Mole. This is fine. This is public good this if I get a shower. Fine. This is not fine. <laughs> come on. Oh, come yeah. On, come on. Oh, man. What a, oh. One of the things I love about this is that there's a little bit of rumble in the controller when you're getting water. <laughs> it's no. very no. easy to tell when you're doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> that cloud was really booking it. <laughs> yeah, it was a fast yeah. cloud. Yeah. Sharp turns. <laughs> I don't feel good about yes. that. Yes. Oh. oh yes. yes. Very poorly. Nice wow. work, Brandon. What a beautiful oh. strawberry. You know what? I'll give you that. <laughs> that is a nice strawberry. looking strawberry. Thank you. <laughs> I'm making a comeback. I can feel it. Slowly but surely. <laughs> I mean, you somehow stuck your way up fourth to first. Place with 184 coins. <laughs> <laughs> if only you could get to the star. If only I could get to the star. But I have no items. I'm just going to delight in the fact that Riona is three coins shy of the star. <laughs> <laughs> because I we here at Nintendo Treehouse Live are mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is a long-standing like, rivalry between oh. us. Oh! Oh, God. Oh, this is oh, very no. good. Oh, no. Rob. Oh, no. 
think there is only one possible answer. We oh. all know what it is. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Or you could wager Why one point and she still won't have enough me. even if she wins. Oh, that also would have been pretty good. That's what I would have done. But this is funnier. See, I like that. I like, I like how many different strategies people bring into stuff like this. Well, and if, if, if Riona wins this game, which let's be honest, I'm going to. The underdog. <laughs> if there was ever an underdog moment. Oh, okay. I mean, this is the most like Luigi. Another like super standard happen. or super simple rather. Oh, and there. Things are not right. voting well for our hero. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Time is on that. How good are there you at go. jump rope, guys? Moderate. Uh, I think we should just talk through the whole jump. whole game and, and distract them as much as possible. Yeah, how are you doing, Kay? How are things? I'm great. You know, <laughs> this is very amusing to me. <laughs> This this new rivalry born out of this is, is going to be one for the Whoa! whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> Who authorized that? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't help but press the red button over here. Oh, oh, very oh good. No. No. Luigi time! Luigi time! Yeah! Vengeance! I'm the best! That was oh, yeah. a very, very good come from behind moment, Rihanna. Yeah. I applaud you. <laughs> what are you talking about? I was always going to win. Uh huh. Born to win. <laughs> I like that confidence. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Congrats. See, now she has enough for the star. It she may be the it. last turn, but <laughs> the game's not over until it's over. It's true. Very true. Oh, you <laughs> just got all your coins back. And then some. <laughs> you know what see, I'm going to do? Hey, you know, for the yeah. sake of the people at home, I'm really glad you get to show this off. Yeah. Because this, yeah. yeah. this is a really nice item. <laughs> oh, you're so nice now. I just <laughs> wish I was the one that got to use it. <laughs> And now the star is going to be in a different place. So much for my strategy. Oh, too bad. Oh, uh, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> you and I are going to have a talk later. <laughs> Will it be a loud talk? <laughs> Potentially. I think the moral of this is you can't keep a good plumber down. I think the moral of this is I should have used Kay's strategy of not wagering enough coins to help you get there. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I have good ideas. It's true. <laughs> Hey, I. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> you oh, know man. what? I just done. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh. I have so many fond memories of just playing Mario Party with my family at the holidays, and I'm so excited to play this with them this yeah. year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Growing up with this game was definitely a big highlight. Were these? Old games. Oh my gosh. Now, now you give me the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but hey. Oh, hey. Uh oh. Oh, but hey. Uh oh. Hey. Don't. Luigi. Don't. <laughs> Look, who has Why? The to take your. I told you Boo and I were tight. Man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> go, Riona, go. Do you Boo. pay Boo to be your friend? Boo, I Boo am is always so willing angry. to do me a solid. <laughs> hey, get money. it? Because <laughs> I just got that star. <sighs> no, she stole the other one. See, it's a part of my grand plan no, I don't want to, to uh, you know, <laughs> right. make you do all the work and then steal the star. You had this whole thing mapped out from the beginning, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> In fact, oh. I have. And look, I'm going to be one away from the star if only we played one more turn. <sighs> I told you, everything can turn around in just a minute. It it's can. <laughs> and you can change the number of turns you play as well. Hey, why don't we add five more turns just, <laughs> just to give me a fair you, chance? Unfortunately, you can't do it once the game has started. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, oh gosh. You know what you must do. Oh, no. Oh, well. Brandon. <laughs> Brandon. Oh, mm. so I have never so done relaxed. anything cruel to you, <laughs> which ever. Which one? Which one? Come on. Princess Solidarity. Hey. Come on. I don't know you. Oh. <laughs> You We're know in what? space. This is my territory. I, you know, I, I probably deserved that, <laughs> <laughs> but it still stings. <laughs> Hooray, <sighs> Rosalina! Man, the star theft industry is getting a big boost this year. Boo, I, you know what? Boo and I are gonna have to have a chat. I'm disappointed. Uh, Ooh, coin, coin thing. <laughs> yeah. This is where it really changes. Boy, okay, let's see what we got. Nope. One okay. bigger number. You know what? That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's all the same to me. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, Rob. <laughs> Mister, I have 175 coins in my back pocket. <laughs> I like this one. Oh, oh this one's no. hard. Oh, no. <laughs> this one requires thinking and strategy. <laughs> Not my strong suit. <laughs> so there's a bunch of fruit here, and there's beehives. Uh huh. And you choose whether you want one or two things okay, to come down into your see. basket. One, two, you don't three, want four, five, six, seven, eight, nine left. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Gonna take some fruit and go. There's also a timer, so like if you can strategize within ten seconds, you're in good shape. Yeah, I don't know how to strategize this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Okay, I'm in good shape too. This is good. My strategy is chaos. <laughs> oh. I approve. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. Bye, yes, yes, yes. Enjoy those 175 coins. <laughs> I will. I'm gonna make them into a big pile and roll around on them. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad you won't have any stars to add to that pile. <laughs> you don't know. Brutal. <laughs> We're see seeing a different side of K here. <laughs> I don't know what's happening to me right now. <laughs> Nintendo Treehouse Live. What do people mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, no. This won't blow up in my face. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, because that's you guys fine. Are really we'll nice. We'll take right. it. We'll take it. We're just going to I want you one. to remember what I'm doing for you in this moment. <laughs> Oh, I, I want you remember. to remember what Princess uh, Solidarity looks forget. like. You are wise and merciful. <laughs> I've always been dependent on the kindness of princess. The kindness of bees. bees. I have to give kind. The kindness of bees. Oh. Okay. Let's get this over with. <laughs> We're, we're picking fruit, we're having fun. We're, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Nothing I bad. can't take my eyes off that apple. Like, it's just so shiny and <laughs> it's just okay. delicious. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, oh. Oh, dear. Oh. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm going to try this. Yeah, that wasn't a good a good move. I think you were pretty much screwed either way. Oh. <laughs> but what thanks happened? for fleeing. Princess Solidarity. <laughs> You know, there, someone has to come out on top. There is no of solidarity in I was here first. <laughs> <laughs> That's how parties work. <laughs> I was here first. Okay. Every party has a winner. <laughs> every, par every party has a superstar. That's true. <laughs> oh, that felt good. <laughs> Feels good oh. to win. That's good. Yeah, 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 I had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a star, but it's something. Final, okay. mini oh, final mini final game. mini game. What's it gonna be? Uh, Down to four this. player. This four is, player, as it should be. As it should be. Exactly. Got, Buzzer's big blast again. We got. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. I, I might pass out then. <laughs> Ooh, oh like no. This oh, it's this. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and I jumped off right away. <laughs> we okay. all did. That's a, that's a great sign. <laughs> you know. This is gonna okay, go great. We just displayed. We just we just showed what not to do. So. <laughs> you know. I think we'll be good now. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. could possibly happen. We, uh, we understand completely how to not play. <laughs> My strategy here is don't fall, but also chaos. Ah! Oh, oh, no. ah! Goes I, oh I no. failed strategy oh, no. number one. Oh, God. <laughs> chaos did not work for me. Do not try chaos. Then. What? <laughs> Playing a party. It's party time. Ah, be careful. Don't, don't do. Ah, gotcha. Learn from my mistakes. Ah. Oh, no. Wow, Luigi's like a predator here. <laughs> <laughs> I do colors good. Oh, is Toad showing us what he's gonna do? Yeah, Toad is yeah. showing us what he's gonna do. I I missed that entire. Oh no! Oh, oh no! I have no. Oh. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Save. You, how did Ooh. you? I have wasted skill. You are life. one lucky princess. It's up. No. <laughs> oh gosh! Green. No! Oh, yeah. no! <laughs> See, you just displayed the strategy that I was trying to do before I just that's, bounced that's I, off of someone's head and landed in the water. I wanted to show how you would have won that game. That's yeah, what I you know what? <laughs> Princess Solidarity. Princess Solidarity. <laughs> oh, okay. So there's some bonus stars that oh. get handed out at the very end. So it's this is where everything uh, changes. You know. Shopping bonus. Oh no. Ooh. Who bought? Who put the most items? I think it was probably Don't Riona. Don't think, think it was me. Yeah. yeah. Well done, Riona. Woohoo! Okay. Way to, way to victory. We'll take it, I suppose. Slow. <laughs> <laughs> this has to be me, though, right? <laughs> With my bad dice rolls. Uh, I don't know about that. Oh, oh congratulations, Rob. Thank you. 
Okay. All right. Find the lotus. All right. <laughs> I finally got a star this day. <laughs> You're the superstar in I'm our hearts. <laughs> okay. I'm the semi star. Oh, Unfortunately, it's going to come down to Brandon and Riona, I think, isn't it? Mm, we'll see. No, yeah, I don't I, have I, any. Oh! <laughs> what? Oh, oh gosh. no! Oh, oh gosh. Oh, I have oh, oh, no. points, though. Come oh, back. No. Mm. Oh no, oh. who is it? Oh, oh. oh man. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, my God. oh no. <sighs> Brandon. <laughs> that was Brandon. What I meant. I'm what, at that one. What a wonderful party. <laughs> I'm you a know, good loser. I am I, super I'm going to clap for that. Hey. Yeah. A massive Yay. performance. Thank well you, done, everyone. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Well, I think that's all the time we have. Thank you everyone for tuning in to watch us play Mario Party Superstars. I hope you had as much fun as we did. Um, stay tuned. Coming up next, we'll have some uh, Monster Hunter stories to Wings of Ruin. Bye. Bye. Hi everybody, welcome back to Tr Nintendo Treehouse Live. My name is JC and I'm joined by some friends. I got Sam and I have Ethan hey. with me. <laughs> and we're gonna take you through a little bit of Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. Let's uh, go. No, right? Like I'm actually pretty excited <laughs> about this. You know, I'm a Monster Hunter fan myself. So again, super big honor um, because, you know, Capcom just recently announced that the demo is coming. So the demo is coming on June 25, which is just around the corner. And of course the full game launches on July 9. So again, super big thanks to Capcom for making this all possible and giving me another Monster Hunter <laughs> game to play. Um, and yeah, uh, again, for those folks that are also, you know, Monster Hunter fans like myself, uh, stick around to the end because we are also going to talk about some cross-functionality between Monster Hunter Rise and this game. Uh, so with that being said, uh, Sam, if you please. You got it. Let's hop in here. Let's get started. So I've been having a ton of fun with this demo and I'm really excited that we get a chance to show it off to y'all a little bit early before it launches. As we hop in here real quick, this is a great moment to take a look at my character. I did a bunch of customization before I started the demo and I named my character after one of the biggest Monster Hunter fans I know. So Amber, if you're watching, I really hope we do you proud and you get a kick out of this. Yeah, Amber. <laughs> you can see from my save data, I've been in this demo for a few hours now and I could actually easily spend another few hours. This is a really beefy demo experience. Yep. Good news though is if you try it and you like it, and I mean it's going to be free in the Nintendo eShop, so why not give it a go and see if you like it? All of your progress will carry over to the final version of the game, so you don't have to worry about retreading any ground if you hop in and check it out. And 
right here we have loaded into my house so I'll just give a little bit of a look around here as we kind of set the stage for what we're going to be doing. This is a story-driven turn-based RPG set in the Monster Hunter world. If you don't know a thing about the Monster Hunter franchise, no worries, we'll be getting you up to speed. If you are familiar, I think you're really going to be interested in the connections that you maybe already know from the game. It really draws on a lot of the mechanics. It is the same world, you're going to see the same monsters, but a bit of a different take here. And as somebody myself who really loves RPGs and turn-based combat, this really suits my game style nicely. You know, Sam, uh, jumping in on that, I just want to also point out that I think this might be the first time we're doing live gameplay, right? It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is world first live gameplay. Mm -hmm. Super exciting. Uh, so here, real quick, my house is where I can save the game. It's also where I can do some character customization. My little buddy over here, Navaru, is a really unusual, very distinctive looking feline. He's a <laughs> bit of a world traveler, but he and I crossed paths recently, and he's decided that he's going to hang out and help me on my adventure. So. We will see lots more of him in a bit, but I really want to get out here. I love how cozy it is, though, in your house. Like, I want to <laughs> hang out in there very much. I will say this game's art style really speaks to me. I think Capcom's done an amazing job of really making an immersive, beautiful world. And as somebody who hasn't had a chance to get out of the house much lately, it's really nice to have a chance to explore somewhere <laughs> that's so beautiful and expansive. I can talk to people even though they're not real and have a big adventure, so I'm, I'm really appreciating this. Uh, so here, as we take a little bit of a look around my home village, if you think about Monster Hunter, just the name of the franchise, even if you've never played, you can probably guess that it's Monster Hunter. Mm. You normally have a pretty adversarial relationship to monsters, but that's not the case in this game. My character is part of a community that has figured out a way to really live in harmony with monsters. Yep. They are our friends who fight alongside us, got a beautiful kind of housing setup for our monster friends over here. We even, actually, if I take a look over here, we just chill on the beach with them. And I, I love Aww. this little duo. They're just kind of chilling, living their best life here. <laughs> and, and my home is honestly kind of paradise. I won't talk yeah. too much about uh, all the different facilities that are available in my village. Normally, it's a peaceful, wonderful place, but recently things have gone a little sideways. Mm. I am a novice monster rider. I'm just kind of learning the ropes. My teacher over here, Kana, has been teaching me what it means to be a monster rider. Kana, what's up? She, she is amazing, and she's a very good teacher, but right now she's also dealing with the fact that there are a lot of really unusual occurrences taking place in the island. We'll talk about the story in a bit more detail, but... What you need to know right now is monsters are acting very strangely, very aggressively. There's a lot of unusual activity going on around the island. So on top of teaching me how to be a monster rider, she's also teaching me how to uh, handle crisis management as we try to figure <laughs> out what happened Important to our skill. island. Because we've had a lot of weird natural phenomenon and, and things just kind of going sideways on us. Yeah. So recently we found out that there is a poisonous monster that's causing a lot of problems in another part of the island. So I recently got back from a mission and I've been getting ready to head out to try to track down that poisonous beastie. I hit the quest board over here, turned in a bunch of quests, which gave me a lot of XP for my party, Zenny, which is the in-game currency, and a bunch of items. I then turned around and used some of that in-game currency, the Zenny, to pick up some antidotes from a local merchant. Seemed like a good idea, since we're going to be dealing with a poison monster. Uh, grabbed some more quests as well, so the quest board's a great central place to get those, but I can also get quests from NPCs around the world. Mm -hmm. I used some more of that Zenny I picked up to... Uh, buy some other items that maybe I'll have a chance to show off here. I also did some crafting. So I used monster parts and materials that I've found around the island and from my battles to craft this amazing new sword with the help of the smithy in town. It's called the chicken decapitator. I, I got to assume that nuts. we got that. We, we got big chickens. Is it really? It chicken is. Chicken decapitator? It's so cool that we look at it. I just made it and I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. I also used some ore to upgrade my hammer. So my gear is about ready. There's one last thing I have to do. So under normal circumstances, and sorry, just a moment to appreciate this little feline in all of his majesty. Uh, I would normally hatch eggs before I turn in quests because I want the monsters that I've hatched to enjoy the bonus of all that XP. But I kind of reversed the order here from what I'd normally do so that I could show y'all a hatching before we head out into the field. Aww. And just look at this little dude. Bull drum. This little bull drum. And he actually, I think, got an attack bonus there as well. So he is a new monster to add to my party. I'll just leave his name as is. 
And for any RPG, party mechanics and party strategy are key, and here it's no different. But the pretty awesome thing here is that most of my party members are actually monsters. Mm -hmm. So here, I'm actually gonna change my lead monster over to the new Bulldrome so that we can see what he's like in the field. And he's hopefully gonna have some fun out here with me as we get rolling. As we head out of the village, you'll notice that I get the option of choosing to head out in the afternoon or the evening. So for the sake of this segment, we're gonna stick with afternoon departure times, but I do encourage folks who are watching when you're playing this yourself, mix it up a bit, check things out in the field, in the afternoon and in the evening. As we mentioned, crafting and finding those key materials is so important to the Monster Hunter experience and things are gonna be a little different at night. So you wanna mix it up a little bit. And before we get rolling here, I'll just take a little bit of a scan around so you can see the environment. There are a lot of different spots here in my island home that I've already visited over the course of the demo. Some other places I haven't quite been yet. Here behind me, you can see Navarro is on the back of the bulldrome I just hatched. <laughs> and there's Kana and her monster <laughs> companion as well. And we'll do a little bit of exploring here. So when it comes to collecting materials, some like this over here, pretty easy to spot, not a problem to grab that. Other materials are gonna be a lot harder to find, especially when you're thinking about insects, some of the really small collectibles. You're just really gonna wanna dig into these environments to find all the goodies so that you can craft to your heart's content. And while yeah. you're doing that, you wanna be careful of the monsters. I, I just wanted to say like, we've, you know, we've gotten a chance to see you run around out here before and I just, I love how alive the environment is and, and your point about, you know, spotting those those items you can pick up. There's like so much detail to spot and it really rewards you if you're that person that loves exploring every nook and cranny, um, you know, of these, you know, big open spaces. And to jump on that point, you know, I was thinking about, um, you know, coming from the Monster Hunter Rise side, I'm a, I'm a fan, right? So I think regardless if you are a Monster Hunter fan existing, like a current one that's just really into Monster Hunter, or if you're not into Monster Hunter at all and you're interested to get into the series, I think this is actually a really good game for you to pick up and just to understand the world. Yep. Even the cycle of going out, finding stuff, and then like coming back and then crafting, all of those things, that whole cycle still applies um, yep. in Monster Hunter. So again, great first point of entry into the series. Ooh, and um, I, I wasn't gonna talk about these just yet, but we kind of <laughs> lucked out here. You see that gold pile of rocks up ahead? Yeah. That is a rare monster den, and Ooh. it is going to kill me that I can't go in here right now because it's not <laughs> on the plan for our segment. We know about your completionist den. <sighs> okay, so I, I can talk about it at least. So monster dens are a really fantastic place to go if you want to fight new monsters, hopefully find some eggs and build out your party. Some of the dens are persistent on the map. Others are either rare, like this beautiful right. gold one that's taunting me over here, or they only <laughs> appear under very specific circumstances. So normally when you play, hit those up every time you see them, because that is the best way to level up your party and also build up your party with new monsters. You sure we can't just take a peek in there? <laughs> I, I, I want to, but I feel like I'll, I'll run out of time if I do. Yeah. Um, also over here, uh, just to take a look out, and uh, we noticed this earlier, uh, monsters appear in the field, so I can choose whether or not to interact with them, whether or not to engage with battle. Mm -hmm. Again, if I was just playing this normally, I would be running up to every single one of these monsters, <laughs> getting into fights, but I have a lot to cover here, so I'm not going to do that this time. Uh, I know it some hurts of the monsters, a little bit for you, Sam. I know. I know. You play games. <laughs> some of the guys up there were herbivores, so they pretty much leave me alone. But these guys are a little bit more complicated. They're hostile. They're going to come at me. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to use Bulldrome's dash move and see if I can time this right to sneak by them. You've got this. Uh, oh, yeah, so you that guy's crossing my path. I want them all kind of clustered up. So this <laughs> is one of the interesting things about... Let's do it. You got it. Just oh. Yes. Come on, Bulldrum. Go, go, Bulldrum. Sneaking through. There we go. Oh, okay. Nice. He, he's not easy to turn. <laughs> he just kind of goes. So, oh, keep going, buddy. Keep going. All right. I think we're good. I'm just going to, here we go. Okay. Straight away here. We absolutely nice. want to think about, oh, okay, there we go. Um, we want to think about party strategy when it comes to monsters in battle, and we'll get into that in a bit. But these traversal skills are also really important, mm -hmm. especially this early in the game. I've noticed a lot of places that I can't get to quite yet. Maybe I'd need to swim or I'd need to climb, but I don't have a monster that can do that. Yeah. So I want to think about which monsters have the skills that I want to use to navigate the environment and then also who I want to have in battle. Yeah, I love that, that both sides of things. Like you definitely, I mean, battles are a big thing, obviously, as we're going to see, but I love that you're also considering 
what type of environment I, am I in? What particular abilities does you know each monster have? Vines. Um, and and Find them. building that up. And actually, that's one reason that I swapped back over to Ranmar here. So Bulldrum was great with that dash ability for getting by those monsters, but he's still a level one. He doesn't have much experience under his belt. Ranmar is really nicely leveled. So as we get into a fight here, I want him in the lead. Oh boy. He'll be the first oh monster boy. in a battle. Here we go. Start talking about some battle strategy. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Okay, so we snuck up on him. So to start it off here, I'm going to keep it with really basic attacks so we can just walk through some of the really ground level mechanics before we go further. The first important thing to know about this game is I really only have control over myself. I don't pick the actions for my full party. If you take a look at the lower edge of the screen there, I can see what each of my teammates is going to do. If I get a high enough kinship bonus going with my monster, I could maybe tell the monster what to do, but beyond that, really, I'm paying attention to what my teammates are doing so I can strategize around them. And the next really key element to combat is this kind of rock, paper, scissor mechanic. And you can see an indicator on the left side of the screen that is a helpful reminder there. So essentially, power beats technical, technical beats speed, speed beats power. I love that that icon triangle because I would totally forget that. <laughs> so, yeah, I said it's color coded. Yeah. It's a handy reminder. And for me, it's actually my attack option because I can do all three kinds of attacks. And I'm going to focus the Kuliyaku because he'll be nice and burly and a good practice monster. I know he is generally speaking a technical type, so I'm going with a nice simple power attack with my sword. So when it comes to monsters and their attack types, different monsters have uh, kind of a predisposition toward ter certain types. So Kuliaku tends to throw out technical attacks, Renmar tends to throw out speed attacks, but I can't necessarily guarantee that. So I have to allow for a little bit of uh, uncertainty here, plan a team that's going to have some uh, good flexibility, and also just pay attention to what's going on. This is not a game where I can just button mash my way through. Right. And here you see there's some bright lines connecting me to the two monsters. That means that both of them have decided to target me for their next attack. And uh, another interesting place where the rock, paper, scissor mechanic goes in is if I choose to attack Kuliaku and I have the power advantage over what's hopefully a technical attack that that Kuliaku throws out, I'm going to do more damage. Okay, I'm good. It did throw a technical out. Nice. There you can see my power attack beat the technical. So I did a nice chunk of damage. Uh, my kinship meter, which is the little blue circle between me and my monster, got filled up. Mm -hmm. You really want to do your best to optimize those opportunities, pay attention to the move types, also pay attention to how monsters change up their move types, and that's something that you definitely see in any Monster Hunter game. You, you can't just assume yeah. what's going to happen with a monster. And here, Kuliaku picked up a rock. So... And JC, like, I know when we've, you know, we've seen Sam do some mm. battling before, and I love those things you called out that were like, oh yeah, I've seen this. Like, this is familiar to me, right? From yeah. being an experienced Monster Hunter player. So funny. It's actually the first thing I was like, oh, he picked up a rock. I'm like, that's right. He also picks <laughs> up a rock in Monster Hunter Rise. And if you see a rock, you want to do like a blunt, like attack to the front, or you Smashy. just want to like, yeah, see, like <laughs> it's it's all there. All, all of this knowledge is all the same. So again, a great way to prep folks. So again, if you're a you know, Monster Hunter fan like me, you'll recognize a lot of the things. They pulled like really clever details like that. Uh, like breaking parts and you see the monster get knocked over and you're like this is like the everyone kind of is super excited when they see a monster get knocked over because like this is the time for you to do damage and yeah. that was interesting actually i was going to smash the rock with a hammer but ramar actually did the job for me i think it was ramar or avmar <laughs> they, they did an attack and knocked the monster prone so they broke the rock part so now that rock is not a problem ramar monsters gonna ram prune <laughs> it's doing work man <laughs> Uh, now I can see, I can attack the monster, they're downed, so all of my attacks are going to be crits. But if I take a look at the icons that are above the monster there, there's a line, a little red dash through the bludgeoning damage type. So mm -hmm. my hammer's not a good choice, and I'm going to swap <coughs> back to my sword, because I was having good Your luck with Your chicken decapitator? <laughs> yes! I mean, look at this thing, it's awesome, it's huge! <laughs> and it's flashy, oh. it's stylish, I'm a fan. And, uh... It, for anybody who's played Monster Hunter, you know, it's, it's all about getting the gear, uh, collecting parts from monsters so you can craft this really awesome stuff. Yeah. It looks cool as well as being functional. Yeah, I love the way it changes your look and, and you get this whole different vibe on your character based on the gear they have equipped. So here we're getting loads of experience, which is great for Bulldrome because he's a kiddo. He's got to grow up. <laughs> got some uh, collectibles and monster parts, and a really important hey, thing to pay attention to nice is... Nice A rank. Oh, yeah. thank you. Uh, I could get S if I did a little better, but yeah. 
you know, talking and playing is, is kind of weird. It's tough. Um, <laughs> really, the goal there is to really optimize my battle strategy. So again, you don't want to battle map. Uh, sorry, button mash through these battles. You want to think strategically, make smart choices, make the best use of your party you can. The more effectively you do in a battle, the more bonus points you're going to get. Try to get up to rank S. That's going to improve the rewards coming out of battle. And if you really want to bump up your party, thinking strategically and getting those S ranks is the best way to go. Yup. And now that we're back, uh, let's see here. Let's head this way. Yeah. Uh, you can actually see down here at the bottom, I've got my map indicator. Mm -hmm. uh, that little dotted line is indicating where I've been, and it is super helpful. Uh, right. I will say for the sake of this demo, I'm beelining it through spaces that I would normally spend a lot more time exploring. I'm, I'm missing a lot of the cool details because I want to make sure we get to all of our content. Oh, uh, they're coming for me. Wait, no, 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 no. I can't afford to fight right now. You guys calm down. Or we're going we're gonna to try to be sneaky here. They were just excited to see a fellow Ramar. You I know. know. Hi. Stop. Oh, happy. All right. Um, oh, screw it. We'll just see how this goes. Ah, come on, buddy. <laughs> Sam, jump, 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 jump. Go, 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 go. Amazing. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, the jumps, the dodges. We're good. Um, oh, sorry. What I was saying there was the uh, dotted line of the map is really helpful because right now I'm beelining it and I'm missing a lot of stuff that I want people to take the time to discover for themselves in these areas. But with all the backtracking you can do in here to find materials and find all the monsters that are looking in these spaces, you can get a little lost. Having yeah. that dotted line to tell you, okay, here's where you were, let's try to backtrack is oh. super helpful. And I'm going to try to miss this young cuckoo. Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I wish I could fight you and take your parts, but we got places to be. <laughs> so you may live. Yeah, this, you know, the map is big. Um, I, you know, getting my hands on it a little bit, I, I totally realized, like, this is a yeah. beefy demo. Just this one it's little no section. Joke. There's a lot in here. It's just a lot. Okay, so we found a monster den. Uh, we're going to do some investigating here, see if maybe we can get a bead on that poisonous monster that's hanging around this area. So mm. let's see what we got here. I smell something. So I will mention here, I set the VO to English just in case anybody's watching today who can't quite pay full attention to the screen, but you can swap over to the Japanese VO. So if you prefer to listen to Japanese voice acting, go right ahead. You have your choice of how you want to set that. <laughs> and I think oh, we no. maybe found our poison problem. <sighs> it's so cute. <laughs> Isn't this one of your favorite monsters? Yeah, uh, yeah it's a Puke Puke. Uh, so this monster's called a Puke Puke. It, uh, you know, it lashes out with its tongue to do... Uh, uh, you know, some attacks, it has some poison to it, um, and it's yeah, creepy. it's it's like so ugly mm. it can't help it, so it's cute. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually working on a new dance called uh, Do the Puke Puke, but oh, oh. you're not going to reveal it here. Oh uh, man, if we had time at the end of the segment, <laughs> could Only be another world debut. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? So uh, I kind of took a, a little bit of a hint there from uh, what Navaru and Kano were saying before we entered in the battle. They mentioned that these guys are kind of tricky, so I'm, I'm hoping that means technically inclined, and it uh, looks like it. They're generally throwing out technical attacks here, so... Oh, there! Ooh, double attack! Both Renmar and Ooh. I threw out a technical attack... Sorry, um, a power attack against the technical at the same time. We had the advantage, so we did a double attack, but... What I'm actually going to do here is swap over to Bulldrome. Mm -hmm. Because even though Ranmar is a higher level and, generally speaking, does really well in combat, my Bulldrome is inclined toward power attacks, which against a technical monster is going to be a little safer. So, I'm going to see how he does out here. He's got some levels now, so hopefully he'll be okay. And Kanan using a special attack. She's got the sword and shield combo, which is another slashing damage type. And what oh, is it doing? Yeah, it's eating. Usually that kind of heals a little bit or it does, you know, or just kind of chills for a bit. Doesn't Did its face just turn a different color? Yeah. It's about to use poison apparently, so yeah. that's a thing. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to make a strategic adjustment here. Oh, I don't know if I have enough skill energy for it though. Oh no, this is going to be bad. So my bow here and... Yeah, I, uh, I'm out of luck this turn. Um, <laughs> if I had enough kinship gauge, I would want to use this absolute evasion move, which I think might help me avoid the poison. Okay. I but no. don't have enough energy, so I'm just going to go with an attack, see how piercing damage works against this monster. All right. And keep my fingers crossed that I'll build up that charge for later. Okay. 
You know, it's funny, Ethan, you pointed out kind of like uh, the face, you know, turning yeah. red and kind of looking at the monster. It was actually, like a subtle change, but... Yeah, it's actually one of the, the things that I kind of like is, you know, studying the monster, kind of knowing and recognizing, because right now, if you take a look at the top, it has, like, mm -hmm. question marks, and, like, you can't really tell. Oh, oh, oh that boy, is so that's, gross. That's I love really it. gross. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, and, what? Man. Oh, man. Yeah, okay. That, that hit pretty hard. That, no, look, that art... Strange the bow move would have been really good there. I know, right? And now um, it's kind of back to normal looking. Yeah, it's back to normal. So kind of okay. studying the monster, you know, taking a look at the way it feels, oh, when it's about to do something more. big, or when it's tired, all those visual things will yeah. change. So again, yeah. things you learn either in Rise or here too. They're yeah. both applicable. And, so. and that's something like I've heard a ton about. I'm, I'm somebody who has observed the Monster Hunter series on mm -hmm. like from the sidelines, but I've heard tons of people talk about it, like you, other folks I know. Um, and it's all about, like like you said, studying the monsters, and I love that, you know, we're in a different series here, but that those things still apply. Um, this is, the time I've gotten oh, to oh spend no. with this and see is, like, definitely making me think this is oh, the buddy. title I'm going to dive in on. Oh, no. Right. Oh, so there I lost a heart. I do not want to lose all my hearts, so let's it's see okay. how this goes. Okay. You can do it, Sam. I believe in you. Yeah, you've got oh, this. Oh, thank you. You have a chicken decapitator. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why, why am I doubting myself? It's shameful. Um, okay, here I can choose parts. I want that tail gone, so I'm going to focus okay. my attacks on the tail. Uh, right here, Kana actually hopped onto the back of her monster. That was because her kinship gauge was full. So she had that full blue sphere. She was oh, able man. to hop on her monster's back, do this amazing kinship skill, after which she's going to hop back off cool. the monster. There's some other really great benefits yeah. to letting that skill charge fill up all the way. Um, as soon as she hopped onto her monster's back, she went back to full health. Her monster got a health boost, and uh, they had some other advantages that they could have enjoyed there as well. Uh, we're looking pretty good, so I'm just gonna I love the too. You get like for using those skills, you get these cool cinematic visuals that that come in, that just keep these battles so dynamic. Um, you know, I love turn pa turn based RPGs, um, but you know sometimes they're a little static in in terms of what you're doing and seeing during a battle. I just love all the different moves you're breaking out and you get rewarded with these these really cool scenes like that and speaking of i could use my ride right now um which would refill my health and uh give us the ability to do that that cool ride move of our own mm -hmm. since kana is going to be waiting a while to do that again i'm just going to use it now i'm not going to wait too long if she was close to the same level of kinship gauge that i'm at i would probably wait for her to catch up but let's see how we go here and if we both do at the same time, there's actually a really awesome animation, so I'm hoping we work out the timing <laughs> here somewhere. Go, Mr. Pig! <laughs> yes! Oh, heartbroken. Nice. All nice. right. So hopefully that tail means no more nasty, massive swinging attacks and poison all over the place. Yeah, it should not after that. All right, let's go back to some regular attacks here. So we can see here the, the piercing indicator was uh, crossed out with a red line, so... Mm -hmm. Beyond that skill that I'd like to be able to use, using my bow is not going to be super effective in this fight. Uh, the piercing type damage is really interesting, though. It's a new addition to the game. So we've got bows, and we've also got gun lances, which we right. didn't have in the 3DS game that came out a few years ago. Oh, and again, can't got lose attention. Got a chair on the Go, oh, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Nice done. So we've got the piercing damage with the bows and the gun lances. We've got, oh, what do I want to focus on? Head. Well, the body's almost out. Let's do that. Hoi. So that was a draw. Slashing damage with the kind of sword and shield combo that Kana has and my uh, big sword that I'm using. And then there's also the bashing type, which is the hammer. Yeah. And now, I see its face is red again. Let's yeah. see here. Um, I think it's angry. Both might, of them it could might use be angry. healing. Let's see what buddy. <laughs> Just maybe. So here uh, as well, I can tell what my teammates are doing. So Kana, uh, the indicator says she's going to use a potion. Mm -hmm. And if I take a look at Avmar here, his health bar, I can tell that's where the potion's going to go. Avmar's going to get the heal, so I'm going to get rid of that poison on Boldrome. Very nice. And I will offer here as we're going through all these mechanics and layering it up, if you're somebody who's just like hungry for battle mechanics and you love the complexity, you've played Monster Hunter maybe, this is probably all gonna seem very familiar to you, but if you're a player who's maybe newer to the genre and this maybe feels a little intimidating, please don't worry about it. We are a fair way into the demo, but uh, yeah, that's a good they do point. a good job with tutorial as you yeah. first start. So you're gonna get those layers, you're gonna get taught how to do all these things and how to build on the concept. So yeah. 
it, it's a fun experience no matter yeah, no, where your experience level's at. I um so I have two two daughters and we've, oh, we've no. dabbled a little no. bit in turn based RPGs. Oh dear, oh, you're losing oh. hearts. Bad oh, news. No. Get Dude, up, spooky, get spooky. up. Kick but uh, I was just gonna say like I for me. A veteran turn-based RPG player, I love the complexity and depth that we get here. But I'm also thinking yes. that I'm, you know, planning on showing this game to my daughters um, as an entry into the Monster Hunter series. I love that you can make friends with monsties, and you know, there's not Ooh. as much of an adversarial relationship. So we're gonna play this one together for sure. All right, so there we go, Epic. doubled up. I really hope this Puke Puke is close to being done. You'll notice the, the health bar actually just has question marks next to right. it. Uh, some of these big boss type monsters, even if I've run into a monster before, I can't assume that they're all kind of of a comparable level of strength. <laughs> this guy, <Wow>. as JC <laughs> mentioned in true okay. Monster Hunter okay. fashion, I, I hope this helps. Oh, wow. All right, there we go. Um, I, I don't know how much damage I've done, so I really have to right. rely on those tells as I look at the monster and watch its behavior, kind of keep my fingers crossed and just mm -hmm. do the best I can with my strategy and hope I make it. And that's because you haven't fought this type of Puke Puke before? Is is that it, or? Well, I haven't fought a Puke Puke in this demo yet, but this Ooh, guy's also a, a tough right, a, guy. A right, right, right. He's, okay. he's a bit of a beast, and he, he's looking a little rough looking, for wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's tired now. That's, that's it. That's your clue. He's close. OK, come on, Gee, Kina. It, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good look. OK. It's time. <laughs> We're going to ride. No holding back. Just need to take this guy down. Yes. Oh, come on, buddy. Nice critical. <gasps> You're still up. Oh my gosh. How are you still doing? This guy's a beast. Wow. Hmm. He's doing the puke puke. <laughs> Is that the dance? So first you drool, so you wag your head from side to side. Here, you can tell as well, I used up all my skill points on that ride, so I have to wait for it to recharge, and it looks like he's gonna start doing some poison action again. <gasps> oh, you! Oh, thank goodness. Done. Okay. Oh, that's wow. a good feeling. My partner. Oh, Come on. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, there's all right. the puns. The puns there's, are there's, a puns yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of puns. There's a lot of puns. Oh, S rank. Nice. Go, Sam. S rank wow. for Sam. Let's go Sam. Yes. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> so we've dealt with the Puke Puke. I'm ready to go home after this, but yeah. I, I want to take one little look at this nest before I make my retreat because. Because you're basically lucky. here on, on a mission. Yeah. On a class, right? Maybe I can get an egg out of this. Oh, perfect. So we've got some eggs in the nest, and this is really how I'm collecting new members of my party. Uh, by Navarro's estimation, the best eggs are stinky and heavy. <laughs> but I like the look of this one, and uh, it also looks like critters ran off with the rest while the nest was unguarded, so I'm just okay. going to consider myself lucky and get my butt out of here before something else shows up. My hands are full, so I can't really do much else. Yeah. I'm ready to leave. That's so nice. Selecting leave the monster den. <laughs> don't worry, you know you know where I was going with that, Monster Hunter fans. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to carry all the way back. <laughs> and instead of riding all the way back, I'm actually going to use a quick travel tool here to get myself back to the village. Uh, if you're familiar with felines from the Monster Hunter series, you know, in addition to being adorable, they offer a lot of fantastic services, <laughs> like a oh. transport service, which is not the most comfortable ride, but it gets you where you need to be. Hopefully Practical. your egg is okay. Yeah. I hope it's, so, man. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Up here in the upper right, I can see that my next task is to check in with my chief. So I'm going to report in, let him know what we've been seeing here before we move on. And I'm going to kind of bomb through the dialogue here mm -hmm. just because I want to make sure we get to all the content we've got. But the story in this game is really fantastic. It's really worth getting into and soaking it in. Yeah. Because you were saying, I mean, these are not monster hunters. They are monster riders, which was like a distinction that I wasn't fully aware of before we started looking into this game. So, I love it because I, I was always the kid who loved stories where you, you were friends with monsters mm -hmm. and, and riding monsters oh, and all yeah. that stuff. So this is really right up my alley. So there we found out that the chief is going to let me enter Guardian Rafa Woods and check out Guardian Rafa's den to see if we can figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. A really key point here is my island has long been protected by this incredibly powerful Raphalos named Guardian Rafa. 
There's some other interesting story connections that we'll talk about in a minute, but long story short, this Rathalos keeps all the other monsters in line, so if something happened to Guardian Ratha, that might explain why all these weird occurrences are taking mm -hmm. place. Normally, we leave Guardian Ratha alone at his place, we wouldn't go traipsing around his camp, but we're gonna go check it out. And they're actually, ooh, this is one of the visiting monster hunters. So right about the time everything went sideways, monster hunters were visiting. Mm -hmm. They kind of have some different opinions uh, oh, well, than we do about okay. what was happening. Um, from our perspective, maybe we need to find Guardian Ratha and work things out to get things back to normal. From their perspective, maybe it's kind of crazy to have a giant scary Rathalos as your guardian, but, yeah. you know, agree to disagree. <laughs> Now here, uh, since I downed that Puke Puke, mm -hmm. I want to fix up my gear that she suggested that maybe I, I could be heading into some trouble here. To take a quick look at weapons, this is a variety of the weapons that I could be crafting. To look at the types here, so we've got the sword and shields, the great swords, the hammers, hunting horns, and then the bows and the gun lances at the end here as well. But I've actually been wearing the same armor for a while, so I'm gonna see if I can get something new. Look so how many armors. Uh, oh, I know. The that looks so nice. awesome. Yeah. And the defense is way better, so I'm gonna make that. So here you can tell one of the possible components I haven't found yet, but I need to figure out what I want to spend to make up the points. That tail is worth 10 points. I only need four to make okay. this material into armor, any extra points get lost. So I uh, definitely want to hang on to that tail for something big and special, but I can make enough up with the scales. And uh, this is something that's probably like the, the way that your look and weapon, all that, all that cool stuff changes, is probably familiar to Monster Hunter fans, but to me coming at this from like an RPG fan, you know, oh, sometimes you go. get like a bit of clothing nice. or your weapon look will change, but I love that you get both, you know, and there's so, many ways to change up the way you look. You gotta appreciate how that sword, yeah. the color scheme oh, yeah. is just, bam. Yeah, Love and it. also uh, with, uh, you know, depending on the monster that you hunt, they also have different qualities. So the Puke Puke obviously mm -hmm. has a little bit of poison. So if you wear armor, you'll be a little bit of poison resistance. But if you have like a weapon and you craft that out of there, you know, Puke Puke parts, then Deal that weapon will exactly naturally poison have that. Nice. And every monster has its own strength and weakness. So you also want to go around and basically uh, hunt to your content and, and kind yep. of, uh, get those materials uh, to craft as much stuff as possible so you can really play into that strategy of crafting your best loadout. I will say it's hard when you take down a monster that's maybe harder to find. Mm -hmm. You've got those parts, you have to make a hard decision about what you're gonna make. Oh, right. Like, am I gonna find another Puke Puke soon or do I have to hang <laughs> on to those parts and, and make the best I can? And do I want a weapon? Do I want the armor? Yeah, that's a tough call. But it also is like, you can kind of decide how you want to play based on that. Like, are you a more attack-based, you know, more aggressive player? Or do you want to shore up all your defenses, you know, and, and you know, make sure you have that taken care of first? So I love that that kind of freedom of, of you know, how you play. And you got to be stylish. Oh, yeah. That's always. <laughs> yeah, I think Gordon. style might be the, t I mean, Main I don't consideration. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure that's how you play RPGs, right, Ethan? <laughs> like, you, you, like, this looks the coolest. <laughs> It may have the least amount of like actual clothing, but it's probably the strongest thing, <laughs> right? I and mean, that happens so often. Weird inverse game logic. <laughs> Here we go. So we are at Guardian Ratha Woods. Uh, this is where Ratha's den is. So we're gonna do some exploring here and see if we can figure out what's going on with Guardian Ratha. So one of the things that I love about this game is you can enjoy it completely independently. Mm -hmm. So if you've never played a Monster Hunter game, if you didn't play the Monster Hunter Stories game on 3DS, it's okay, you can jump in and really enjoy the story as is. But if you've got those connections to the Monster Hunter franchise, uh, especially here in this case, if you've played the original Monster Hunter Stories on 3DS, you'll pick up some interesting connections. So my character here is actually the grandchild of the protagonist from the Nintendo 3DS game. So my grandfather had some incredible adventures, ended up settling down here, and the adorable little Rathalos that he hatched at the beginning of that game grew up to be Guardian Rafa. So ended up being an incredibly powerful monster. Uh, my grandfather has since passed away, but a lot of folks in the world still remember him. He was a very highly regarded monster rider. And there are other folks in the world who still remember him. So you're gonna be seeing some maybe familiar characters and really building on the legacy of that character if you enjoyed that game. Mm. And again, not how I would normally play, but I got places to be, so I'm gonna miss all the collectibles. <laughs> I know, all these little sides, all the side monsters. paths and stuff we have to skip. We're gonna try to avoid fights as much as possible. 
Do, do, do. The size of these areas kind of is like here. really surprising. Yeah, and this is just remember, like you're. Well, this is what only the first or second area that like we have, and this is all in the demo. And again, I will say, pick up the demo. Yeah. The demo is so big. No, I mean on the on the start screen, you would played more than ten hours so far into this. So that's. It's very relaxing too. I love just honestly riding around and enjoying the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful, and there's just so much to dig into here. Let's see, that's a little bit of a dead end. Let's try up this way. So uh, for you guys, I'd love to come back to the conversation about your your kind of levels of familiarity with the franchise and what that does. Yeah. Like, JC, I know you have gone deep into Monster Hunter Rise. I don't know what your hour count is right now, but <laughs> you're coming at this as somebody who spent a lot of time hunting monsters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, it's interesting because, like, uh, you know, I was introduced to the Monster, Monster Hunter franchise by a friend here, actually, at Nintendo. Um, and we just started hunting together. Just like, try this, you'll, you'll yeah. like it. No, and no. so, you know, we started playing, and one thing led to another. Next thing you know, I was just hooked uh, because I love helping other people. And all you do is just help other people. And, and it's so wholesome and it's fun. Um, but yeah, um, over time, you start to learn all these little details about the monsters, and you get to know their names. and. Um, all of that, so it's really refreshing to see so many little call-outs, the A button, the sound effects, yeah. everything kind of lines up in this <clears throat> Monster Hunter universe that makes this a perfect complement to, no, 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 uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Monster Sorry. Hunter players. No, go ahead. I love <laughs> Sam in the background. Hey, do what you gotta do. Uh, you're, you're doing uh, great. Um, but yeah, so again, a really, really interesting, and, uh, and I'll admit, I, I am I'm really, really interested in playing the full game because I think playing the demo absolutely sold me on what yeah. what this game offers, and I definitely could use a good RPG right about now. Yeah, and I, from my perspective, like I love RPGs, grew up on RPGs, and have always been a little bit like, do I have the time to dive into Monster Hunter? Like, I hear people talk about it, and their passion is immediately, like you can totally tell how much they love it. Um, but it's always seemed a little intimidating. Uh, but I actually have to stop and check out this. What is? Where are we now? We are in a little feline burrow. Sorry, I saw the icon no, no, on the I... map and I couldn't resist. <laughs> so this is a caravanner. He's one of the little felines who runs the quick travel service that I used earlier. So he's got to stop here. I'm not going to travel, but good to know that he's here. <laughs> he's uh, I've also horrible. got um, face on this a little statue. healer here. <laughs> she, the supportive feline, if I needed healing, she would help me out. And she is... <laughs> Also, just, I mean, look at how cute. Uh, uh, I'm peeled up right now, but I just want to say hi. Um, wow. There's also a chest here. I am not going to steal from these adorable little cuties. Uh, I will leave it up to everybody's own moral but you, compass. you could, though. What, you could. <laughs> okay. But would, would you want to? Look how yeah. cute they are. No, I'll just, I'm just going to finish what I was saying before, which was... <laughs> <laughs> Got to take a break for the felines. But, yeah, um, good. was just that, like, I have always been, like, I know that Monster Hunter gameplay is very real-time and very action-based in, in the, you know, the main series. Um, and what I love about this is, as an RPG fan, I have the time to pick my strategies and, you know, take, you know, uh, you know kind of things one step at a time in a turn-based environment. Um while I'm still getting all that full Monster Hunter flavor, you know, that, that is present in the rest of the series. Um, so, yeah, again, like, ah! this may be the one that can oh, okay, okay. dive nope. in on, on other titles, too. Like, I'm there we go. thinking about checking about Rise uh, just because of the time I've spent with this demo, so. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the knowledge, again, everything you've seen here, uh, it'll definitely here help go. you, even. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. We should hunt together sometime. I would love that. Love that. And this game actually has co-op as well, so you guys can party <gasps> up in Rise and party up here. Oh, nice. So I won't say too much during this cutscene, but one thing I will mention, if you're interested in the look and you're interested in the game, so check cool. out the trailers that have been released so far. Uh, we had some content in the Nintendo Direct that just showed as well, so you can get a look at some of the later game content. It's really beautiful. I'm sure he's waiting for Red to come home. That's what Chief Gara always said. But this red guy's not around anymore, right? So why? The truth is, once a monster forms a bond with a rider, it never forgets them. Remember that strange light when Guardian Ratha left? Something must have happened then. Otherwise, Guardian Ratha would never have abandoned the island. Okay, let's take a look around. 
to me. My nose knows there's something here. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've watched any of the trailer content, we're going to see a character here that is probably going to look familiar. time ago I know it's just I I actually came to see guardian Ratha red gave me something to bring back here something from red oh. whoa. Whoa, whoa, what was that whoa. Whoa. something's coming over there Suddenly regretting missing all those fights I could have earned some experience in. <laughs> in Guardian Ratha's bed? Well, why is it acting so weird? What's going on? This looks awfully bad, buddy! Please, take this. It's Red's old kinship stone. Mm. You might be able to use it to calm that monster down. Red's kinship stone? How come you have it? Red... He wanted you to have it. Take it. <laughs> so this is the next fight in the demo. Um, I, I thankfully will not need to embarrass myself here, I don't think, because we are close to running out of time. So um, I can just kind of pop through a, a round or two here. But uh, JC, since we're almost done, we could probably circle back to the news that we've got to share about the cross compatibility, eh? Ah, uh, yes. I'm a little bit, I'm sure, a little video will play. Um, and we'll start kind of talking about some Amiibo. Um, so, generally speaking, if you have Amiibo uh, from, uh, let's see, from Monster Hunter Rise, and you kind of tap them into this game, and I'll kind of wait for the, uh, thing to show up, yeah? Something like that? You got a video. Okay. Maybe you should wait for the video. Should I wait? That's all right. I mean, while we're waiting. Okay. Um, while we're waiting, I'll uh, join we hit here. Um, so, the demo is going to come out on the 25th, so yep. very, very soon. Mm -hmm. The game is going to launch on the 9th, so please do check it out. Um, I've been having a blast. This is a really, really fun demo, and I think you're going to get a kick out of it. Uh, oh, and it looks like the video is up. Let's go. Yeah. So if you basically, if you have some of the uh, some of the amiibo from uh, Monster Hunter Rise, and you tap them in a Monster Hunter Stories <laughs> Two, have them. Uh, you get some stickers, um, and those stickers will look real familiar to you, and they'll, they'll be happy here. Uh, and the inverse is true. So if you tap in the Monster uh. Hunter Stories Two amiibo into um, uh, into you know Monster Hunter Rise, you get stickers in that game. So yeah, it's uh, definitely something to look forward to because I know I definitely will uh, uh, do the same. Um, as well as another little point I want to make, which is if you have save data um, for this particular demo on your system and you fire up uh, Monster Hunter Rise, and it doesn't matter which order it comes in, um, and you talk to Senri the mailman um, in Monster Hunter Rise, um, he'll give you a talisman. And that talisman, kinship that talisman. kinship talisman, yeah. thank you very much. Um, it basically, uh, you get, it also has uh, two skills. Um, the first one's like uh, Master Mounter, which kind of helps you like do your dodge counters a bit easier, helps fill that gauge a bit faster if you're riding gauge. Um, and also Wide Range, which I use a lot, which is basically, you know, you have a lot of 
items, you use some helpful stuff, and then it shares that effect with the rest of your teammates. So really cool, and it's again, it's free. Um, I think Sam already hit on the date, but just to remind you again, free demo, lots of, lots of good stuff happening on June 25th, full game releases on July 9th, so we're just around Yeah, that's coming up. Good summertime really, really game. soon. <laughs> and and with that being said, again, that is all we have to show for you today on Just From Us. So thank you so much. First of all, to Capcom for allowing us to show this really awesome demo. Thank you to Sam and to Ethan. Uh, it's great being with you guys once again. Seriously. I just so, nice so to much. see you in person, oh, yeah. dude. So great. And, uh, and also to you out there watching, thank you for sticking around. You could have been anywhere in the world, <laughs> but you're here with us, and we appreciate that. But don't go anywhere because we have more stuff coming up next. We have a bit of a look to show you for some Mario Golf Super Rush. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live. I'm Brandon from the Nintendo Treehouse, and I'm joined by Teresa and Rob and Kay, and we are gonna show you a little bit of Mario Golf Super Rush, which is coming out on the Nintendo Switch system very soon, uh, only in a couple of weeks. Uh, Teresa, you are our driver, pun intended. <laughs> uh, so uh, why don't you kick us off here? Why don't you, why don't you uh, start with play golf? Show us what's, what's, what's in store. Sure, uh, so we're gonna go through several modes, but we're gonna start with standard golf because as it's in the name, it's your standard experience. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, we're going to play with the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, and we're going to go with two players. Rob, will you be my plus one? Absolutely, I will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're going to do uh, the format stroke play and take turns so then we can see um, the full visibility of the screen. Uh, you can do... Let me back it out. You can do all at once, which is a new feature... Uh, for offline in this game uh, before it was in, in an available in Nintendo 3DS version of the Mario Golf game um, and it was available online so this is really cool that you get to try it out offline now yeah I love this roster of playable characters look at how <laughs> amazing all the outfits look yeah look, like like oh, Luigi at look at that so yeah. dapper Mario's pants are such a choice. I'm so here for it. <laughs> it, it. It might be all the choices. <laughs> yes, he's ticked all the boxes. It's uh, like a flow chart. Those are those are <laughs> colors that are together. <laughs> I also I'm also very fond of Bowser Jr.'s visor. I think that is a very good fashion choice for well, particular. And look at Bowser Sr. here with his like black and red oh, yeah. ensemble. He's very going good. Phase. And there's that visor. I want, I want uh, that visor. <laughs> clown car visor is great. Everyone is dressed yeah. best. So who, who are we actually playing as? Who are we going to bring uh, to the green on this? I'm going to go with Mario. He's the OG. Sensible choice. Uh, I'm going to go with the other OG, Pauline. Nice. Ah, so this is Pauline's first appearance in Mario Golf. Uh, hopefully she brings a little bit of expertise. She is the mayor of a major city, so hopefully she's played a few games of golf before. That sounds like it's probably... <laughs> you know, part of her repertoire, so. That's my secret strategy. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> so we're gonna play Wild Weather Woods. Um, and what's really interesting about this course is that there's uh, natural hazards that will affect your gameplay and you need to account for. So uh, there's different courses in Mario Golf Super Rush where um, all each course will have its own little uh, conditions and it makes gameplay very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Starting off on a pretty sunny day here in Wild Weather Woods, but as the name implies, that might change. Yeah, yeah so it's a, it's a clear, sunny day. Moderate wind. Uh, lots of trees. Yeah, moderate wind, seven miles per hour, uh, sort of uh, westerly wind. Just enough to be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see uh, right underneath Pauline's name, there's a little flag indicator with two uh, downward facing uh, arrows that means that the flag is downhill so that's something we need to take account for um i'm gonna turn here to an overhead view and you can see that as i change the clubs the distance changes as well 
So uh, the carry, which is the distance that the ball will um, uh, go fly. through, fly, thank you, <laughs> um, will change. And then that little white kind of um, transparent line is where the ball will roll or run. So that is your potential max distance you can travel if it does roll all the way to the end of that transparent line. Correct. So I want to account for that wind that's going westward. So I think I'm going to go... watch out for that tree, though. Yeah. yeah hopefully the wind can... carries it away. I think I can... I can go over it. So you'll see my shot gauge kind of go up and down. So the first hit is for me to start the shot, but the second hit is for me to set the power of the shot. So nice shot. I'm going to go for it. Oh! Oh, oh clear the tree. Very nice. Very, yeah. very nice. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> You're just showing off for us now. Nice. Nice. Right. Golf claps. Golf claps for Golf. a good shot. All right. So now you notice that um, Mario could get a little farther than, than Pauline could, and that's because uh, all the characters have different stats. Uh, Pauline is good at other things. Mario has a little more driving distance. Um, I'm going to... Yeah, I think that's probably a good spot to aim for. It's right between those trees. Yeah, what does your mayoral instinct tell you, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> Hit the ball and pray. Oh, probably. Nice shot. Very nice shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, that was nice. Nice. Oh, nice. nice. You guys are off to a good there. start. I traveled a fair bit, too. Yeah. Get to go again since yep. you're farther back. Yep. Notice the little bitty buds there. They're a cord. They're both a course hazard and a course opportunity. If you <laughs> hit one, you get a coin, which helps fill up your meter, but um, they can throw off the ball. An it's, adorable hazard. It's They're true. an adorable hazard. They can throw off your ball, like, but sometimes it could be in a positive direction where it can get you closer to the flag, so. Uh, you'll gamble. notice also that my, sorry, um, my, my shot gauge is a little bit curved here, and that's because of the way the, the ball is lying. That's right. And I got these red uh, triangles here to show me that if I try to get at my maximum power, I lose a little bit of control in the process. There's so much helpful visual information just like that. Like that little slight curve just helps yeah. you out so much. Yeah. Nice. That worked out really well. Very well done. Look how beautiful that was. Thank you. Stay on the green, stay on the green, stay on the green. Ooh, a little uh, bit too much power. It's just curious. slightly too much power. Just wants to see what's over there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You're so still in good shape, though. I need to count for that wind that's going northwest. Just a little seven miles, just a little bit. Okay. And I want to go a little bit less because I want to hit, I want to get closer to that flag. Yeah. So I'm going to do a spin, a back spin, to minimize the run of the ball. So when I set, I start the shot, I'm going to set for that back spin right there. I'm holding my breath. I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that looks promising. Oh, that looks very promising. Oh, oh, very that, nice. What a good setup. Nice Thanks. Shot. Very genuine golf club. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Genuine. What have you been doing up till now, Brandon? <laughs> like golf <clap. laughs> Okay. All right. So this is, yeah, pretty straightforward. I've got a little bit of a uh, downhill to the left going on the green. So I'm going to try and compensate for that. You're also chipping and not putting. Yeah. But if you wanted to switch to your putter, you could. I could, but that feels like wasted effort in the rough. <laughs> That was probably a little too, too much. Strong. That was, that was a little too, too strong. It was a lot too much power. But you did get it out of the rough. Good. I did get it out of the rough. <laughs> nice recovery. Thank mm -hmm. you. Set up for a long putt, but, you yeah. know, I've seen people make it in from farther. Yeah, so. yeah. And it looks like between me and there is, is pretty pretty straightforward. A little bit of a uphill that you have to yeah. fight through. I love the way that that overhead view and even the grid we're looking at now changes when you switch to putting to let you know exactly what the topography is, yeah. what Ooh. you have to account for. The moving arrows and, and the, the colors really make it easy to tell at a glance what you're looking at. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's still me. Okay. Because I'm still farther. <laughs> that's cool. That's, I think this is the one. That's on me. You got this. You got this. All right. There we go. That looks good. Maybe. Oh! oh. oh man. <laughs> Hit the, so close. Hit the hole. Thanks. It's Kevin. it's because the hill <laughs> is uphill. This is a very tricky it, green. Yeah, it definitely because it's uphill it will give a little bit of a curve to your to the ball. So, all right, 
All right. Show us what you're you got. All right. I know this here. is you're you're up for a birdie. No pressure. <laughs> Oh, yeah, nice. Cool. Well, Look at Mario. Very so happy. well done. Very good job. <laughs> okay. Now, because the game is, uh, if you get within a certain range of the hole, the game just says, yeah, tap in. You don't actually have to do anything skillful there. Very good. <laughs> that is a very satisfying noise. Don't be upset, noise. Pauline. You still have two more holes. That's right. Two more holes. You still got game. Still got game. She's so. just playing the long game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So hole two, uh, par three. So we want three strokes or less. Um, and the wind is going southwest. A little bit stronger than the last course, oh, yeah. so it's something to keep in mind. Yeah. Strong side. So, because I'm still gonna be a little bit too far, I wanna give a little bit more run on my, and I wanna count for that wind too. It's 11 miles per hour, so you definitely wanna count for that wind. Yeah, that's that, that looks good. And then, I'm gonna add some topspin. Nice Let's hope you don't roll off the edge into the water. Yeah. I'm gonna fast forward to see where this goes. Oh, very nice. Oh, nice. very nice. Ooh. Hold on. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna try and, uh, oh, you're actually out of my range. I was gonna try and use my special shot to knock you out, but I can't reach you. <laughs> I think you should still use you it, though. You can try. Or you could save it for the next one. I'll save it for the next hole. That's probably wise. That's a good strategy. <laughs> of course, now I've tipped my hand. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, we'll talk about special shots here in a bit because they are, they are as in the name, special. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Well done. Yes. Nice. All right, all right. Nice. All right. On. 30. Ooh, no pressure. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. <laughs> Right. That's I quite can... a long putt, though. It is a long with putt. With a lot of, of of dips. Yeah, there's downhill, and you're also fighting the wind. Yeah. All right. A lot of factors at play here. But of course, as we know, if you go too hard, <gasps> oh, you go right oh, so hole. close! <laughs> Incredible. I was demonstrating that. that yeah, <laughs> a little bit too much. Too hard, a little bit yes. too much. Skate right through the hole. It's a very delicate balance. It is a very delicate balance. Am I maybe a little bit too much? All right. I'm hoping here. Oh, that looks good. Nope. No, <laughs> too much. No. Too much. It was too much. Yeah. They're just warning the flag. They want to let it know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we I should go. have gone straight. That's okay. I think oh. this is a. This looks a pretty. Shot. Right. Pretty flat where you're at. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Nice. Very nice. Ooh, nice Very good. Good job, Ooh. Polly. Thank you. Let's see if I can save this. I like that the music changes nice. when you're putting too. <laughs> yeah, it gets like good. really ups amped the, up. Ups the tension a little bit. Yeah, that Very made effective. me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> my, my palms are sweaty. <laughs> That sounds like golf stuff. Yep. <laughs> That's supposed to happen. All right. So last hole, uh, par four. You've gotten really lucky with the weather. Yeah, it's really sunny because in Wild Weather Woods, there does get some storm clouds and actual thunder. So the thunder can mess up with your strokes. You mm. could get electrified, which... Uh, if you're it, not careful, yeah. It, it does mess with your game. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit... Play a little bit differently here. Yeah, I think that's smart. Um, southwesterly wind. I'm gonna move it a little bit there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna minimize the backspin. Or, so, so it looks like it. like you're trying to avoid, do a little shorter and avoid the trees, so you can have a straight shot at the flag. Correct. I want to avoid. There's like four trees for me to account for, so I definitely want to get a clear shot of the flag to. I'm coming close to those bitty buds. Oh. Yeah, those bitty buds. Okay. And I think that's a pretty good idea. So <laughs> I'm going to copy off your paper. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see how this is. So it's a battle of technique. It is. Yeah. You're going to shoot right into the rough, though? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't think so. Yeah. Just checking. Just psyching this out. <laughs> 
Oh, oh, go for the rough, Rob. It's a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a game of psychology as well as uh, making the balls fly for. <laughs> Typical golf stuff. Yeah. Golf stuff. Yeah. Golf stuff. I Look think this buds. might hit the bitty buds, though. Oh! oh Miraculous save for the bitty buds. Lucky that day for the bitty buds. was <laughs> very lucky. Ooh, I'm a little bit still too close to the tree. Yeah, how's that overhead view? Oh boy. Oh, it might yeah, be a good go chance to show off a curve shot though, Teresa. It might be, yeah. All right, should we do altitude? Add some altitude? Yeah. Yeah, or I can do a special shot. Yeah, you know what? Those those bars at the top are always so ready for golf. Yeah, <laughs> look at the fire, the man's action. Let, let, let's just try. Yeah, your meters up at the top are full and kind of commanding our attention. So I would love this... to share a little bit of the special shots. Yeah. This might be a game changer. Let's it's find so out, shall we? I know. All right. All right. Nice. So every character has a different special shot. Mario's will arc and then land. Oh, nice. very well done. You can see that impact as the ball landed there. That yeah. would have knocked another ball out of the way. Yeah. All right. Luckily, Pauline wasn't there yet. Well. And this I'll have is to see Pauline's what I can special do. shot. Yeah. I don't want to go quite that far, though. Yeah, that, that looks, looks pretty good. good. All right. <laughs> she's ready, too. She's so ready. Oh, she's so talented. Ah, oh, I love her. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. And because Pauline goes a little oh. lower <laughs> on her arch, she missed the branches and the leaves that could have messed up with her uh, stroke. So yeah. that was well played yeah i think that was a very good shot given that you were directly in front of a tree yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm very impressed that's so somebody's not very good at golf <laughs> so the flag is uphill there's a little blue arrow in the little flag indicator so that's something rob will need to account for and since rob's in the rough you can see that the red arrows have lengthened <gasps> oh, wow. Incredible. Oh, wow. wow wow <laughs> There's that mayoral expertise. Yeah. I don't. Wow. The I don't... long game. Yeah, that Teresa was a literally game. is speechless. <laughs> I am. I don't know. All right. Well, I'm a little bit thrown off here. Um, so I have to battle uphill, but also a slight westerly wind. Very slight. All right. Maybe a little bit too oh, strong. That's a lot of power. Ooh, oh. yeah. yeah, too strong. Yep. Oh, that's oh, no. Oh, that was not good play on my part. <laughs> <laughs> Talk right. about a long putt. Uh, my yeah. goodness. Long uphill putt. Yep. This Ooh. is where the power is. That's probably too much club, though. Come in handy. Think like a mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Think like a mayor. Municipal okay. bonds. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so close. I have done bad judgment calls. This is on me. It is not on Mario. It is I, on me. I will say that it is very satisfying whenever it hits the flag in any way. That is yeah. Satisfying. It Unless it bounces that... off of it and rolls away. <laughs> right. I guess that does diminish the satisfaction. <laughs> it does make you think you're going to hit it. Oh, it's okay, Mario. It's okay. He's I think that score overall is still I'm really hurting. good. Yeah. So I'm close enough here to the hole that the game is not going to make me do any kind of meter or anything. I just hit yep, the button here we go. and I tap in. Bink. Nice par. Thank well you. done, Rob. Well done. Beautiful. Wow. That birdie earlier saved me. Oh, well done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a good round of golf. Yeah, nice game. Congratulations. Very good. Thank you. Yay. Woo. Good sport. Good sportsmanship. <laughs> I concur. All right. So let's move on to Golf Adventure. Which I would is love. A really cool mode. I'd love, love to mode. see and share Golf Adventure. So we're going to start off with Rob Smee because I had planned for him to lose. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh! oh. <laughs> uh, Rob's, Rob's adventure starts from the very beginning. Uh, he starts as a rookie golf um, golfer, and he'll start here in the dormitory. The little Birdo okay, managing Birdo. the door. Hi, Birdo. Yeah. Hi, Birdo. Birdo's kitchen. <laughs> um, and we're at Bonnie Green's, which happens to be the birthplace of golf for the Mushroom Kingdom. 
Love that little tidbit. Love that we get to go to the place the sport originated in in Mario's world. That's very cool. <laughs> How yeah. cute everything looks. And all the characters are interactable, so you see the little speech bubbles here. Yeah. Yeah, and they all have interesting things to say. Some have tips, some throw shade. Like this guy on the bench that I just, I love him so much. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 That's wow. some good sass. Good day, you know, sir. He's trying to say helpful things. <laughs> he has an attitude about it. He has a hard time making friends. You know, All right. very relatable. Mm. Well, we're going to go explore the country club. And we're going to go here to the right. Um, where is the cafe? Look at Everybody's that. Uh, enjoying really yummy meals. Oh, the pink shy guy. So a little slice of life in the Mushroom Kingdom, just hanging out. In I'm such a sucker for that, Rob. I'm so, like, anytime that you get to see Mushroom Kingdom inhabitants just hanging out in their free time, <laughs> playing some golf. Living their best life. There's Pass a lot the for me locker to enjoy rooms, it. give them their privacy. <laughs> Go straight into the store. Um, and I, I love this part. So uh, when you're a rookie, you're given a preset of uh, golf clubs. And as you um, keep going through the golf adventure, you'll get in-game currency, which you'll be able to spend on additional inventory. So golf clubs, including this wacky, curvy <laughs> banana draw five it, hybrid. It's a, it's a banana fade five or a banana draw five hybrid. Either one. They're yeah. both classic golf clubs. Normal sure. golf stuff. Real, real yeah. things mm -hmm. definitely exist. It really <laughs> adds to those curve shots. Um, and also a tire, which has stats that can really help in your adventure. And also very stylish. Very yes. stylish. Look uh, at those pants. These are, this is where uh, I love uh, spending my money on because I can't <laughs> control myself. So, but it's, uh, it's for the sport. Yes, yes, it's for the sport. It's money well spent. But unfortunately, Rob doesn't is still in the beginning of his adventure, so not able to purchase those yet. So we're going to follow the red arrow. Uh, the top right of the screen also tells you, indicates what uh, mission or quest you're on, which the red arrow attributes to. So we're going to follow it to this guy with the exclamation point. <laughs> He's enthusiastic. It's a very peppy hammer bro. <laughs> you don't expect a hammer brother to be chill, do you? <laughs> Fair. Fair point. <laughs> They'll need 60 points to pass this lesson. Okay. Okay. That sounds doable. Sounds doable, yeah. All right. So uh, my goal is to hit the ball all the way to that pie chart over there. Um, and you see that circle, there's different segments. I want to aim for the blue because blue gives me the most points. So I'm gonna test to see the distance here to see how much power I have to hit the ball in order to get to 10. Why that much power? Wow, Good all test right. Just, just that, that, much right. Power. Yeah. that was exactly what you needed. You're a natural. Wow. <laughs> what if I did too much? Nice shot. <laughs> I'm out of curiosity. I'm just wondering <laughs> I mean, how, how these, far it rolls. That's what these practice rounds are for, right? Yeah, yeah, to, get to get a good thing. feel for okay. your power. A little too much. Your control of the ball. So this, this exercise, of course, is for practicing your drives. There's a bunch of other exercises for uh, other kinds of, you know, putting and other X skills. So you can focus on the part of the game that's giving you trouble if something is. Yeah, and for any reason, say that you advance, that was a little bit too weak on my part. For any reason that you advance through the adventure and you feel like, oh, I want more practice at a specific lesson, you could always backtrack and do these lessons again. Another good shot. Thanks. Golf Beautiful. claps, golf claps for oh, these yay. excellent shots. Thank you. Go, Rob, go. <laughs> wow, it's yeah, I guess like it I'm is, right there. It's Rob <laughs> doing the work here. So. I'm controlling him. Make Rob, you're doing easy. so well. Thank you. It's, it comes so naturally and easy. Oh. I'm mixing it up on you. Oh, just when you thought you got the hang of it. They did. All they right. They were like, hey, we heard you like sand. <laughs> they put a bunker there just for you. Wow. It's for you. So how can I go with full power and see how far the shot goes? Oh, I like the look of that. That looks pretty good. Pretty promising. Uh, oh, look at that. Oh, oh yeah. right at the edge. <laughs> now you're just showing off. <laughs> Another thing I could do is add some spin uh, to make the ball roll. Uh, so have the its run go a little bit farther. 
Um, of course, you didn't do it. I didn't. I was talking about it, and I went. <laughs> I confused myself, so I I deserve that seven. Competitive play, <laughs> even against yourself. All right, I'm, I'm gonna do it this time. There you go, top, top spin. spin. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So I set it as I'm setting um, the power of my shot. Uh, one thing I did mention too is that indicator on the bottom of the screen. It looks like a little curve. It's really cool to see just the distance that your ball travels as well as the the um, the run of it of the ball. So let's see. So I noticed on that last shot, it did, it did roll further because of the top spin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still need a little bit more power. Yeah. So there's the, the distance travel, the carry, and then the roll, the run of the ball. That's a lot of golf terms, Teresa. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of golf terms. As somebody I, that doesn't play a lot of golf. I don't. Funny enough, um, I learned through Mario Golf Super Rush. I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> since I hit the 60 score, I'm going to backtrack or back out of this lesson. I've obviously been able to complete it. But yeah, you've proved your mastery of this. I sport. have. <laughs> but I, I do want to show another thing as the rookie and in addition to the golf clubs, you also get a golf watch. Golf watch does a lot of different things. Uh, shows you the map, shows you stats. So as you progress through the adventure, you'll get experience points and then you get to put those points wherever you want. Love golf with experience points. <laughs> All of your inventory, this area. This is where I learned a lot of my golf uh, terminology as well as golf adventure. Yes, it's a single player mode. Great place for you to learn and practice and just get um, into the nitty gritty and learn from the basics up. Perfect. Like it's a gradual curve. Soon you will you will be more knowledgeable than Toad is. Yes. <laughs> You'll also get a plus one in your golf skills. Um, and then the adventure diary diary, which will change as uh, you um, or will progress as you progress in the story too. So we're gonna back out. Speaking of progressing in the story. Yes. <laughs> Segway. Segway. <laughs> We're gonna I'll go clap to Miami. That segue. Excellent segue. <laughs> so Miami is level 51 because I've done a lot of progression through golf adventure. <laughs> a lot of progression. Um, and the the red arrow is pointing backwards, but I do want to come over here. We're in a different area. It's balmy dunes. So the course is here. It's very dry, very deserty, which we, you would expect. Um, there's quicksand, which is something that you need to account for. Um, and there's also, because it's a desert, you need to account for your water intake. So I'm going to go to the vendor here just to show the different inventory that they have. Still that banana fade and banana draw driver. Yep. It's so popular. <laughs> um, so popular item. but here's some new attire. Some cool attire. <laughs> yeah. That I want to cool. change into because I happen to purchase it because again, I lack self-control. <laughs> <laughs> For the sport. Yes. Yes, this that's is my mind. going to work out in your favor, though. Uh, so, see, I'm going to put on cool attire. Reduces my water loss. That is pretty Very cool important. Attire. And desert shoes. All right, so we're going to follow the arrow now. So we're ready for some uh, golf in the desert. we yes. cool attire. Yes. Adventure golf. <laughs> it's the best kind of golf. <laughs> Oh, who is this? Who is speaking to us, Teresa? So this is a friendly voice uh, that gifted me their power, which was the lightning sword, in order to acquire a powerful item that will allow me to face more powerful foes. Like I said, a lot of golf terms. <laughs> lot of here. Yeah, it's all standard golf, you know. <laughs> There's a little quick time event here, and oh, I immediately done. get the item that I, I, I was looking for, the fire gem. Oh, yeah, fire gem. Nice. That. That's always a good thing. Golf. No downsides. Oh, Hello. No. Oh, <laughs> but someone is not happy with me obtaining said item. Yeah, they look pretty menacing. Look, look at this. Oh, <laughs> golf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is a boss battle. I wow. angered the sacred flame beast. Um, you doesn't mention because we're in the desert, I have to account for the water. So. My water intake is reducing, as you can see at the top right. That's um, where that cool attire comes in handy, correct? Yeah, or top left, you're right. Um, and you'll <laughs> see these uh, purple circles on the ground. Those are the boss's attacks. I have to run to these electric uh, circular items and oh hit the sacred flame beast. 
Oh, no, oh, it's a little bit short. short. Yeah. Too short. <laughs> so I'm going to dash by holding the B button, and you'll see my stamina bar depleting. Depleting, yeah. Oh, gosh. When you I'm not it. using it. You are cutting it very close. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh good I shot. Just hit it. Woo. Okay. Okay. So the water acts as, as your life total, basically, during this boss fight. Yes. Those attacks drain a lot of water. Very yes. hot in the desert. <laughs> it is. Oh, oh, no. Even hotter when you get hit by a fireball. <laughs> So here's the quicksand that I was talking about. So I'm gonna jump to try to get out of it. And you can see the location of those little lightning balls that are marked by exclamation points on the map. Correct. So that's handy. Ooh. Right in between these pillars. Oh nice. my gosh. Oh, nice. yeah. Good shot. Nice work. All right, so now I have to go all the way across to get to... Yeah, oh. super, a special dash. I like that you're kind of just playing chicken with it as you stand in the middle of its purple attack area. Where is it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> She's playing oh, Sacred Flame really Beast with it, bro. Sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was insensitive. <laughs> oh, too strong? Oh, no, oh, no I got it. I got oh, it. got it. Nice. Yes. I think the Sacred so mentioned... Flame Beast looks angrier than ever. Yeah, so now where where do I go? Oh, there, right there. there. Ooh. Oh. Hello. Yay! <laughs> Don't hit me! Super happy to be fighting this sacred oh. movie. Do you understand the situation you're in? No. <laughs> Hurry up, here's having a good go. fight. I need to wait for the boss to power the shot to hit it back and. Oh, nice! Oh, nice. nice. Good yeah, for golf claps for wow. the sacred flame beam. Thank you! That was exciting. So I, co I completed my, my quest and I've got a lot of experience and I'll be able to put that into different stats. So I'm gonna do speed, spin. Sure, that sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> nice choices. Lock those. Um, and one cool thing that I want to mention is that, yes, I'm playing my me in the story mode, but or golf adventure, but I'm also able to play my me in other modes, um, including online. So you'll be able to face other players with their very powerful me's but there will be exceptions, so just, yeah. just to point that out. If you want to set up a match so that no one can use their Miis, that's cool too. Yeah. I'm so happy that we get to see more of our boys here, Wario and Waluigi. I know, they don't look like they're enjoying the desert too much though. <laughs> a, little, a little too hot. But they look good while they're doing it. They look good and that's the important thing. They they're should have worn some cool attire though. They should have. <laughs> I think they are, <laughs> if I may argue. Well, Waluigi is anyway. <laughs> they didn't get the memo. <laughs> All right, so that was just a little sneak peek of a boss battle in golf adventure. Very exciting. So There's cool. more action to just playing golf, which is really cool. Um, so we're gonna back out and play a different mode. What are we gonna play now, Teresa? We are gonna play all together, all four of us. Oh boy. We're gonna play <laughs> speed golf. Let's Ooh, do love this. play speed golf. Yeah, let's take a minute to uh, get set up here. Yeah. We are back and set up with motion controls to play a little bit of speed golf for player. All right. All right. So we're going to start up. Uh, we're playing on local wireless, and it's going to be two players on uh, each system. So there are two systems, two games, two players on each. I will be selecting my me character. I'm going to play as King bob -omb because I'm a big fan that he is back. <laughs> I'm Daisy. And I'm Waluigi because of that outfit. <laughs> I mean, Fair enough. Sensible. And we're going to be playing on Bonnie Greens, which again is the birthplace of uh, golf Love in the it. Mushroom Kingdom. Yep. Sounds perfect. All right. Are it's you guys a nice, ready friendly to lose? game of golf. Right. Oh, well. And as you might see, we're, we're, <laughs> we're standing because we're playing with motion controls. And uh, the this version of Speed Golf is very special because it's now playable in motion controls, but also you're able to control the character on the course, which you'll see here in a bit. So. Uh, it, it is really fun. It's a little really, chaotic. Really chaotic, but yeah. really zany and crazy and I fun. I live for so. chaos. Let's go for it, guys. All right, here we go. And go. All right, all right, all right. I can work with that. Let's go. So you see the stamina hey, bar on each character, below each character. So we're using the motion controls to jog. But we could also press the L button if our stamina bar is still green to do a special dash. Which comes in handy if you run into sheep or something on the course. Make or way each other. <laughs> or each other. <laughs> right. Heavy explosive on his way. <laughs> when King Bob is coming by, make room. 
the benefit to running, you know, is we are playing speed golf. All about how fast you can get through the course. Yeah, so each each stroke is worth 30 seconds on your score. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I mean, oh, Waluigi, have a war here. Oh, boy. Mm. <laughs> all, right. all right, all right, I got this. I got this. Daisy's got to take a breather. Oh. Here we go. All right. All right. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Stuck. All right, all right, all right. Let's do this. I'm practicing my swing here before I hit the ball because I want to see how much power I give it. Oh, come on, oh, Bernie. Wow, oh, that? so close. <laughs> While Luigi's finding his own adventure. Yeah. All right. I'll take a car. The Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right. Okay. Nicely done, Kay. Wait, what's taking you guys so long? Hey, okay. hey, hey. <laughs> I am wanting. Ooh. Too, oh, strong. Too, too strong. Too strong. Too strong. Too strong. Get the pin oh. right after each other. Oh. <laughs> I went really crazy with my. my you were too excited. Dash, too. You I was. Calm down. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, King Bob All right. Bomb. All right. Bomb. Well done, guys. King Bob Bomb, though. So beautiful. Okay, here we go. So majestic. <laughs> he really Thank is you. majestic. Oh. Oh, oh. oh it's okay. Don't be sad. We'll make okay, it up to Bob. Don't worry, guys. Two more holes. You're we still got warming this. up, you know. Teresa and Rob have been playing this whole time, but you and I, you know. <laughs> yeah, He's wearing yeah, challenging shoes up. for this, to be fair. <laughs> All right, I got to prove my game here. I'd like to see you try. Let's do this. <laughs> so in speed golf, the uh, we don't all start, af after the first hole, we don't all start at the same time. Uh, whoever did the best has to wait the longest to, to go and, and give people a chance to catch up. Yep, so I'm still waiting. All right, here we go. Yeah. Woo! Go, go. All right, run, Daisy. <laughs> Oh, I went too far. I went too far. <laughs> you need to stop doing that. I do. I get really excited with the special dashes. Oh, oh man. Well, and, the flag. and in speed golf, you don't really so want to spend a lot of time reading greens and things, so you kind of just have to hope. Ugh. Come on, baby. Oh, too far. Oh, man. Get out of my this way. is not Long really well. Too far. This is not boating well. I'm playing hopscotch oh. with the flag right now. <laughs> I am too. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, Nicely done, Teresa. Double boat. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was. That actually. Uh, maybe next time. That worked out in my favor, hopefully. Okay. No pressure. A little it bit of not, pressure. It is not. Our character's fault. It is us. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Double bogey. All Daisy right. feels me. Here we Daisy go. Feels no, we got it. We got it. Okay, we, we got, got those. We got those. Okay. Pressure's that was not my best hole. Shaking it off. So besides, wow. so we're all even because we're also playing for time, not just the number of strokes. So we'll see. We see how we fare now. This last one. This we last one. Four way tie. <laughs> this last one will be it. Love it. Oh god, oh, no. Okay. I have to wait until you guys go. All right. Well, I like having the green to myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for a nice jog. Yeah. Uh, Nothing more refreshing. <laughs> Woo! Catch up with you, jokers. Oh boy. Ah! You almost hit me with your I golf ball. Bye, Luigi. Ow! Oh. <laughs> All right, what have we got here? Ah, oh, missed. Oh, oh. I missed showing you. Oh, that's saucy. Here. All right. All right. What? That oh. was probably a little bit too much. Oh. Nice I love the special dashes. They just sound so satisfying when they trigger. <laughs> they do. And then it does, it does, because uh, it's an energy gauge, it does go off, so you'll just have to run in order for it to build up again so you can use it uh, okay oh, um man. let's go like oops we're just gonna try to power through there. those trees that's good yeah i was wondering about that too yeah i'm just gonna power through those trees too <laughs> yeah I mean, i'm sure that will end well for you hey 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 <laughs> hey the trees can none be of that we established this. 
Did we though? <laughs> I'm gonna practice this. Okay. Or do I wanna just practice go now? Because I tend to yeah. be a little bit too excited. A little excited. bit of practice shot. No, that's too much. Uh, just no. like that. All right, okay. come on, Daisy. Come on. You've got some catching up to do, girly. I practice shot. Anything. Be my me. Pardon me, King coming through. Oh, no. Oh, no. Too there much oomph. Woo, uh, far. Woo. Same here. Oh, oh you guys. Bogey. Like a good far. You guys. Bogey. Not too bad. Not too bad. You got this, Teresa. I <laughs> hope it. so. Let's see. Good shot. That was pretty nice. Yeah. What? Nice. All right. Oh. I matched Daisy <laughs> here. Let's see. <laughs> well, you're a minute longer than me, but. <laughs> yeah, that time was not in my favor. So I think, yep. Oh, look at Woo. that. Best dress award wow. goes to. Oh, and also the best dress <laughs> award goes to. <laughs> Nicely done. Well oh, done. Gosh. Well done. Applause all around. Yay, golf, Congratulations. Golf, 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 golf claps, golf claps, golf claps. That was fun. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. Yeah, thanks for joining me on that adventure, guys. Yeah. Thanks for having us. <laughs> thanks for guiding us through a little bit of uh, Mario Golf Super Rush. Yeah. So before we close, we do want to mention that there will be uh, future updates for this game. So stick around for more information on uh, what that is. Um, and then as uh, Brandon had mentioned at the beginning of the sim, the game is about to release in just a couple of weeks. So that's really exciting. Can't wait for this game to come out. Yeah, it comes out uh, June 25th, Nintendo Switch system. So uh, yeah, that's it for this segment. Thanks for joining us uh, for a little bit of Mario Golf Super Rush. But don't go anywhere. There's more Treehouse Live, Nintendo Treehouse Live coming up. We're going to show you some Shin Megami Tensei Five. Everybody, and welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live. I am Demetrius, and I'm joined with Ethan. Hello. Hey, and we're here to play Shin Megami Tensei Five. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm excited to ah, show this, this one off. Series. So, why don't we start out, Ethan? What is Shin Megami Tensei Five? So, uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five. A little bit of a mouthful to say. I do love saying it though. Uh, <laughs> Shin Megami Tensei Five is the latest uh, game in a really long-running uh, JRPG series. Um, this is a series that got its start uh, way back when on uh, the Super Famicom, uh, and. I've loved that this series has been getting um, a lot of attention and appreciation um, in the West, uh, outside of Japan in recent years, um, and uh, that this new game is, is coming to Nintendo Switch. Um, and before we dive in too much more, I mean, can we just take a moment to appreciate glorious this fantastic, glorious hair that I wish I <laughs> on, had. Our, on our main character here? <laughs> Um, not not every day that you get a character with such fantastic hair. Yeah, rub um, it in, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Listen. Uh, so, um, you know, just to just to talk about a, a few of the the kind of defining features of this series. Um, as you can see, we've got kind of real world elements mashed together with the fantastical and and the mythological, as we will see, uh, even in our character. Um, you know, but if we look closely, we see. Things like uh, Japanese written on the pavement here, um, and uh, we see, uh, you know, buildings or what look like buildings, and and buses and cars. But also, everything uh, seems to be in a bit of a jumble. Um, things are not looking right. Um, not at all. Clearly, something went wrong. Something's definitely gone wrong. Um, but that that mix of of real world and uh, fantastical is definitely like a hallmark of Shin Megami Tensei. Um, picking Super up some design. some orbs here, um, getting a, a nice little uh, heal up on my HP and my MP. 
Um, and gonna stop by these nice little vending machines, which are, it's great that these are still operational. Oh, you, you just need a drink. Yep. Or just, just some Pick water. Pick up a, right? a can of juice. It's really hot um, out. You're, you're... Dust covered box. Okay, that's, that's a box. Sure. Uh, Fun use for it. <laughs> not what I typically associate with vending machines, but um, <laughs> we are, of course, playing the Japanese version right now. I'll be doing some translation uh, as we go through. Demons are another uh, big part of the Shin Megami Tensei series, and we're going to meet one of them right now. Um, you battle demons, but you also do a fair bit of talking with demons, and uh, this demon is going to tell us a bit about where we are. So uh, I think it was about 20 years ago uh, that uh, this place uh, became a new netherworld. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, sounds intriguing. Um, and up until that point, uh, humans had lived here. It was a world humans had lived in. Um, and nobody really knows why it, it became another world. Okay. So, uh, you know, I could, I could talk to this demon because uh, of the, the word balloon above its head, but we're actually being approached here. And I think we're going to get in our first <laughs> battle. That's right. Um, <laughs> that, uh, that demon was on a mission. Oh, you got two slots. Okay. So while Ethan focuses here, allow me to explain the, the battle system. It's what's known as the press turn system, and which was really, really cool. It's essentially about exploiting the enemy's weakness and trying to find out what it is. And when you do, you can actually get extra turns or actions back, allowing you to continue to attack or pressing the advantage, pressing turn. So really, really fun stuff. So what Ethan here is trying to find is the weakness. There we go. Oh, yeah. There is one. So we have an additional action back. So you'll see the turn will continue on Ethan's side, allowing him to continue attacking. What's really fun is if you're able to figure out all of your enemy's weaknesses, you can exploit them and just attack nonstop. Or, well, not nonstop, but enough to maybe even wipe them out before they can even really attack you, which is mm -hmm. really awesome. Mm -hmm. So let's see, that was some slime on slime uh, battling there. Um, because I've got a slime in my party. Um, and let's see, I think... So you know the weaknesses, I think fire. Yeah, so this is uh, Agi, which is a fire ability. Um, and I can see, so down below I can see all these elemental affinities. Um, when I started against that other enemy that I defeated, that was an enemy I hadn't encountered before, so they were all question marks. Um, turned out uh, wind worked well against uh, that enemy. The slime has a bunch of weaknesses, so fire, ice, lightning, wind... Um, are all it's weak, uh, weak against all of those. No, I, I just want to see. Then I wouldn't use fire on that particular. Oh, too late. Oh no, what happened? <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay. I was I was just trying to min max here. <laughs> you could have you could have damaged you that min maxing one. Really? Got another turn. Took them both out because they were both weak. But that's right. Oh, <laughs> you, okay. You we're, we're good. We're fine. Okay. We do call you Battle Master D for a reason. <laughs> um, even though you I still just got it. Up. Because I think this will give you. Oh, you, wow. Okay, because like the slime fortunately has a lot of weaknesses, so you're kind of, you're good picking a lot of different things, but. Um, okay, so I have actually leveled up here with my, my main character. Um, we get a kind of a look at the, the stat screen you see when you level up. Um, and one thing I'm going to get is uh, a point to put into one of my five different um, kind of abilities down here. So I have strength, endurance, uh, magic, uh, agility, and luck. And my luck is currently just at eight, and so I'm gonna use my point to bring that uh, in line with the rest of them. So we'll have nines across the board. Um, so I raise my luck there. Let's see, I hear I hear a demon somewhere. I think it was. Yeah, okay, so. Oh, the, up there in front of yeah. you, there you go. So you gotta pay attention to where they are. And, you know, folks who are who are familiar with this series will, will notice that for the first time with this game, we're able to see the enemies uh, on kind of the maps that I'm Which that I'm making my way around. Fantastic. Yep. And since I just got into battle, I'm gonna run past this one, um, which I can do, um, you know, by being able to see it as opposed to having just random battles. Um, run down here to this uh, kind of decrepit looking train track situation. Um, again, just kind of getting a, a view at our ruined surroundings. Yeah, clearly again, something Very, went wrong. Yeah, surreal, weird stuff going on netherworld apparently some kinds of enemies up there i'm gonna keep on trucking down here um these are looking good yep um we're just gonna kind of make more... our way through this little valley yeah and i think there's some yeah there's a couple de demons coming up here oh yeah 
Let's see. Those look like mandrakes to yeah, me. Yeah, I think so. so. Yeah, yeah. I can also like use my sword to start one of these battles, um, and that'll make sure that uh, that I get to go first, which is great. Or not so much, apparently. Hold on. Um, so I was actually going to show this off. I had intended to anyway. Um, demon negotiation is, you know, talking with demons like you do. It's a big part of the Shin Megami uh, Tensei series. And I was planning on talking to this Mandrake, but it had started a conversation with me, um, which I have not seen before. So let's see what it wants to say. So it's asking me for money right off the bat. Okay. Um, if I give it money, uh, how it'll, much money? It'll overlook whatever apparently I've done to oh, offend it this time. Two hundred. Two hundred. I've got nine fourteen. I'm gonna say go for it, Ethan. Okay. Yeah. So I can agree or I can say no, um, and and say you know get out of here. Uh, but we'll we'll agree this time. Uh oh, wait, but it wants something else. See, this is the problem. It's always something. The problem with mandrakes. <laughs> Wait, it wants more money. See? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Now it wants ninety-eight you know, more. We got, we got, we got, we got a, a nice amount. Okay. Loosen the purse strings a little bit more. It is still asking <laughs> for more money. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, I think I, I think I actually misunderstood that. It said, it said, it basically it'll see me again. Um, let's, you know. Oh okay, yeah, let's try this. One we're gonna try it one more time because. <laughs> <laughs> that went unexpectedly. But that's the fun part, though. That's the negotiation side. You just yeah. don't easily, uh, you know, recruit demons. You, right. you actually have to think about you know, how you're going to interact with everyone. It's really, really fun. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna choose talk from my my menu this time and uh, and do do the con conversing from my end. Um, oh, and we'll you see. lost all that maca. <laughs> so I know. And, yeah, lost that money, and he just like was like, okay, I'm gonna let you be. It was like what? Okay. Um, so he's <laughs> he's approached. What are we gonna do? Okay, so we have a couple options here. We can just be quiet, kind of be quiet and and be silent. We can glare, uh, or we can just not move. So what do you think? Uh, not react. Be silent. Okay, we'll take the silent approach. Uh, so wait, are you saying? But I can't be near you? No. So wait, then you're saying we can't be friends? Oh, no. Okay, oh. so negotiations have broken down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you never know what these, these demons are going to say. Um, so while I, I can't really negotiate with my pixie and my slime, so I am going to attack because um, it is still my turn. Um, and we'll see. Maybe we can continue our negotiations. Well, we also have another demon, round. too, to talk to. That's true. What I'm worried about is that they attack the slime. Okay. Yeah. Okay, they did not. Oh, no. I know. Okay, Pixie got... Okay, we're okay with that. We're okay with that. Of a, a shocking experience there. Okay, yeah. so um, we are going to try talking to the other Mandrake, and we'll see if we have any other luck here. What was the Mandrake that took all our money? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Bring that one back. Okay, so this Mandrake is saying, hey, um, can I pull off your arms and legs? Uh, uh, what? Uh, 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 and this is basically my choices here are no way or only if I can do it back to you, <laughs> which I'm not sure how that works, but <laughs> what do you think? I'll let this one go for you. Either. I'm going to say, hey, I, I only would, if I can do it back. I, w I would agree. Uh, oh, this, so you're saying to me like, oh, this this one's got some this one's got some fire. This one's uh, all right. Yeah, kind of feisty. Um, Maybe so join us. if I were to die, what would you do? The Mandrake says, and I can say I wouldn't care, or I'd be really sad or bummed out. Really sad? Yeah. I don't see anything there. Okay, well then, be nice to me, why don't you? Now, what should I do? It's saying, it's still wondering. Um, it wants just a little bit of our HP. Just a little bit? Just a little bit. Okay. Um, we so... can always heal with our pixie. Yeah, sure. Um, so yes, again, we have options. We can kind of play the tough guy if we want. Oh, nine, nine. That's not we much. can we can spare that. <laughs> this one wants money too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, two hundred and five. I mean, that's go. We got. We can't six. stop now. They got, we can't yeah, stop yeah. now. We negotiating. Okay. Huh. I think that'll do it. Uh, thanks. 
Yeah. Nice. All right. Okay, there cool. we go. So, <laughs> Only as you can like see, um, negotiations with demons, as you might imagine, are kind of unpredictable. Um, but we convinced this mandrake to join our party, which is awesome. So now we've got a party of four. Uh, your table is ready. <laughs> and we are going to continue going, <laughs> I guess. Um, and, yeah, the other mandrakes are like, just you. trying to follow me. We're not going to let that happen. There you go. Um, so we're going to go down here. Yeah, you're good. You always got to check, though, because, like, it's still coming. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to talk to this this guy. Do love the the enemy design uh, in this game and this series in general is yeah. just fantastic. Excellent, excellent um, demon design. So humans uh, lived lived here uh, for a long time, um, but as you can see, the uh, this town's just changed uh, completely, and used to have buildings everywhere, um, but now not so much. Um, so not watch, sure. Watch oh yeah, I know, right? I know. Oh gosh, I'm getting stuck. You're good. Okay. So you're good. Look. Now watch watch you, them you them. never know. You never know. There's those in front of you. I know. I know look at them. Look at them. Look at them stare at you like, sup. <laughs> just meat mugging <laughs> across the way. Okay. So now we've got this demon floating in this little pot. Um, so, hey, the battle that took place here was really incredible. Did you take part in it? Uh, I don't think so. Wait, you don't know about it? This is the all that, that stuff that kicked off here 18 years ago. It was this this massive battle between demons and angels. It was super incredible. But wait, what side did end up winning? It says, huh? Sounds okay. like we're late to the party. All right. What does this one have to say? Oh 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 oh! Okay, oh. I see it. I see it. I see it. Look oh, at we that too. Look at that. <laughs> They're on their way. Don't okay. forget to run. All right, hold on. Look us on the Don't panic. Don't panic. Yeah, yeah we got this. I do like that they let me have a conversation though. Um, <laughs> so let's see, uh, there is a massive rock-like guy up ahead. I think I see. And if you try to battle him, he's gonna, he's gonna stomp you in a second. That might be him up there. Yeah. Um, well, I still think we should probably go for it. I do but too. step one is to get away from yeah, we these gotta, guys. We're not interested in finding them. We want so, the other one. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna do our little, our little dash here, which yeah. I love. Um, Run away! Run right, far they're away. They're they gave up. Ya. That's good. Perfect. Take a breather here at this uh, little vending machine stop. Um, we got another dust-covered box <laughs> and another can of juice. All right, that's good. Yeah. Um, so I guess. All right. Bring shall we? on. Bring on the challenge. We got this. Massive rock guy up here. Okay. Uh, that's pretty big. Uh, so I guess I'll try and start the battle with my oh, wow. sword. Oh, he doesn't sound happy. Oh, nice. I think I got that in. Yeah, I think you did too. Okay. So we get to go first. We do have the four, uh, four characters now. Right. Um, now, let's assume that it's, it's a massive rock. rock. So what are you thinking? I've got lightning. I've got fire. Let's um, do fire. Okay. I'll do yeah. Both fire. So level I don't know anything 48. about level 48. <laughs> I don't know anything about this uh, this uh, demon's uh, weaknesses, but oh, okay. So it is weak against fire. Unfortunately, it looked like that only did four damage, which is not good. Um, does anyone need healing? Oh, I guess actually I can use my pixie to heal herself. Pixie, heal thyself. And okay, excellent. And now it is poison. Slime's turn. Shall we try poison? Yeah, I'm gonna Down say here. poison. Okay, yeah. do that. Fingers crossed. Miss. That's no good. Okay, so then the mandrake gets to go. Uh, lightning and a, a regular attack. I have a feeling. I mean, it's rock. You think lightning resist? is no good? Yeah, let's try physical then. Okay, we'll try a physical attack. At least it didn't yeah, resist. It, it so didn't resist. That, it wasn't weak, but, one way, yeah. but we do get to go a second time with uh, with the our main character here because of that that first attack it was weak against. Maybe actually, I can keep this party you going. You can try lightning though too now if you want. Oh. oh, that's true. That's true. I could have. That's fine. But As you saw, again, you got another action. I'm able to keep that. going, right? Mm -hmm. So because um, I I got that weakness again. So what do you think? Attack here? Did we um, try wind? We haven't tried wind yet. I don't think. Let's try that out. 
Still got a question mark on wind, so. Yeah. Come on, Pixie. Oh. Okay, three damage. Normal damage. Yeah. All right. But here it goes. Ooh, okay. Oh, Pixie. <laughs> See you on the other side. We're still in here. We got this. Um, Still got three standing, which is pretty good. So you were saying maybe lightning just to try? Yeah, because... Hmm. It's still a question mark. I mean, yeah, yeah, go for well. it. Out of curiosity, I have a feeling it's going to resist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I guess we should have seen that coming. Um, slime, what do you got? Do the poison attack above. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, let's try that one. Okay. Let's try this one. Still the same um, elemental affinity, I think. I think it might have. Oh! We got so weak. It was weak. It didn't look like that did damage, but uh, it, it was weak against that. Status effect. So that's good, yeah. Um, Mandrake uh, will just attack again. This is a war of attrition here. <laughs> fire. Um, fire, definitely, I think, is the way to go. But with, with each one of those, you know, those attacks that uh, exploit a weakness, I get another turn. Unfortunately, I just don't know if I can keep keep that going much longer. Yeah, I think this is a valiant poison, effort, but... though. Yeah, okay, that missed again. This is. Uh, let's see what happens here. Let's oh, happens. is he just going right for you? Oh, whoa, he targeted me straight. Yeah, up. he was just one like, hit. No, we're too. done. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And there's a look, too, at uh, two of the lead characters. I know we had more info about that, Ethan, right? Yeah. So this, um, our main character uh, in this game is a human uh, fused with an unknown being. Um, and we kind of got a look at the both of them there. Um, that's that's it. We ended in a game over, but but that was Shin Megami Tensei Five. And, of course, there's always going to be more. Um, and that was Shin Megami Tensei Five, And that comes out on November 12th with pre-orders starting on June 21st. So definitely look forward to it. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Oh, yeah. See you soon. <laughs> Everyone. Welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live. I'm Audrey. I'm here with my good friends Demetrius and Kay, and we're very excited to show you Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Now, this is a complete uh, remake from the ground up of Advance Wars 1 and 2. It's been 20 years since the original game came out on Game Boy Advance, so, you know, I think we've waited long enough. D, why don't you show us how it's done? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so what we're going to do is show you two different missions today, and right now I'm actually playing the, the very first mission in the game and we're just going to start right off and kind of just jump right into it um so for those who've never played advanced wars before um all the units i control right now are right here on the left hand side and the opposing team is going to be or enemies is on the right hand side my goal is going to be to capture this base over here but let's kind of get started so what i want to do is i'm going to start by moving my tank over here all right this is looking good. Brave little tank. <laughs> <laughs> I only got one, so <laughs> I gotta make sure to take care of it. When yeah, I see damage like that, I'm eep. <laughs> worth noting, this is the same addictive gameplay from the original games, but with redesigned characters and units. So that's why it's so shiny and cartoony. And adorable. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can kind of see the edge of the map look like a board too, which is really, really cool. And this okay. grid-based system might look familiar to fans of Fire Emblem, and this is uh, this is similar, except for in this game, you actually control squadrons of units instead of individual characters, which obviously has its own challenges, as Dee's going to show us. Yes. It's really cool how they do this. So everything is turn-based. Essentially, um, I'm going to end my turn, and then the enemy will go, and that will consist of the first day. Olaf. Hello, Olaf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's clearly the good guy. 
and Blue Moon is the name of the army that Olaf works So We are the Orange Star Army. All right, everything's looking good so far. Oh, I was hoping they would lose four. Uh, one more additional tank right here. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. All right, we're doing okay. All right, Shaking. so... Shaking. <laughs> all right, I'm all ready. Okay, so for those who are wondering, you see right here it says damage 55%. So that's the percent I'm going to do a good amount of damage. Um, one thing to note about this skin that's really interesting is you start off with 10 HP, and that is also the amount of power that you have, or it's the best way to think about that. So the less number you have, the less power you do. And this is really important because sometimes units can counterattack. Um, keep that in mind because we really want to avoid this medium tank right here. Uh, this thing can hit like a truck and just, well, hit like a tank, actually. Like a tank. <laughs> <laughs> like a and medium tank. Like a medium it's tank. Heavy. And take everything out. So I want to be very careful about that. And I also want to take out this artillery unit here. So I am going to do that. I've got to be very, very precise here. Okay. So this is looking good. Um, one thing to also note is because I'm in a city right now on a city tile, I had enhanced defense. That's why you see those stars. So fire. This is looking good. Okay, we're going to shoot this. Bombs away. I really don't want this artillery unit to survive because uh, uh, it'll yeah, those, really mess with my, my plan. Well, those long range <laughs> units can be super tricky, so it is a good idea to get rid of them first. Yeah. It's really important in this game to control your surroundings. Be aware of not only where you're placing your units, but uh, what the enemy's ranges are, what's going on with the different bases. There's a lot to uh, to manage. Correct. You can even capture cities, and this really comes into play later when you build units, which we'll show you in the next mission. Uh, but for now, I'm just capturing just because I want to, and it's, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one thing to note is some units have different moves. Uh, they can only move a certain amount of spaces. So, for example, this APC, it's really good to load up some units that have less movement. So that's what I'm planning to do right now. Okay, so everything's looking good. I'm going to end here and go to day two. So what's your overall plan for dealing with this medium tank, T? I am going to kind of create a diversion. My, my goal is to first move all of my APCs, uh, excuse me, all of my, my troops, over and then i'm going to use my apc and my tank to block the medium tank from from moving while i try to capture the base so our headquarters rather all right now this is so parts a little i'm gonna speed this up just a little bit but i'm a little worried okay whew, not too much damage so you can see them actually go through the water because they were placed on the water yeah different tiles have different uh, backgrounds or different effects and it's really cool now it's the beginning of day three, so that means um, we can talk a little bit beginning uh, here about our CO powers. Wait, but first we have to worship an L. Hi, Nell. Hello, <laughs> Nell. We can move on. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those who are wondering, CO powers are essentially um, unique powers for each additional CO or commanding officer. Um, for Nell, she's going to be able to essentially increase her chance and have a little bit more power. So that's going to be wonderful to do. Yeah, Nell's a lucky lady, so when she increases her luck, good good things happen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, um, the way CO powers increase is just through battle. It's not just that it randomly builds up, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to activate it right now. All right. You're going to need the luck. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so cute in this animation. Go, Nell. Aww. Okay, this is good. This is working out great. Um, what I need to do here, let's see. They have greater chance of dealing high damage in battle. But everyone's different. Even Olaf has a really good uh, CO power, but I want to make sure to try to avoid that because it's going <laughs> to slow me down. Yeah, Olaf's CO power is really cool. <laughs> he actually allows <laughs> I'm sorry, I had I see to. What there. <laughs> I so appreciate that. <laughs> it allows him to make it snow, which changes the battlefield because his units aren't affected. Their mobility and range aren't affected by snow, but your units are, so you really... You really want to try and avoid that, D. Good luck with that. I know. <laughs> One other thing you might see me uh, do. Oh, gosh, do I want to take that out? Actually, you know what? I'm going to. <laughs> I don't know. What you going to do, D? Actually, here we go. Uh, one of the new features as well to this is I can actually hold down a button and I can speed up the animations, um, which is a great, great new feature. You can also just turn the battle animations off if you want to go even faster. Good. But if you're like Why would me, you want to do that? Yeah, exactly. You want to see those you're animations. You're so cute. Yeah, if you really hate delightful things, just turn them off. But <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, you can just fast forward through if you're short on time. <laughs> so we're going to go through that. All right, so this is looking great. Now we're going to see 
these mech units. That's these guys who carry missiles. They're really good against tanks, so I want to be very careful. Um, but everything's looking good here. I'm going to probably... You know what? I'm just going to stay here and end my turn. This is looking good. Yeah. What I really love about this game is each time you approach a map, it, it's basically brand new. There are so many different ways you can go about winning or trying to win. And so, uh, like this time, you said you're capturing bases for fun. You, you really you don't have to capture all of the bases in some maps, so it's really up to you how how much you want to go for it. Yeah. Well, and I'm, even on this map, if you were feeling extra lucky or maybe extra reckless, you could try to take out that medium tank mm -hmm. and win by taking out all the units on the map. And that's why does I feel like a challenge cake? <laughs> yeah. If you were feeling great, I didn't say that. Uh, what you should do. Do something. <laughs> I guess you could. Wink, wink. <laughs> nah, we ain't going there. <laughs> it's too smart for that one. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> not gonna happen. I promise I'm not on Olaf's side. Uh huh. I'm on Olaf's side. But, oh! but I do support you. <laughs> the battle on two fronts it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're looking really good. So this is where it gets a little tricky. I really want to pay attention to the tile work because you can see this is the enemy range of attack. You'll see there's one little spot here that I can move my APC and not get attacked. So that's what I'm going to do. That APC is carrying precious cargo. Yeah, that's the really key is. to your victory right there, little Henry. Yeah, yeah, I'd be so gentle with little Henry. <laughs> I just cancel that out of fear. <laughs> or do I want to triple check? Yeah, okay. Really, a mistake of just one tile can ruin your whole game. <laughs> For real? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little worried. All right. <laughs> Don't be worried, though. Yeah, you know, I'll capture it. Maybe right be here. a little worried. He's a little worried. A little, a little worried. <laughs> the tank is pretty scary, right? It, it really it is. is. It really is. The medium tank will destroy my, my regular tank in one shot because I'm at nine. If I was at ten, it would take it down to one, but oh, since no. it was damaged a little bit. Oh. You know how feisty Nell got? She did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to capture here. All right, things are looking good. So this is at nine. I'm going to go ahead and park it right here because I can actually get a repair on any cities uh, that I own or have taken over. And don't forget, you can actually capture cities um, that are taken over by the opposing side as well. I won't do that right now, but just in case if those were wondering. All right, so here we go, Kay. I'm gonna uh -huh. bring this right here. Are you sure? This one's for you. The timing is right though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you make it all the way over to the HQ? Yeah, I can. Okay. You messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep you on your toes, man. That's right, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> He's got plans. I do got plans. I got good plans. We've seen those plans crumble <laughs> many times. <laughs> but that is the fun part of this. Everybody does have their own play style, and sometimes you have to kind of adjust on the fly, and that's really, really fun about this game. Yeah, it's not Dee's fault Olaf has beard powers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here it comes. Here we go. The strength of the medium tank. Oh, Olaf. I oh, mean, Olaf. <laughs> That's right. Oh. I'll do it alone. <laughs> okay. Let's go here. I'm going to capture. And I'm going to capture. I really should be attacking, Capturing but I'm a lot just... of cities here, actually. Yeah, I'm being a little gluttonous here, but I'm going to move this there to protect. And then I still don't want that medium tank to move. And this is pretty much... That APC has been the MVP of this map. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> now going to a valiant you know what? sacrificial I'm just, death. I'm just going to end my turn. I'm not even worried. You know? we, we, we just got this. Mm -hmm. No, this will survive mm -hmm. by one. <laughs> you can do it. Oh, oh yeah. no! I, oh, I was wrong! Oh, dear. Oh, you done. No. Henry, no. Henry. <laughs> I was not expecting that, but it's all right, because, see, you got to protect your base. you got to protect your headquarters. you got to do that Cities. by the skin of your teeth. See. I got it. Yeah. So that's a victory. Perfect. Nice work. All right, so everything's looking good. All right, now No time for celebration, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's we're gonna take on do... something that's a bit more challenging. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and cut away from that's this for I just feel. a second. <laughs> and I'm going to load up the next one, so let's just cut away for a sec. Perfect. And you you somehow chance. managed to bring down Olaf. I'm happy for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Olaf will be back. Oh, he'll be back. So what we're going to do now is load up Mission 6, which is going to be a bit more of a challenge. 
and it's just a second here, I gotta get through all these screens, but um, this one will be really interesting because now we're gonna bring in building units with a base, and um, as well as different air units as well. So we have to be very, very, very careful. Right, and we're up a against a different CO this time, who is one of my favorites. <laughs> Big Eagle fan, huh? So I am going to unabashedly be rooting for Eagle. <laughs> I'll root for D, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Now we're back in. Okay, so the little animations are so cute. Yeah, they I really do it. emote very well. It's, mm -hmm. it's super, super cool. All right, so right now, essentially in the story, we're we're kind of seeing what's going on. We don't know who we're taking on, and we don't know it just for the next few seconds. But as it is, it's Eagle, and Eagle's very, very dangerous um, because he's extremely good with his air units now. As you see, the map is quite a bit bigger now, and I still want to capture this headquarters here. And um, because you're a coward. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could Ooh. go the hard way, but <laughs> why, why? Why? You know what? You, you just gotta play it smart, right? <laughs> is that what you're calling it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll take it. A win is a win, Kay. You know this. <laughs> I think you've got a decent chance of winning, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that too. All right. So now I do have my own heavy tank or excuse me, medium tank, and I'm going to use this to kind of create uh, an open space. It's a good moment to see how the different units uh, and uh, different vehicles look different on the different sides. Exactly. Wait till we get to see some of these aerial units in action. Oh yeah. That's where the fun is at. Mm -hmm. Oh, like this one? You want to see this one in action? Fun for us. I'm about to shoot it down. Yeah, these are the small fries though. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll see how big you talk when you have to go up against the Jets. <laughs> oh. I'm a little worried about the Jets. <laughs> you should be. The Jets yes. are formidable. And their range is enormous. They really are. And I will show everybody in just one second what we mean by that. So you see you've got a, what is it, the transport copter loaded up yes. with one of your infantry units. Which I'm going to move down here. And this is really the, the key of the, at least my strategy here is I really want to protect this transport copter. Um, I really want also to protect the battle copter as well if I can. But this right here is key because I'm gonna fly it all the way over and land right there. But as you can see over here, these jets Ooh. have an incredible range. And with Eagle CEO power, which makes them able to go twice, it's really, really tough. So you basically have to pay attention to the placement of that copter at all times. You, mm -hmm. you really do. You really do. Good luck. <laughs> so what I really want to do is try to block this transport copter a lot. So I'm actually going to build an APC. And I'm gonna, you're going to see me do that one more time because I want to actually build a couple and use them to kind of lure a lot of things away. So things are looking good here. That's a really good point. How you manage your resources really has a deep impact on your gameplay. It affects how you're able to complete objectives, how hard it is for yourself even. So you really have to keep an eye on your your gold. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see where he moves. I really love the bases too because they do give you mm. more range and more more options on how you want to tackle certain challenges. Mm -hmm. And see, this is really fascinating part about this game was during my practice, one jet went up top and one jet went below, but now they both went below. So there must be something that I'm not seeing, but that's really the fun part. So I'm gonna have to improvise a little bit here. Nice, those rockets were Yeah, you blush. can't really plan for the full map. They're always gonna take you by surprise in some yep. way or another. Yeah, so what I wanna do now is, all right, so I'm gonna move. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yes. Y yes? He yeah. was. <laughs> I don't right know. Here. I've seen you getting in trouble at this place before, so. I'm going to wait here. And this is what I'm going to do. That was ancient history. Is it? Here. <laughs> Time will tell. <laughs> I am going to move Ooh. here. Woo. That was gutsy. Yeah. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> My plan is working. <laughs> All right, so I do want to keep that there. All right, shoo. Now the jets cannot attack things on the ground. They only go air to air. So as you see now, I'm boxing everything in. The only thing I'm worried about is if a jet goes from behind and takes out my battle copter. So I got to be very careful. Mm -hmm. But so far, we we in there. I'm gonna move right here. Move this here. 
I think people call this the turtle technique. <laughs> <laughs> it's called winning. <laughs> <laughs> and I will we'll take do it. That. <laughs> okay, let's do enter. And there is a bomber up in the top hand right, but I don't want to go within that view. Now you'll see that Eagle's taking over bases as well, but we're okay with that. Um, I have I have plans. I have plans, ladies. <laughs> we believe I think we got you. This. <laughs> yeah, that's what Do you always you know? say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. It okay. really feels like playing with a bunch of uh, toy soldiers when you're playing. Yeah, it really game. does have that feel, doesn't it? Okay. So everything's looking good. What I really want to do now is take this one out. So if I don't destroy these, it really gives Eagle a chance to use all of this arsenal twice. Um, just his air units, and even though he goes on the second time, it's gonna be at half power, but it's still very, very formidable. So now I'm gonna be a little risky Ooh. here. I'm gonna move this forward. And all I'm right, like, he's that creating space. <laughs> That's interesting, but here, I'm gonna do this. It's not what I would have done, but you know. <laughs> it's okay. You play your game. <laughs> and now I'm going to move over here. So we're going to end up more, more than likely, I won't be able to... Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so now we're going to be careful. So see, we have to see how... Aha! <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So this looks good. Yeah. I'm just going to move you over because I know you're going to... You know what? Yeah. I know what you're gonna do. You gotta take a chance do. sometimes. Well, because what what you can do is kind of fly around, right? And then activate and come right back under. Yeah. Yes. So what I'm going to do is block right here. Ooh, mm. That's pretty clever. You've okay. learned from your mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't move anything else, so I'm just going to be first uh, forced to end my turn. Whew. Whew. <laughs> and that CO power is full, so we'll see. Have mercy, Eagle. We'll see when he chooses to use it. I'm not sure if he'll use it now, but I know if he does not use it now and I blow his jet out of the sky, th yep, oh. then he will use that bomber and probably destroy my medium tank and maybe an APC, but that's okay. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Again, mm -hmm. part of the plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got this. Everything's looking good. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> that's how you're making D feel right now. <laughs> 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 All right, we got this here. I'm going to speed things up again. This will finish it, yes. All right, now I can safely start moving all of my troops over. Now life can resume again. <laughs> yeah, now we're looking really bit, good. So yeah. now I can just fly all the way over here. Mm. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, we good. We good. Remember whose side she's on. <laughs> uh, that's true. <laughs> It's very true. I have to admit, you're doing very well. <laughs> For now. Answer to say I it, don't but... believe you. <laughs> no, you are. <laughs> you do still have that bomber to worry about. I do. And I still have to make sure I don't draw too much attention. I don't think I'm gonna be able to move this right. Yeah, you really don't want them to come for you until you're quite ready for it. Oh, man, I really can't move very far. Okay, here. I don't think you'll be able to relax until Eagle uses that CO power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I still have... Okay. I should be all right. I'm going to try and move right... Here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going for it. Oh. Well, we'll see. We'll see if this is the start of your downfall. So we definitely just lost this medium tank, and I think we might lose my anti-air unit as well but that's okay it's always hard to predict what eagle's gonna go for next mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. here it comes he might actually go for an apc and you'll see bombers are incredibly powerful i Ooh, love this animation so much yeah it's like, like everything out the game is beginning now <laughs> <laughs> here it comes Ugh. Here it comes. Yes. <laughs> See, I, I planned this. I can't help but notice your transport copter is uh, <laughs> not being turtled. Well, no, it's okay because you can't bomb the transport copter, so we're fine. Mm -hmm. The bomber can't attack. But, yep, going for an APC. Oh, your trick worked. Yeah. 
That's pretty good. And that, yeah, this is the type of play style I like to kind of try to draw them out in, you know, on my my time. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're looking really, really good here now. So I'm gonna start capture everything, capture this base. Then I'm gonna capture this city. And the way that works is you see there's a point structure there. And again, remember that units have uh, differ. Oh, no, 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 no. Have HP. So um, to capture this, I need 20. And since I have a full unit at 10, that means I'll be able to capture it next turn. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to shoot this thing down totally, right? Yeah, 116. There we go. That's going to feel pretty good. Bye! Oh, <laughs> gone. What do you think Bye, about that, Kay? Bomber. <laughs> you will be remembered. <laughs> All right, so now we really opened up a lot. So I'm going to move all of my stuff up because we still kind of have to worry um, about the bases. We don't want a bunch of tanks starting to roll across the bridge here. And there still is a tank up there, so I'm just going to start moving into position. Actually, ooh. Yeah, just because that bomber's gone doesn't mean he doesn't have tricks up his sleeve still. Correct. Never underestimate your opponent. You never know what they're going to do. You're learning. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go ahead and supply. You wanna capture that? Nope, nope, <laughs> nope, 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 sorry. Not today. Ooh. Even with that high amount of defense, that's not gonna help you. No. All right, Eagle now let's not move happy over about here. that. No. <laughs> Just move that over there. Okay, we're looking good, right? I'm not forgetting anything, am I, ladies? No. Not that Kay's going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and now you may be wondering, well, Demetrius, you have your CO power. I'm going to save that for for the end, and you'll, you'll see why. Sometimes when you get your CO power, you don't really want to use it right away. You want to use it at the most opportune moment. Right. That's right. It's You're not so easy Andy to get it back. This time instead of now, so you've got a different, Correct. different CO power this time to show off. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is move my tank over here. Looking good. I want to move my artillery up as high as possible, right there. All right, here we go. So now we know the tank can come all the way down, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to fly over here, drop. And now there's nothing this tank can do. And I'm going to move my battle copter into position. And really, this is pretty much winnable, no matter what now. And and actually, in a really good spot here. Yeah. I don't you know think you're I've feeling seen you cozy. do this well before. <laughs> He's capturing so many cities. He's feeling cozy. Yeah. I practiced. <laughs> <laughs> we won't ask you how many times. <laughs> I would, let's say more than one. <laughs> Replay value. <laughs> now, this will do some significant damage, but we're okay. Yeah, here comes all wow. the tanks and all that, but we're not worried about that. Now, if for some reason things did go south, you can just, you know, just as a little bit of advice, you can always start to build something down here like rockets. And now you see I have the bridge covered. So I can just start piling things on going over here. I can move over here. See, now I have so many things covered. Let's go ahead and use this battle cop to just to take this down. All right, it's not going to do much damage. And you may be wondering, well, this is still wounded. Well, now it's time to use my CO power. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so Andy has what's called hyper repair. And remember now, every unit has about 10, uh, has 10 HP. With hyper repair, you get two HP back for every unit you have. Oh, nice. It's really, really wonderful. That can really save your neck yeah. sometimes, too. Yeah, I've, I've won many, many emissions just repairing and getting through it. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're looking good here. We have it captured. Can I move? Oh, it's out of the way. I can't help it. I got to capture more. <laughs> it's One thing to know, too, is the more cities you have captured, the more amount of gold or, or in-game currency you're going to get per turn. And that's what helps you build everything. Okay, so you know what? I think we're good. I'm not even going to worry. I'm just going to end my turn. We got this. Hey, you're doing pretty great resource management here, I have to say. Capturing cities, building at bases. You're you're owning. You're so a worthy opponent. He's trying. <laughs> Look, that does nothing. That does nothing. You can move all over here. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. I'm just gonna hold fast forward here. 
You can't even take out my regular attack. You got nothing. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Now you're mocking me. <laughs> you better, you better, uh, yeah, it's not be careful fly. how uh, confident you are. Oh, you it's know, not over till it's over. Should I capture anything I just do it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna skip it all. <laughs> capture. He's gonna make him so Boom, mad. and that's it. That's mission accomplished. Ooh. Very well done. No, that seems possible because I was playing. We never oh. doubted you for a second, either of us. <laughs> So evil. there, there is a lot more to show um, in the future. Uh, <laughs> don't forget, this was just from the first campaign of Advance Wars One. Um, there is also the second campaign, Advance Wars Two: Black Hole Rising. And also, uh, I'd like to say real quickly that there is online uh, gameplay. So there is more going to be uh, about that coming so, uh, in the future as well. That's right. We've got a four-player uh, co-op that supports uh, up to four players and uh, all kinds of. Commanding officers, weather, fog of war, different units. We haven't even taken a look at Advanced Wars 2, so there's still a lot to discover, but we were so happy to be able to show you this. And uh, please stay tuned. Next, we're going to take a look at WarioWare Get It Together. So stick around. Hello, and welcome to Nintendo Treehouse Live. My name is Riona, the rambunctious, and I'm joined today by Ethan, the enthusiastic, and Brandon, the bodacious. And today, we are going to be showing you WarioWare Get It Together, new WarioWare title that's coming to Nintendo Switch. A lot of fun, very exciting, and Brandon, why don't you tell us a little bit about WarioWare? I am so excited to talk about WarioWare and share this game with everybody. So, uh, yeah, this is a new WarioWare game, and here's what we're going to do. Part of the fun of any new WarioWare game is the surprise factor. So there's a lot of cool stuff in this game, uh, and we're gonna show you a little bit of it. This will be a micro segment to match the micro games of WarioWare Get It Together. Cleverly uh, done, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're gonna dive into story mode here and show you just three quick levels uh, in this story mode. Uh, this is just a very small taste. So uh, as you can see, I've played through a little bit of this uh, already. So this is kind of returning to story mode. Uh, you can see my high score off on the right there showing uh, how well I've done in the past. So uh, we're gonna hop into Wario's intro games here. Um, and right away, you can see some very different cool stuff happening in this WarioWare game. Uh, character playable, selection. So playable many. characters. <laughs> um, so I have a variety of characters here. This is just who I've met so far, uh, mm -hmm. just early on in the adventure. Um, so I'm gonna start with Wario, uh, uh, of course, that makes sense. Uh, and play as Cricket and 18 Volt as well. Um, so you're like uh, building a team of three. Yeah, you get to take. pick sort of a small crew to take with you into these micro games, mm -hmm. uh, and they all control differently. And well, I don't want to. I don't. I'll let the visuals uh, do the talking. Yeah. And you, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> and for uh, anyone who's not familiar with micro games, they're basically these little bite-sized games, uh, really fast, really hectic, really chaotic. And the goal is to finish them as quickly as possible before the time runs out. Yep. Uh, but part of the fun is figuring out what exactly you have to do. So right. hypnotize here. Yep. And each micro game has a way to succeed and you know if you don't do that specific thing you will lose one of your little life bars down below as you can see um but we're already seeing though uh the different characters and this is new to the warrior series the different characters behave and act differently um and have different abilities so young cricket there we just saw um has the ability to jump high we've got uh, 18 volt here is uh throwing these discs from his head um, and that's going to change the way that you play the same micro games. Right. Um, different characters know. are going to play them differently. Mm. And you never know who you're going to get, so it's always, you know, completely random. Maybe you are really familiar with the game, you're used to playing with a certain character, but now you have a completely different character. Right. So, so you pick the three, but then you don't really have control over which character is going to play which stage. Mm. I knew it. Brandon is just knocking it out of the park here. Yeah, I mean, if you everybody quiet, I have to focus. <laughs> no talking for the rest of the segment. Oh, okay. Can do it. And I love the different art styles that are on display. Um, you definitely need to expect the unexpected. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
And it's fun, you know, when you win, there's a different animation. When you lose, there's right. a different animation. Right. And both are super wacky and fun to look at. Like, oh, I, I love this one. Look at this little Mario! Oh. Well, it's super fun to just watch these games because, <laughs> you know, you get to pay attention to all the detail that's happening on the screen. Whereas when you're playing, you're, you're really focused on, on trying to succeed. So, you know, it's maybe only in repeated playthroughs that you get to see those details. But. Yeah, I appreciate you guys helping uh, uh, explain what's happening because I'm entering a fugue state the longer I play these micro yeah. games. <laughs> now Brandon has made it to the boss level of uh, Wario's, Wario's level. And this is a little bit longer than the other micro games, as you can see. Uh, each level will have a different boss level, obviously. Since this is Wario, you can of see course. you've got the garlic volcano in the background. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, Cricket uh, controls very differently than, say, 18 volt or, or WarioWare would in this stage. As Wario, I would be floating around uh, and having a little more control and a little easier time. And as 18 volt, I'd even be stationary and only have to worry about hitting my target. But here, I actually have to actively <laughs> move Cricket around <laughs> platformer style, which is very different for a yep. WarioWare game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll find, I mean, some characters are, you know, really well suited to some stages and, and will make that stage a cinch. And then, you know, another character, based on their particular ability, might have, you know, a little bit more of a challenge on that stage. So, again, it adds that extra layer, not knowing what to expect. <laughs> okay, we're going to stop there. Okay. Very nice, a, a brief break in the action. Because in a, a first-time playthrough of story mode, uh, you would actually get to the boss, uh, the boss micro game and then back out and, and get to explore other levels. If you return, you get to just keep playing and see how high your score can get. Right. So, instead of playing more and revealing more of those micro games, we're going to save that for you guys for later. Uh, and uh, we're going to hop into a different level here. We're playing oh, Mona's game. Mona. Mona. Actually, Brandon, I don't want you to have all the fun yourself. So, do you mind if I hop in here as well? Would not mind at all. In oh, fact, that's right. one of the other cool features of this WarioWare game, uh, is that two-player has been added. So, there's co-op mode where you and I can both uh, play together. So, I'm going to turn on two players here. Awesome. And so right now we're playing on one system with two Joy-Cons, but right. we could also play together local co-op. You know, if I had my Nintendo Switch Lite with me, I could connect to you, we could play together. And did on Mona. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fine. Uh, I'm going to play as Wario again. Um, yeah. okay. And one other cool <gasps> thing about two-player mode is there are some characters that are built for two players, like Dribble and Spitz. Right. So we can each control Dribble and Spitz, who have very similar moves, right. uh, but uh, are, are two completely different characters for player one and player two. So yeah. uh, I'm going to pick 18 Volt again. Yeah, so we'll Dribble will always shoot to the right, and Spitz will always shoot to the left. Riona, are you ready? I am so ready. I don't know if you guys are ready. We'll see, though. Oh, there's, I'm ready. And this adds, you know, even another layer, kind of. There's going to be two <laughs> players on screen at the same time, uh, each with their own abilities. Um, and you have to, it's hard, you know, <laughs> here because you have to work together and make sure you're not at cross purposes, you know, talking, communicating is important. Um, Stay away from those dust bunnies. Oh, oh God. So we can see Wario's got his... Well, he's got a jetpack, I guess, and he's uh, he's got his dash he can do. Meanwhile, Krygor can kind of swim through the screen like you saw. Now we've got 18 yeah. volt, and Mona can ride her scooter and then and uh, throw a boomerang. So there's again lots of difference uh, differences in the way the characters behave. You guys are aging such quick work. This. Yeah, wow. Nice <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, there's so much variety in how these games are presented. The normal loop is completely different now. That there's playable characters. <laughs> And you'll see the uh, Mona's level, the theme is kind of uh, everyday life. Yep. So she's got, you know, just the, oh, oh, gotta get that away. Yeah. Nicely done, guys. <laughs> Love that guy. Yeah, we've got little dusters down below that represent our lives. Yep. Uh, some craziness going on in the background. Yeah, oh, so goodness. much detail to, to notice. Oh, God. Oh god! Oh god! Okay, I'll use my boomerang. Yeah. Well done. Very nice. <laughs> I, I love the different options there are to play two-player, right? So you can, you can be doing this via, um, you can be doing this via uh, your, you know, same system like you guys are doing, sharing uh, two Joy Cons, or you can be doing local wirelessly, you know, on two different systems. <laughs> Artist um, forbidden. <laughs> Watch out! Oh god! Oh, nice. I claim this nice. one. <laughs> Don't get chomped. This hole was made for me. Yeah, you can see Mona's constantly moving there, so uh, puzzles like that can be a little tricky if mm -hmm. you're supposed to get in one specific spot. Yeah. Oh, Tiny, get rid of the spider. <laughs> we did. <Wow. laughs> oh. done. Okay, we're going to stop there. We're going to okay, stop there. That's, okay, that's enough. Again, there's a lot of yeah. really cool stuff in there. We do not want to spoil too much. It's hard to, mm -hmm. to stop, though. You get in such a rhythm. I know. Really yeah, like I said, you <laughs> enter the white wear fugue state. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which there is no known uh, uh, treatment for, unfortunately. <laughs> just uh, more Wario. Keep playing more Wario. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's one more thing we want to show you here, 
It is a very cool returning element uh, to WarioWare, and that is 9Volt's level. Yes. 9Volt uh, is the Nintendo fan of WarioWare's crew. Yeah. Um, and uh, in this in this game, like in other WarioWare games, 9Volt has built some games based on Nintendo classics. Mm -hmm. um, these are very, very cool, uh, very and we <laughs> do not want to spoil all those, so we're going to show three of these, yep. just to give you a taste, yep. to give you an idea of what these are like. Um, I don't know which three they're going to be, because the game likes to shuffle them. I know so, which ones I want them to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> We'll see. Well, we'll see if we get them. So, uh, Rion and I will hop in here uh, and tackle three of these. Nintendo Classic Minecraft. Right, so you're gonna, I will play. You pick your your three characters again. I will play as a nine volt since this is his level. Um, nice. Right. And do you dribble will, and spit? Yeah, let's do dribble and spit yeah. again and eighteen volt. And one thing I'm I like about uh, co-op. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> one thing I like about co-op is that, you know, even if one of us fails or loses the other one, as long as the other one wins, then yeah, that's right. It's a success. A you can point. see we're skipping the cutscenes as well. We don't want to ruin any of those cool character moments, yeah. for you guys. Find ghost. Find oh ghost. Okay, ghost. Yes. Got him. <laughs> yeah, you can see his nine volt. I'm always yeah. moving on a skateboard. Oh god. Oh, this one's always. Oh. <laughs> you got oh. this. Come on. Yes. Nice. Nicely Good done. Fauna. Okay. What's the last one? What's the last okay, one? What's oh, gonna, what is it gonna be? Last one gonna be? Oh, oh god. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, Ice climber. Uh, Come on, get up there. You can do it. Woo. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> That's all we're gonna show of the Nintendo games in 9 volts. Ah, I want to play more. I know, I know. Yeah. There's a lot here. There's a lot to do, so but much I don't more. want to spoil a surprise for everybody. <laughs> so, uh, that's it for this this uh, quick look at, at, at or this this micro segment to match the micro games <laughs> of WarioWare. Get it together. Um, cannot wait for everybody to get their hands on this and play it later. It's going to be very, very cool. So A lot of fun. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining us today. Wait, and <gasps> one more thing. I can't let us end this segment until... All of us have given our best. No. Wah. Yes. We're doing this? For we are I, doing I, it. I mean this. We're not letting anybody <laughs> leave. Brandon. I will hold you down in your chair <laughs> until you do this. So, uh, I'm going to kick it off, right? Okay. Please do. Wah. Wah. Wow. <laughs> it's very satisfying. That was Thank great. You. Thank you. Not okay. gonna forgive you for that. <laughs> now we can end the segment. Okay. Uh, WarioWare Get It Together is coming out on September 10th and is gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, please stay tuned for more Nintendo Treehouse Live and coming up next is Metroid Dread. Hi, welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live. Uh, I'm Dan, back with Audrey and Therese again. We're gonna go into a little bit more uh, Metroid Dread, deeper into the planet, into this uh, work in progress game, and see more of Samus's abilities, and uh, maybe see a couple more uh, tough battles. So, uh, Teresa, what have you got for us? Yeah, all right. Um, so, since the previous segment, uh, we've gotten, uh, we were able to defeat the last Emmy. Um, and we're on our way. Uh, we got a new ability, and so we're gonna showcase that. Um, we're also gonna go a little bit faster in the segment just to show more of Samus's really free-flowing movement. Uh, so speaking of that new ability, uh, we now have Spider Magnet, uh, which is really cool. Now is uh, allowing us to climb these uh, blue magnetic strips here. So, and Samus looks pretty darn cool while she's climbing, I must say. Yeah. yeah. Just traverse directly <laughs> from uh, horizontal to vertical there. And this uh, creature over here is uh, blocking my pathway and it's getting a little bit more jittery as I get closer to it. That's really creepy. Maybe I can creepy. coerce it out. <laughs> Insecty sounds. <laughs> Worm door. Also a note for uh, anyone who hasn't yet seen the first segment, this is the first new 2D Metroid in 19 years. So this is very, very exciting for, for Metroid fans. Yeah, I liked how you countered that worm and shot it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so each of. enemy has like their patterns to learn. So you definitely mm -hmm. want to watch and see how you can counter them or if you need to no. tackle them in a different way. Oh no. Uh oh. So this is Corpius. Uh, he is one of the bosses that you'll encounter in Metroid Dread. Uh, we happen to see him uh, very briefly in the first segment. He was, it was the very shimmery uh, creature that was lurking in the background. Mm -hmm. 
No longer lurking. No. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He's burping. <laughs> he's, he's, he just shot that projectile <laughs> that he shot out of his mouth and got some missiles. So. <laughs> Yep. Having good aim is, is in your favor here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's very key to learn the boss's patterns, but also find where to hurt him. And it looks like his face is the weak spot right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tail is pretty deadly, so you want to keep your distance. Mm -hmm. And of course, as always, you want to keep an eye on your missile count. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so since my missile count's running low, I'm gonna use charge beam, which is also effective. And now he turned invisible. Yeah, great. Well, what he needed was to be invisible. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. That makes it a little bit harder to yeah. find <laughs> its face, but I can try. Otherwise, I could see, yep. So yeah. that little glowy point seems to be a weak spot too. Try to aim for that. Low shoot it. It's a good maxim for video games in general. Got this. <laughs> and now it's throwing a tantrum, mm -hmm. so it broke some of the environment. I see some blue magnetic magnetic strips there, which I could probably use to my advantage. Oh. And now it reared its ugly head and turned to its backside, which is probably its best side. <laughs> it's also rearing for bad. something. I don't... Ow! Oh, no. Okay. No. Mm. All right. Oh, nice, oh, nice slide. So we're turning here to a cinematic, but I am effectively throwing missiles at uh, Corpius's face here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's another one of those really dynamic camera angles there. Mm -hmm. Jumping right right into a boss fight is a Why really are you good back? way to show. Uh, okay, yep, so those magnetic strips were very handy there. Yep, you have to use all of your abilities uh, if you're going to be... Ow. Oops. No. And that poison gas doesn't look too healthy. <laughs> This one's always trying to back you into a corner, too. It's not very nice. If you, if you stay up there, uh, his tail will go for you as well, so there's no really <laughs> safe spot. Oh. Maybe I can lure it? Yes. Oh, that one. Get worked. stuck, buddy. Nope. Missiles, yay. Okay, where are you again? Oh. oh. Tricked me. Yep. What are you doing? Oh, no. Oh. I know your game. <laughs> no, thank you. Not today. Oh. I don't think he's going to like this. Ah. Eat missiles. <laughs> One last charge beam for effect. Mm hmm. I think you got him. That's it. <gasps> Look at Samus. <laughs> that mm -hmm. Samus beautiful so cool. pose. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nothing scares Samus. So good. <laughs> oh, look at that swing right <laughs> through the tail. 10 10. <laughs> <laughs> you get a really good look at her suit here. Yeah, I'd be watching for a moment too. Like, are you gonna stay down? <laughs> yes. Hold that pose. Yeah. Ooh, what do we get? Ah, uh, yeah. Phantom clothes. Of course. That's how Corpius was turning invisible. So the Phantom Cloak was uh, previewed and mentioned by Sakamoto-san in his uh, video earlier this morning. Um, it is an Aeon ability. And for some of you at home who have played, Metroid Samus Returns may recognize Aeon abilities, but these are brand new and they play very differently in Metroid Dread. 
Yeah, this is my new Aeon abilities, and this one actually, uh, it's more of an endurance gauge, so it fills up over time. But you really, really want to keep a close eye on it, because the last thing you want is for your phantom cloak to disappear when you really need it. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's actually showcase it here. So before, I wasn't able to go through these doors. Um, they're called presence doors, but now, with the phantom cloak, I'm able to move, progress through them. Mm -hmm. um, I am moving a lot slower with the phantom cloak, and as you can see, the energy gauge right underneath is slowly decreasing, but as I move, it decreases even faster, and once it's depleted, it starts taking away from my health. So I have to deactivate it. Um, I can replenish it really quickly by moving, and then only then can I reactivate it again. Take this elevator up. Thank you. Yeah, just like the other abilities, this opens up new areas that you can go and explore, being able to go through those presence doors. So a uh, whole lot more adventure to, to unravel here. Love this view. Th that background is so beautiful. Yeah, this is a new section of this world filled with Ooh. magma. Just engage. Oh, <laughs> those flying guys can be such a nuisance when you're trying to get across. Oh, there. they can be. You handled them very readily. Yeah, you made Thank it look you. easy. <laughs> <laughs> now flamethrowers. Mm -hmm. Get away from me. <laughs> nice. Uh, this is really cool. So um, we're still in the area of Arteria, which is the very beginning part of the game. And this is a feature, which is an elevator that allows you to uh, travel to different parts of planet ZDR. Um, so now we're moving to Cataris. And as you can see in the map, um, this game plays very differently where you start from the center core of the planet and you're working your way up all the way to Samus' ship. So um, it is a very different feeling really builds up on the uh do i say dread <laughs> isolation <laughs> it really does i'm sure you had kind of a long way to go to the surface there too mm -hmm. that little dot at the top was your ship here's a moment for us to not be you know attacked and also enjoy his beautiful hd graphics <laughs> a little reprieve <laughs> All right, so this is Cataris. Let's explore. Mm -hmm. Ow. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Welcoming committee. You can't it's rest on your laurels for a minute in this game. Oh yeah, not at all. These enemies are different too. Uh, as you can see, their counter is very uh, different. Um, um, but they are really cool, very satisfying to counter. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that place is very hot. We don't have an upgrade for that yet, so we'll have to come back later and explore it when we do have an available an a, a ability to explore it. So, ah, that looks like an area. Oh, and yes, <laughs> when in doubt, right here. <laughs> Start blasting. Sneaky. No. Oh. <laughs> You never underestimate the little enemies. They mm -hmm. can really mess you up. They can, especially those. They're mm -hmm. very, ooh, very agile. Mm -hmm. You can see as you learn the enemy's patterns, you can see tells for when they're about to attack a lot of times, and that'll help you know when to counter. I really love the dash melee ability. Mm -hmm. It allows me to effectively get uh, rid of some enemies really quickly. So this is another room, a communication room uh, where we'll be able to communicate with Adam. And I kind of want to make it clear too that uh, Adam is uh, Samus's uh, ship's computer. Uh, we're going to skip through this area really quickly and have Dan kind of summarize what uh, Adam says. But Adam is just a point for lore, uh, does not do e give any direction to Samus, it is up to the player to choose where they want to nav navigate and where to explore. But yeah, yeah we're only cutting away because we don't want to give away any juicy lore tidbits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And basically he was just talking about how this area is sort of the thermal power for um, the, the planet and um, by redirecting that power you can potentially open up other areas. And he also had a few little tidbits about the phantom cloak, which we, we already knew about how that gauge worked, thanks to Teresa's explanation. Oh. Look in the background, you can see magma flowing through some of those pipes, but not the others. Yeah, all of these pipes are very interesting, and this mysterious door opened up, too. Uh. <laughs> Ooh. Here's an interactable, which allows, uh, so this area of Cateros, uh controls the magma uh, flow of the planet. And so we're able through these interactables, uh, change the flow to access other areas. So now because we changed the thermal flow, we're not able to backtrack to where we were. So find a different path. It's such a niche touch that something we were just talking about in the background actually has a uh, gameplay component. Mm -hmm. No. And there we can see that magma flowing through those pipes. Yep. Oh, and that opened that doorway there. As uh, Teresa is very well aware, there's such a, a diverse uh, amount of life in, <laughs> in this world. So many different kinds of alien creatures that maybe not when they're mercilessly attacking you, but it's really neat to otherwise to yeah. see such uh, different uh, alien creatures. Nope. No, thank you. Look at that background. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. Ooh. Oh, watch out for him. These, these enemies are pretty gnarly. Uh, they throw little uh, balls of hurt <laughs> that I don't particularly enjoy. Ow. Maybe not stay in the spawning point of the yeah. end. Oh, that would be good. A pixelated door. No, you're right. what that means. Oh, I'm so nervous. Okay, here we go. Yep. So this door leads to another Emmy zone. Mm-hmm. So I believe we're gonna That sense of dread you're Emmy. feeling is very warranted. <laughs> well I feel it. Sure. I, I feel it. Calm have their little beeping. Ah, uh, that was well, it's blue though, look. Yeah, so Samus has been able to use the Phantom Cloak to her advantage by escaping uh, this Emmy. And this Emmy can crawl through tight spaces, so it's pretty formidable. Um, yeah, really liking that Phantom Cloak about mm -hmm. now. <laughs> okay, I need, I need to not be hearing those beeps. They yeah. scare me. <laughs> <laughs> the beeps. Oh. Oh, Ooh. It's oh, it's watch it. out. Oh, see, it, it heard that noise, and so it's now oh. in yellow mode. Ooh. Please don't notice me. Go well, away. well used phantom cloak mm -hmm. there. <laughs> that saved your tail. So you can see okay. in the mini map, the little red dot is the Emmy. It is still nearby. I. Making sure that it doesn't hear me. Okay. We're good. Oh, oh auto tool. Why oh, would you no. do this to me? Because <laughs> it wanted to give you some items. Auto. No. Okay. Maybe I didn't call the Emmy to my. No? Oh, oh why? This oh. Yeah, blend in with the background. Yeah, I, I need these guys to just go away. <laughs> <laughs> Getting some good missiles, though. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All right, I have the spider magnet ability. I should just use it. All right, let's see. There's nothing here. Sounds oh, like there's something here. <laughs> there's something there. No, 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 Run. please. 
You really want to stay at a distance from... Oh, I didn't notice you. You're so sneaky. Mm -hmm. Emmys, because if they get up close and personal, it's not going to be in your favor most of the time. Go away. Go. Please go away. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Meanwhile, your gauge is just getting lower mm -hmm. and lower. No, don't, don't, don't uh, say that. No, it's I mean, fine. I mean, it's fine. It's, it's all fine. fine. <laughs> I hope. Okay. Yep, yep, you, you keep going that way, buddy. Nothing to see here. No, it's still there. I think it went the direction oh, that I wanted to go. Ah! No! 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 no. Run! <laughs> Can I trick it? Every bounty hunter for themselves. Yep. <laughs> I'm brave. Oh! I will escape you. <laughs> so when it turns in, turns red with pursuit mode, it will still be able to oh, find you. Oh, charge! Hurry, hurry. No. <gasps> Even if you phantom cloak. Oh no! Oh no! No! Oh. Oh. The Emmys so are brutal. Okay, brutal to dodge. They're nearly tough. impossible <laughs> to uh, counter. Oof! All right, let's try this again. Oh, Back okay. into the wolf's den we go. <laughs> Skip that cutscene. It's glorious, but mm -hmm. we've already seen it. We've got business. Oh, you're there already. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Waiting. I don't like you. You're mean. I think that's fair. <laughs> Maybe I, I, I can outrun it. <laughs> oh. Open faster, yeah. please. <laughs> okay. All right. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So that here's the sounds another. gone. Thank goodness. <laughs> so redirecting the thermal fuel. Let's follow it and see where it goes. Yeah, you can actually follow that pipe in the background and see what you've done. <laughs> oh, oh no! Why? No, no, no. Why? <laughs> wow. No. No. No! Oh, no. <laughs> oh! Here comes the dread. Yes. So vicious. Okay, so Sneaky there. stopped here, which is good. I'm just gonna be more cautious to make sure he's not anywhere near me. Okay. When you finally get out of the Emmy room, you feel so safe, but then... It's deceiving. <laughs> yeah. It's deceiving, deceiving. <laughs> yes. And you're going to have to go back in there several times. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I don't want to. It's not a linear <laughs> progression. They need to stop that. Nice. Right. Get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are only trouble if you leave them there. You learn that pretty quick. <laughs> See any more? No. Oh, sure. you. Where's that guy? Oh, nice. Yeah. I love the music. It just amplifies mm -hmm. so amplifies. the intensity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's worth noting for anybody who's new to the Metroid series that uh, this is Samus, of course, and she's the protagonist in all of the games. So this might be terribly frightening to us, but this is just a matter of due course for Samus. <laughs> she has been through a lot, and it's just a testament to how amazing she is that she has survived all of it. Yeah, and even if you may be new to the franchise, it's totally okay because the game does a really great job at giving you um, a summary of what has transpired before. Um, so it's really, um, it's 
pretty good, easy to pick up, especially if this is your first game mm -hmm. um, in the series. Um, and also, if you don't know who Samus is, but you know maybe Samus the Fighter in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, same character. Yeah, mm -hmm. find out how she earned her stripes. <laughs> oh. oh no. Mm -mm. I just love watching Samus slide. <laughs> it's such a great animation. Mm -hmm. okay. Nope. And another way to use your phantom cloak is get through that door. I don't know if anyone else is forgetting to breathe, but remember <laughs> to breathe. I, I do. <laughs> All right. Well, this statue looks really mysterious, but uh, this is the cliffhanger. We're going to stop here because, uh, again, we don't really want to spoil too much of the story, but we wanted to give you at home a sneak peek of uh, Metroid Dread. We're really excited to play it. Um, we're really excited for your, you guys at home to also get your hands on when it comes out on um, October 10th um, or 8th. October 8th. Yeah. So, um, but before we go, have a little surprise to show you. Um, it is the special edition version of this game, and there it is in its glory. Yeah, in all of its glory, you get a steel book with the game included, of course, and five uh, uh, art cards and an art book, which is really exciting. They chronicle Samus's adventures in the 2D games. So, like we said, whether you are a longtime fan of Samus and her adventures in Metroid, or you're new to the series, this is a great way to either celebrate your fandom or kind of get up to speed before you play the game. So yeah. it's really neat. And yeah. here it is. Yeah, all that and the game. So mm -hmm. <laughs> really, really cool. Yeah, this game um, really has great. something for everyone. Action, exploration, puzzles, Samus being cool. It's got it all. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I uh, just wanted to thank again for the fans for tuning in. And uh, thanks for sticking with us this entire time. Um, yeah, if you, uh, if you missed any of the uh, previous segments, they're all up on YouTube, along with uh, one more segment of a game that we haven't shown um, previously on the stream, so be sure to check that out. Yeah, um, on behalf of everyone at Nintendo, thanks for watching and um, keep smiling. Welcome back to E3 2021's Caster Desk. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside golden boy Alex Mendez. And the first thing you said when they popped up that special edition for Metroid Dread is that's being bought. Oh yeah, 100%. Uh, I actively try, so I, I, I really do enjoy the Treehouse presentation. Of course. Because, you know, you get a deeper dive. Sometimes you get to talk to some of the devs or some of the social team, and that's always a nice uh, thing to see. But I try my best to avoid any kind of spoilers for Dread because I want to experience experience that for myself yeah that was the most pleasant surprise like i don't metroid think, five yeah like i don't <laughs> think people understand like that's 19 years in the making like right? that's a big deal yeah everyone thought that that game was was Gone. done like they just Over. moved on from yeah. it maybe they'll reboot you know the uh the 2d uh, side scrollers like yep. maybe that was what they were going to do alongside prime but to just get a direct follow-up to to fusion like so cool i i'm so so excited. Uh, so overall, Golden Boy, what did you think? This is our first time being back on camera in what feels like days, but actually hours. What did you think of the Nintendo Direct here at E3 2021? You know, man, I I, I thought it was pretty good. You yeah. know, like I, I pretty think, good. Get out. Yeah, of here. I think that there was a lot of different things, a, di a lot of different flavors for people. Sure. Uh, if you enjoy, you know, tactical games, you got a little bit of that with Advance Wars. Don't even get me started. Uh, Don't which even I'm get me so started. excited about. Oh, that. do I want to uh, talk about Advance Wars? It was nice that Metroid fans 
Vince got acknowledged. Uh, you got a little Breath of the Wild 2 at the end yeah. there. Like, uh, I mean, Michael lost his marbles when they showed oh. Shin Megami Tensei, because I'm sure he's going to die. I'm not looking forward to when we can go. It's going to get loud in here when they go back to the yeah, media couch to find out what Michael thought. It's going to be insane. But, yeah, man, I thought that it was really good. So I thought so, too. I I'm, glad, I'm glad that it was, like, the a good way to kind of cap things off. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, of course, we are asking you, as you can see, what was your favorite Nintendo announcement? You can vote in no matter what uh, channel you're watching us on, no matter what platform you put it into the chat, it'll be there. And you see it right now, a dead heat between Breath of the Wild 2 and Metroid Dread. There, oh, Michael got his phone out. He's out yeah, there. Michael got he's out there. He's, he's out there voting the for right Shibagana Tensei 5. He's hitting two in the chat so hard right now, it's ridiculous. That was my thing, uh, Golden Boy, is that I loved this conference. I thought it started so, so strong with the Smash reveal, right? Of course, yeah. having the uh, attacking guy, Kazuya. I have to look at, look at it, or I will get it wrong, and I will be to Ken, like uh, <laughs> yeah. Michelle Rodriguez at Game Awards. Uh, but starting, <laughs> <laughs> she's a huge fan. Starting with uh, the Smash reveal, right? And then going all the way till you get to Breath of the Wild, too. Uh, in there, there were still so many different things. Things that spoke to me, right? Where it's like you have these high moments, these peaks for me and yeah, you yeah. and every has something to jump on, right? So for me, I wrote down Mario Party Superstars, Metroid Dread, Mario Golf Super Rush. Yes, they're getting free updates. I can't wait. So uh, WarioWare, Get It Together, Fatal Frame, uh, of course, a Wii U port, but I'll take it. Uh, Advance Wars 1 Plus 2, Reboot Camp. I can't believe it. Yeah. I didn't think I was. I am an, I am an Advance Wars fan, ladies and gentlemen, and that is something I gave up the ghost on a long time ago. We talk about so much this week, this weekend, these four days of indies, right? And indies being, the well, if you're not going to do it, we'll do it ourselves kind of thing. And I've exactly. played so many Advance War clones. Now to have one plus two bundled together, rebuilt from the ground up, super so stoked exciting. for that. And then, yeah, ending on Breath of the Wild. I thought this was such a great conference. And, and I also do want to say, uh, because I said this on Twitter, but I also think it's important to say here for anyone who's watching, for anyone who's paying attention, like, you know, let's not forget that 2020 was a really tough year for game development. Of course. People don't realize that game development, like if, if you've never worked in that space, and I haven't, but I, I know people who have, it's a very collaborative experience, sure. right? You being together, like and, and creating together, that is uh that's what creates these incredible worlds, mm -hmm. right? So there has been a lot of, you know, kind of pushing the calendar back on a few yep. titles, which is completely understandable. Uh it just means that we have even more goodness to come like i'm looking forward to 2022 a lot of great games are coming out but also you said it best greg this is like take advantage of this year to try something new oh, of because there are some great games that have been announced like if you've never played advance wars one and two what like, is wrong with please you? check it out it except for the fact sobering sobering for both me and Dan Casey back there when the when the Nintendo Treehouse was like, yeah, it came out 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Didn't realize that. Remember buying it on launch Crazy day? Thing. Did, and I was an adult then. That was terrifying. Crazy thing was uh, I was talking to Damon, and I was like, yeah, you know, because it was, it was on the 3DS, right? And he was like, no, it was Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance I was like, man. Get out of town, yeah. bro. And <laughs> I, I was the same way, not. dude. I was the same way. I was like, oh, you're right. I was playing that on my clamshell. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, so that's what I'm saying. Like, guys, it, you know, there's a lot to look forward to. There's a lot of great games, especially coming out of Nintendo. One thing that I'm very happy about, well, uh, Monkey Ball 20th Anniversary, heck yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Uh, but Life is Strange. We have talked yeah. about it uh, a lot. I never really gave the series much of a chance because when I'm at the PC, I'm playing Valorant, I'm playing Apex, I'm You're playing Halo. You're clicking heads. You're I'm out clicking there heads. getting on the leaderboard. Yeah, right. Just... Knockout City going nuts, yeah. right? But uh, but I'm going to download Life is Strange on my Switch, and I'm going to enjoy that when I'm on the road, yeah. maybe when I'm in the living room hanging out. Like, that is a great game to just sit back, play, and, and relax. And then, you know, Michael's favorite thing, just cry. Of course. You know? <laughs> so, uh, Life is I'm Strange. looking forward to it. Fantastic series. Yes, it was unexpected and very cool to see them. Yeah, and yeah, Life, Life is, is Strange, Strange anime, eventually. You know? yeah, I hope, right? <laughs> Life is Strange Remastered, yes. And uh, Life is Strange True Colors are coming to the Switch. Uh, day and date for uh, True Colors, and then a little bit later in the year for Remastered, which was exciting. And this also got paired up, kind of, with the other Square News, Guardians of the Galaxy coming. And That's it's going right. to be one yeah. of the, it's going to be, you know, Nintendo's been trying this out. It's going to be one of their cloud games. Yeah. So again, the Switch itself not powerful enough to run a 
PS4, Xbox, or PS5, you know, upgraded version of it. Uh, but you'll be using the cloud now and playing it that way, similar to what you've seen people do with Control. Exactly, and and that is a, a good step forward, I think, yeah. for the Switch that, you know, is dated hardware, and I know that there's always going to be a lot of questions about, uh, you know, Switch Pro, blah, 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 but, like, uh, you know, let's be real. There, I can't get a PlayStation 5 right now because there's a, <laughs> there's a massive silicone shortage globally, right. so it's, like, kind of hard to say like oh yeah we're putting a new thing into production lord knows if it's even real or not but that's not the point the point is is that like a lot of things have been set back so there are going to be ways for you to kind of wiggle around i like that they did that with guardians of the galaxy yeah uh, but uh, another little thing that i'm sure you know our, our media friends are going to chat about warrior wear what a what a great surprise yes. I, I just did not expect that yes. at all it was always a very niche game yeah very niche game but that coming in, and it's two players, couch co-op, which is always a blast. I can definitely see, like, myself and my wife having a great time playing that. Alex, you make a good point. What do our media friends over on the couch think of all these Nintendo announcements? Jackie, let me know. Hmm, let's see what they're thinking. Um, we do have a lot on the list here, folks, but I think we got to open up talking about Breath of the Wild 2. Um, all of us were on the edge of our seats, just like clapping, hooting, and hollering. So why don't we just do a round robin? Damon, I'll start with you, and uh, just tell me what are your thoughts. It was great to see it. <clears throat> that was the real important, important thing that Nintendo had to show us, had to give us an update on, had to give us something, because it's been two yeah. years since... We'd heard anything about the game. Maybe not as, as long a look as I would have wanted, but it's just, it was enough. And the show had been so good up to that point. I, as we near the end, I almost think, you know, even if they don't show Breath of the Wild 2, I don't think I'm gonna be that mad because the conference was that strong. <laughs> Michael. Breath of the Wild 2 looks sweet. You get that extra verticality <laughs> going in the sky. And I think like Link's arm is going to be like an important, if I, if I yeah, if I understand correctly, it's gonna be sort of that new element that, the, that Breath of the Wild is gonna bring to Zelda, and I know that like all kinds of powers were so fun to play with because uh, Breath of the Wild was almost like an immersive sim in, in many respects, and you could toy around with the world and do whatever you want. So this added element, I want to dig into that. But just visually, uh, it's it looks like it's intimidating, it's dark, but it's also that whimsical vibe that you want out of a Breath of the Wild, a sense of adventure, if you will. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is I. This is probably this is enough for me to be like, all right, I'll I'll wait till 2022. They said they're aiming for 22 um who knows if they have to push it back but like golden boy said things have been rough so if they do it's all good uh i just you know breath of the wild too like i can't believe that's real like yeah um avi chan we were sitting next to each other i know that you you sorry my my otaku right here but um you lit up in particular when that rock monster stood up and you're like the gobby's on top of it oh exactly uh, yeah. well i mean jackie i gotta be honest with you i was trying to manifest some other news i went to bed in high heels last night <laughs> i tried you know me and golden boy were twerking in front of the uh, nintendo logo but seeing Link fly through the sky and look up at all the mountains, and as you said, seeing big rock guy come up and all the little uh, hobgoblins are on top of him. I forgot, Boca Bocoblins are on top of him. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're taking this to the next level, and I'm so excited for Breath of the Wild 2. Take your time. Take your time in making it. I will not be mad if it gets delayed. Like, make it. Take perfect. your time. Yes. Uh, Dan, what about you? What were your thoughts? Yeah, uh, there was a split second there where you see Link flying through the air, and my first thought was, where are we dropping, boys? I thought they were doing a Legend of Zelda <laughs> Battle Royale for a moment. Thankfully, that is not the case, although maybe down the line, who knows? But I'm just excited to see more of this rich universe, more of what they were able to establish with Breath of the Wild. And like we're talking about, not till 2022, some things are worth waiting for. This looks like it's going to be well worth the wait. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, if, you know, you hear all those rumors online about people talking about maybe a newer model of a Switch, what better way to launch a console like that than with an upgraded version of this, uh, this launch title for the previous one. So it's the sequel to Breath of the Wild. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to experience it, especially with this new verticality element too, because that was, some of the, that was one of the best parts about the original game is you can climb anything, you can then glide to anything unless your arms give out because you didn't eat enough food like, a, like I did, like I experienced <laughs> firsthand. Like a real life? Use bombs. Yes, yeah, no <laughs> okay. upper body strength. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously a lot of hype for Breath of the Wild 2, but um, tons of titles on here. Damon, I kind of wanted to pick your brain about Metroid Dread. Yeah. So I know you were sporting your Metroid t-shirt yeah, this I morning. Even, I guess maybe I manifested that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I rolled up in a Super Metroid shirt and had no idea that we were going to get a new 2D Metroid game today. Yeah, they mentioned Metroid Prime 4, uh, reassured us it's still in development. Um, but then a complete surprise to bring back Metroid Dread, a game that we were covering at IGN in like the mid-2000s we thought was completely dead. I never expected to see it again, but it's back. Uh, really, it's bold in, of Nintendo to 
keep it in, in, a, in, a, in a 2D uh, sort of, you know, to make another 2D Metro game, mm -hmm. uh, and then to introduce this dread mechanic that you're being hunted by this robot, Emmy, right? I, mm -hmm. I, was, I was super surprised to see that, and I can't wait to play it. It's, we don't have to wait very long. It's coming out in October. Yeah. Um, Y'all, this is Justin. My producer told me we have our reactions, apparently, <laughs> during oh, the Nikita no. Direct. Oh, no. I'm sure they're understated. I have no idea how this is going to look. So I'm going to oh, see if we God. can roll the tape on that. And I mean, obviously, we're going to have Michael here <laughs> reacting to Shin Megami Tensei 5. Right, let me I'm break. Sure. Let me break down the game tape. Okay, here. let's see what's happening. This title screen right here. Yo, Shin Megami Tensei 5. I was like, is there going to be gameplay? Is there going to be gameplay? Because you got an extended cinematic. I'm like, yo, this is okay. Yeah, this is how the gameplay works. <laughs> All sorts of stuff. But listen, listen. Shin Megami Tensei 5. The same way Golden Boy got hyped about Halo Infinite is the same way I got hyped for Shin Megami Tensei 5. I didn't expect it. So, y'all ever like just watch the press conference and be like, yo, I did, like, that's the game I've been looking for. I've been yeah. looking forward to Shin Megami Tensei 5 for so long. And I kind of put it off because Atlas is a little, um, they they were uh, a bit uh, kind of cryptic about what, what the status of the game, where it's at. And I was like, oh, maybe that's a 2022 thing. I'll wait for them to call us shots. But I didn't expect it to come through. And they showed a lot. It was on Treehouse, too. Yeah. OK, yeah. Who oh boy. All right. <laughs> so Take a breath. You, you know. I'm you. You're OK, yeah. You know. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. It's going to be OK. <laughs> Y'all know I'm a Persona stand. So if you have any love for Persona, give Shin Megami Tensei a, a shot. Ah, 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 ah. What's missing? What's missing? So here's the thing. If don't What's know, missing? If y'all don't know about SMT, SMT doesn't have the social sim element to it. It's dark, though. It's got demons. They're not personas. They're demons. And oh, yo, <laughs> the main prota the protagonist, oh, my God, the protagonist looks so <laughs> sick. Of course, uh, he, the, they pull up, and they're, like, in the school uniform. And then how SMT usually goes, the, the Tokyo be Tokyo becomes an uh, apocalyptic state. And then, boom, you make a deal with the devil, and you look sick. Yo, this, the laser sword arm, yo, the, the long, flowing blue hair, you almost look like a Fire Emblem character, and you got like a Tron sword over here. You, oh my god! And you see all the demons that you love and the personas you love from the games. Y'all should check it out. I know we're not getting a, a new persona anytime soon, but SMT5 is here. Yo! Oh my god! SMT5. Oh, and it's coming this year. Breathe, Yo, breathe. You, you gotta know. breathe. You Greg. gotta breathe. Yeah, Greg. 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 Yeah, I know. I know. We're very excited. Greg, it's, Greg, it's coming this year. I know. I know. November 12th. I can't wait, champ. I can't wait. November 12th. <laughs> I've been. I, this is the. This is the thing I've been waiting for. Oh my god. Ah. Yes. SMT5. <laughs> you know the vibes. <laughs> we get the vibes for sure. See, see, Jackie, that's how I would talk about Bayonetta 3 news. Yeah. Oh. If I yeah. had any. <laughs> four oh. years. Four years. You know what, though? Fatal Frame. Royal Fatal Frame. Rare, yeah. You, you, both of you were mm -hmm. going nuts about that. So. Yeah, I brought my cell phone today. So in a way, I manifested Fatal Frame, a game where you take <laughs> photographs. So, yeah, I'm just excited to see this game. It's coming to multiple platforms as well, but it's going to be, I think, you really get that feeling of, like, you are the photographer when you're playing on the Switch, because if you're playing in handheld mode, it's going to feel really immersive in a way it might not otherwise if you're just playing on your couch. So I'm excited to see uh, what they can do there. It's going to be nice to revisit it for people that haven't played it. Nice survival horror out there. So, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, the, the darker side of Pokemon Snap. Yeah, yeah, well, and they, is, they said it's not only coming to Switch, it's coming to uh, almost all of the current-gen consoles, mm -hmm. which is also really cool for people who didn't get to play it when it was only on the Wii U in 2014, and I think it's like a cool introductory, uh, because I have a friend, Captain Flowers, hates Wii type of games, and he's like, oh no, this is, this is my game, it's horror, it's scary, and I get to take pictures of ghosts, and I'm like, okay, bud, pop off. <laughs> This game looks absolutely horrifying. I haven't played Fatal Frame, but okay, I'm, I'm bored for it. But honestly, some of the other things that I was excited about, Danganronpa, Decadence, Doom Eternal, DBZ Kakarot, these were games that I was forced to play on my PC, and I was just like, man, I wish I could just like grab my Switch and just hop in my bed and play this and relax. So I don't know, were there any titles that you were like, oh, I'm so happy this is on Switch now? Yeah, Don Rampa is, is <laughs> that. For sure. So shouts out to my homegirl, Callie Plaguey. Uh, she's been wanting uh, people oh, to play. Uh, yeah, aw. <laughs> uh, and she's a big Don Rampa stan. And I've, I played uh, the first one. I haven't played, gotten to two or V3, but now it's on Switch. I think that's a perfect fit for Switch, too, because uh, that's that's another game where you, uh, you don't necessarily want to sit down and like solve a murder mystery or go through uh, the, all of Hope's Peak Academy and figure out who murdered who, but you could do, you could do that on Switch now. And I think those games are really special, man. Like the plot twists, even though I only played one, the other plot twists are wild. There's man, there's there's no other I don't think there's any other kind of murder mystery game quite like it. And Monokumo, oh I oh my god, I hate Monokumo so much. And y'all should find out why you should hate Monokumo as well 
Uh, when Monokumo is like adorable and the Absolutely. scariest villain yeah. I've ever met. Also, I've cosplayed as Junko Inoshima a few hey, times. I'm yeah. a big <laughs> fan of the collection. Um, Damon, I'm gonna put you in the hot seat here. Here we go. I, you gotta be a Tekken fan, so I'm sure you got pretty excited I have today. To be. <laughs> I mean, you like Legally, the retro for, games. For I thought, purposes, I thought, yes. like, you have to. I mean, I, I, maybe I was being a little presumptuous Tekken here. Tekken 3 on the PlayStation okay, was the last okay, Tekken okay. game I played. Uh, but I mean, that was a cool announcement yes. for, for Smash Brothers. Yeah, yeah. yeah Smash for Brothers sure. cross Tekken. Anyone else yeah. hyped about that? I, yeah. I, I'm hyped about having Kazuya from Tekken. Yeah. Like having because everyone has those those lists of characters that they kind of expect to come to Smash because like oh that's easy money. Yeah. Uh, I didn't expect a Tekken character, so Kazuya Mishima from Tekken. Yo, that's, that's pretty good. I'm a little heated though because I wanted Kazuma Kiryu from Yakuza, but I, you know what? I get it. We've been asking for too long, but this is a good fit because <laughs> the thing about when they when they bring over uh, characters for Smash is that they always incorporate elements from their game. And the same thing with bringing Ryu to Smash, where he plays like a fighting game character. It's the same thing. Like a lot of these animations and move sets remind me of how Kazuya plays in Tekken. So that's that's dope. That's really cool to see. All right, Dan, if you nod your head over there. Yeah, I, look, I, I love Tekken. I'm excited to see uh, him join the roster. I was just a little affronted as a Kirby main, one of the proud, the few, to see him <laughs> oh do my little marshmallow boy dirty like that. And for everyone out there being like, well, he floated back up. Yeah, I know he floated back up. I know how to play Kirby. That's why. I, that's why I main him. It's the principle of it. Leave me alone. Are you talking about the memes? <laughs> oh, the memes are oh, good. Oh, go to the his Twitter. Oh, Just okay. go to, yeah, there have been some great memes Those out fan there. artists are fast. I saw someone already, uh, they did an illustration of what Kirby would look like if he were to inhale uh, Kazuya, and it looks pretty great. Oh, I think the best one I've seen is the Breath of the Wild 2 Link going right into Lady D. Can oh, you share that with me? Wow. That was Greg. Who sure that was a Greg? <laughs> okay, I, got, I, I assumed it was Avi. I'm so sorry. It's like, where are we dropped it from? Yeah, I was like, who would have shared that with me? I, okay, it was Greg, my bad. But um, let's just go down the line really quickly, and I just would like everyone to just break down what was your favorite part about the Nintendo Directs. Metroid Dread for me. That was a really nice surprise. It, we don't have to wait very long. It's coming later on this year. It's just so cool to get another mainline entry in the Metroid series. Metroid 5, basically, actually continuing Samus' story and apparently concluding it. Mm, oh, um, Emmy. Horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Horrifying. I Why was she scaring me so much? It's because it's like this contrast of like you expect it to be this like gnarly alien planet, but it is this really crisp, clean, yeah. technological horror where it's this unrelenting robot that is apparently used to be something to extract your DNA to hunt you down. So it is <laughs> I was I was reading the lore in between this, so that's what, apparently what it used to do. So now it's just like this tyrant-esque monster that just follows you around relentlessly. And yeah, it's super spooky. I love the sound design, that like gentle beeping. It's just, it's oh. really creepy. Beep. Absolutely. <laughs> Obvious. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> okay, do I even need to ask? Hey, Shin Megami <laughs> Tensei Five. If y'all play Persona, You're cut off. go Thank through you. the origins. The origins of Persona <laughs> is in SMT. Y'all should peep it. That's it? Oh, I thought you were going to go oh, on. No, I okay. Respect, respect y'all time. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you did have, a, <laughs> thank, you did thank have you. the spotlight for thank just you. a little bit thank there. You. I'll, I'll be fast so Dan can get his in. Breath of the Wild 2, super excited for WarioWare. I live in the chaos. That's why G4 picked me up. So all those mini games look good. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Calamity expansion, DLC. That's going to be cool. Uh, I'm going to uh, do what Greg so eloquently teed up. Advance Wars 1 and 2 reboot camp for some strategy <laughs> RPG gaming that really reminds me of my own mortality. All right, I'm going to pick Breath of the Wild 2 and Metroid as well. I don't know. I can't wait to meet yeah. Emmy. But hopefully she doesn't suck my DNA out. But anyway, uh, more here from E3 2021, including Bondi Namco presents House of Ashes. That and a whole lot more as E3 rolls on. I am rather in love with the Nintendo Switch. It's a good throwback for me as someone who, you know, took her Game Boy everywhere she went. Now I can, and here it is, right? Now I can just take my Switch everywhere I go. I can play it wherever I am. It's such an easy thing to just pick up and, and put down, you know, like you're not as committed as when, when I'm sitting down to play something on a PC or a console, like there's a bigger time investment. With the Switch, I can just, I just start it up like, how many Pokemon have I photographed whilst being on the toilet? I can't even tell you.
a part of Play For All, GameSpot will be bringing you the latest gaming news and announcements, interviews with developers, the biggest press conferences, and lots more. Play For All is our yearly online event that combines the excitement and announcements of E3 with charity live streams the following week with lots of special guests who are going to help us raise money for able gamers. So join us in June for E3 and Play For All on GameSpot.com, YouTube.com slash GameSpot, Twitch.tv slash GameSpot, and as a part of E3's official broadcast. See you then. GoGo Indie is a Chinese media company founded in 2018, which is designed to provide the best information to the world's Chinese players. GoGo Indie is based in China, and has been working with many international gaming companies to form a formal partnership with the world's most recent gaming information, and will deliver the most recent gaming information to the world's most recent gaming information. Since the founding, GoGo Indie has exceeded 5 million users in the world's online media, and has served over 100,000 users and players. Our dream is to be a gaming culture transporter. 您可以在全球各大手机应用市场下载 GoGo Indie APP， 或者访问三 w 点 gamebonfire com 来加入游戏传播者的行列iHeartRadio is a proud partner of E3 2021 and the number one podcast publisher in the U.S. Listen to all your favorite shows on the iHeartRadio app. has officially partnered with the ESA for E3 2021. IGN's Summer of Gaming is now all summer long. From major press conferences and announcements at E3 2021 to the IGN Expo with exclusive gameplay and reveals to exciting first looks at the hottest new games and in-depth developer interviews, IGN's Summer of Gaming has it all. IGN's Summer of Gaming begins right now. Discord, Discord, Discord. Oh, here it is. Call, calling, 
Ninja. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's you! Holy bleep! Dude, you I can't believe you're here! Did you just bleep yourself? Yes! Okay. This is a okay. very never... family friendly convention. E3. It is. I am E3, so excited. excited. So just so I know for for Cody, so you're you're a new like a new host of G4. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um Adam Sassler is my uh is my master and I'm his Padawan. Can I fly by some jokes on you? Let, let me see it. Let's go. Okay, I'm ready. okay. This is a really good joke, okay? Okay, I'm ready. Knock knock. Who's there? Your career just left. <laughs> Sorry, was that too much? Was that too much? What, you're not laughing. What, what, what's wrong? Why you gotta, why you gotta go there? Ah, 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 oh, 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 these nuts? <laughs> Got him! Got him! That was good! That's brand friendly. It's a classic bees nuts joke, yes, right? Yes. Classic bees nuts joke, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta hit it. You gotta hit me with the sugma. Yeah. The ligma. The okay. Ligma. The, the sugma, the ligma, and then what's the other one? Candice. Uh huh. That's a classic. That's a classic. Candice. That's a good one. Um, I every day. Oh, wait, that was probably bad. Okay, never mind. Ninja, I have so many questions for you. Um, because well, first I'm on E3, and as you can tell, I keep having to bleep myself out. I need to learn how to be brand safe. I've seen some of your stuff. Okay. Uh, there's a couple things that a parent might hear that's like, Joseph. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on. What how are this? you watching? Okay, wait. How about this? How about this? Um, your parents are virgins. I like it because I think that they would laugh at it and the parents obviously are intelligent enough to know that they're not because their spawn is sitting in front of them. Right. You're, that's actually, okay. That's good, okay. right? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a level comedy. Yeah, exactly. And also, uh, uh, what, what, uh, what, what do kids like these days? Uh, Minecraft, dream, dream. They love dream. Oh my God, they have, they're obsessed with Dream. Yeah. yeah. All those guys, Tubbo, Tubbo Dream, uh, Tommy freaking Tommy in it. I mean, yeah. they, 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 they could fart into a microphone and go viral. I can fart. There you go. Farting. Uh. Oh, so that is funny. That's funny, that's funny. That's funny, that was a wet one. Oh my God. Oh my I God. think I just <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Guys, let's yeah. not talk about that. Let's not, let's not talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't right. even, I haven't even begun to peek. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. yeah, it's you coming. Oh my god, I can't wait. You nailed this for brand safety. So, you so? you're ready. I'm so ready. Got it. I'm really excited. This is awesome. Miko, Miko, you're awesome. Uh, oh. If you actually do want a game, just I, I don't know. I'll follow you on Twitter if I don't already, oh. and then just DM me or anything, and we can set something up. Okay. <laughs> Again, was that too much? <laughs> okay, so you signed up willingly to work with Code Nico. To be fair, when I signed with G4, I did not know that she would be employed, uh, but uh, yes, uh, uh, that is my coworker. You thought Avali was the weirdest one. No, <laughs> no, no, it's her, it's her. G4 is gonna be great, folks. <laughs> I just see. can't wait to see your interaction with could be I honestly, I, I don't know if I'm ready for that personally. I can't wait to watch that. <laughs> yeah. So let me know when that goes down. I'll, I'll tell you what I can't wait to do. Tell us, Greg. Get to what? my PC and go to Steam. If you go to Steam right now, you'll find on the very front page an E3 link. There it is. You click on it. And guess what? You what? get to see each and every game we've talked about oh. showcase had anything to do with during our four days here. Of course, you can wish list, you can pre-order, you can have a good time. Wait for it. Wait for it. It, wait for it. There it is. Go get to the rescue right there. <laughs> click on that. That's the one. They need you. Fallen Aces. Click on that one. Go for Cat Cafe Manager. Yeah. Everything for Freedom Games.
Yeah, 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 pretty yeah. Much. Everything yeah. for free. We keep putting them over, and for no reason, because they're great. So yeah, get all those games. We're still small. And hey, while you're spending money, have you ordered your E3 merch yet? That's if not, bad. check out E3Expo.com slash shop and get your order in today. Bomber right. jackets on point. Very nice, very nice. Long enough for us. I know, Dude, right? It's a sleep I know, it's very, very nice. Yeah, I like it. Uh, now, the big question is, what would you guys like to see here from Bandai Namco Presents House of Ashes? I am not familiar with this, sure. but I have been told that it is scary. And I don't do well with scary. Yeah. You, know, you ask about Code Miko, it's scary. I don't know <laughs> if I can handle that. Man, that's a so, different kind of scary. Yeah, that true. is a much different. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, a different kind of tone of presentation. Would you like me to hold your hand during this presentation? Sure, Puffy. I'm OK yeah. with that. You know, it's great. Yeah, if you're not familiar, everybody, of course, this is going to be uh, Nam uh, Bandai Namco. I still want to say ba Namco Bandai. It's the, when they changed the name, it was, it was years ago, and it still <laughs> yeah. screws me up to this day. Uh, of course, they're working with super massive games on the Dark Picture Anthology, a whole bunch of different horror games that are coming out in quick succession. This is the third one in the anthology already, but if you didn't know them before, of course, Supermassive made Until Dawn, a breakout PlayStation hit that then led to this deal. Of course, they've done Madame Medan already, uh, now they did Little Hope, and now it's yeah. time to see more of House of Ashes. And so, yeah, this one's an exciting, different thing, right, Jackie? Well, I have been closely monitoring every trailer, any gameplay that has dropped on this, and it is so scary. Like, yeah. I, I really cannot emphasize that enough. Um, but for me, it has to be more than scary, and it has sure. to be more than these terrifying aliens. For some reason, the story really hits with me, and you can also tell that they've invested so much time into this project. And yeah. I'm really hoping we get more of an inside look here, because I am on board, and it is bloody and gory and oh. alien. And, yeah, I'm here for Oof. it. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, Not your cup of tea, but 100% uh, mine. You know what? Hey, I'm here for Drink it. Though. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it all. So, Oppo yeah. Opposing forces get dropped into a Sumerian temple, right? And all sorts of supernatural elements start yes. popping up. We'll see what's going on here. Yeah. So, Golden Boy, we need you to get psyched up. We need you to yeah. get ready oh, for Oh, no. Shit. I'm excited to watch it. I'm going to be very okay. scared. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to go over to the media area and I'm going to, you know, yeah, I'm going to be horrified because it's going to be great. It's time, though, for our next presenter. And here with their 2021 E3 presentation is Bandai Namco Presents House of Ashes. awoken from its slumber and is hungry for blood. Shall we see how many have fallen into shadow? Satellite sweeps of the war zone have uncovered what appears to be an underground storage facility. But I strongly suspect where chemical weapons are hidden, so we need to move fast. Ready to go, guard. To descend into the unknown alone is extremely brave. Right now, hold fire. Or extremely foolish. We're gonna sigh off this shit. Brothers in arms, or will it be a case of each man for himself? Get down, get down! They're up on the race! Return fire! You teeter on the edge of an abyss. Oh, shit. Your survival depends on the choices you make. They will be as a compass guiding you through the unknown. They're on God's green earth if we land. What nightmare have these luckless souls fallen into? You keep lookout. Look out? Look out for what? One by one, their lights will be snuffed out. Unless you can find the means to save them. Trapped beneath the earth. Swallow. You have to move, let's go. By the boy. Will you find the path to salvation? Or be lost in the darkness. Forever.
We're here at Supermassive to talk about the next game in the Dark Pictures anthology, House of Ashes. And I'm joined by exec producer Dan. How are you doing? Hello. Thank you for joining us. Right, really cool. so let's start at the very start. We're going to be talking about House of Ashes for most of the interview, but for those that don't know, tell us about the Dark Pictures anthology. The Dark Pictures is a series of narrative, story-driven, branching horror stories. Each one is standalone. They each tell a different story, completely separated from the others, but within the same universe, so there is connection between them all. House of Ashes is set at the end of the Iraq War in 2003, with links um, 4,000 years ago that set the story up. So tell us more about the theme and themes, I suppose, within um, House of Ashes. It starts off with a, a military unit. They've got some new technology that can look for weapons of mass destruction underground. They think they've identified something in the Zagros Mountains in Iraq. And then as part of that, they come into conflict with an Iraqi unit. There's a pitched firefight. And then the two groups are plunged underground. There's an earthquake of some sort. And it's revealed that there's a hidden temple underground. You know, these big, massive structures. But these different groups, they're all separated. Um, radio contact is lost. And they're submerged in this black uh, darkness. Where on God's green earth have we landed? And then they're going to start hearing things and seeing things and people are going to start disappearing. What the f*** just happened? So this time, it's a very real threat. All of the Dark Pictures games, they all pull something from, from real life or from history, from fact. What's the case with uh, the myth or historical part of, uh, of House of Ashes? So we love looking at, um, looking at and reading myths and legends and stories and doing our research. And we know our fans love it as well because there's something that they can link into afterwards. And, and I love doing that when I'm playing games and watching movies myself. So this one's set 4,000 years ago, the Akkadian Empire and this terrible evil that happened. We had this self-proclaimed God King, Naram Sin, and he essentially cursed his people. He sacked this temple and brought famine and, and devastation to his own people. And so a lot of the history is lost, but we've, we've done a lot of research about it. And then we had a lot of happy accidents that linked into the story we wanted to tell. And the fun thing for us is we get to, we get to do our own take on it. Mm. We get to twist it. And, and obviously we've made our own truth from it. At the end of the sneak peek, the trailer, we saw monsters. Tell us a bit more about what's going on there. The military unit that you're playing as, they don't really know what they're coming up against. They're not human. They're bigger, they're larger, they're faster. The team aren't going to know if there's one or two of them or hundreds or thousands of them. And that's kind of the threat with this, you know, they've got guns, maybe they could try and take one of them down. But maybe there's another one around the corner, or maybe there's a group of them, and maybe they're going to get ambushed. Maybe they're like a cluster. Exactly, and yeah, they all pop a out nest, once. as it were. Yeah. And it's been really fun to work on and, and see these things move around and how horrific they can be. They're different to us, they perceive the world in a different way. Getting little snippets of it in the darkness, and was that, did I see that? Mm. Was it something that moved? Uh, or is it actually just one of the other soldiers that's yeah. stuck in the catacombs? Who's there? We like to try and misdirect people on things, you know, that did you see something, did you not? And that's a great thing within horror, that you think you're going to be scared right now. And we're not going to scare you now. We'll scare you in a minute when it's you're coming. not expecting it. It's always coming. Yeah, always. Okay. So should we expect a huge amount of, of peril in the game? Definitely. Um, we love to do it. Um, you know, it's fun, fun for us to work on, as horrific as it is, and it's, we know that our fans love it as well. So yeah, there's at least 60 unique deaths, and there's a whole ton of variation on that as well. So Merwin and some of the others, you're going to see different things happening to them, depending on how you play it out, you know, getting ripped and shredded and torn. And because there's a firefight, there's going to be bullets flying as well, and all kinds of stuff. And it's not just the deaths, it's the gore that goes along with it, and you know, lots of blood. Wicked. It sounds absolutely terrifying. I'm, I'm in. No, it's not going to lie, man. It's pretty f***ing bad. What differences have you made or changes have you made to the, to the gameplay and mechanics for House of Ashes? We're always evolving the dark pictures. Um, we listen to a lot of the uh, feedback from our fans mm -hmm. um, and, and also our team, what they want to do, how they want to push things forward. So we, we tried some stuff in, in Little Hope with um, you know, more camera control, 360 cameras at certain parts, and we've really leaned on that again, and it really works well in House of Ashes, lots of the game is set underground, and so these sort of corridors, which are really tight and oppressive. It's creepy. Yeah, indeed. So, <laughs> so we've had to learn because you, you take away the fixed cameras, and that takes away some opportunities mm. for horror. But we've had to learn new tricks to scare people and you know ramp up the tension and, and uh, you know the, the chance for jump scares, which you know some people love. We've also got a new torch mechanic, so um, you know it's military themed. So these guys are going to be walking around with weapons with uh, torches mounted on them. We love the lighting that we do, the sort of really inky black darkness that we have. 
uh, and sort of the contrast to the bright areas. And so you're going to need to lean on that torch to allow you to see where you're going, what the threat is, and that kind of stuff. We've also done things like um, added difficulty settings to this game. So in Little Hope, we added uh, you know, QTE warning icons as an example, and we've got some really good positive feedback about that, but also some people want to turn that off. We want to allow you to play the game in your way. So with our accessibility settings and difficulty settings, if you want to have a more casual experience, you can change those settings. Still, most of your characters are going to end up dead, but, you know, that's... that's Spoilers, what yeah, indeed. but that's what we come here for. That's yeah. OK, we can deal with it. So I've got to ask, what was it like working with Ashley? So Ashley was fantastic. She researched Rachel. She understood her when she came mm -hmm. on the set, which is so refreshing. She knew her inside out. And Rachel is a flawed character, so she brought that through so fantastically. The rest of the cast were fantastic as well. When we were looking for Joey, Salim helped me. You didn't tell me this because... You'd flip your shit. We want you to connect to these characters and understand them as humans. We want them to seem real because they're real to us. You know, we spend a long time designing them. And, and I don't mind if you hate anyone, the individual character, because you don't like everyone in real life. But maybe you'll like them when you see the journey they go on. Maybe you'll like them once they're dead and you yeah, feel bad about it. Yeah, and you feel bad yeah. about it, definitely. <laughs> yeah. But also we want you to save them. We want you to try and save them. You know, we know that some people want to get everyone killed straight away and that's fine. That's their that's play cool. through, that's yeah. what they want to do. But, you know, can you get everyone out alive and save as many as you can? It's a lot of replayability there. Indeed, It's yeah. on forever. I like yeah. that. So, last question. Favourite scene? Favourite scene. So, um, Salim, our Iraqi soldier, and Jason Kolchak, one of the Marines that's there, there's a way that that can play out and a sort of contest between them. And you can make it go in a number of different ways. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's really emotional. Seeing them film it, I was lucky enough to be there, and then seeing that come through in game, I think we've got something there. I think that's gold. Um, and then, of course, I love scaring people, so I love the jump scares. I love the, the moments of tension uh, that we bring. We can't hold you in that moment, so we've got some fantastic jokes in there as well to allow you to relax for a moment before we scare you again. <laughs> to take your mind off yeah. the imminent threat. I like that. Dan, thank you so much. This has been really cool to talk about, and I'm sure, you know, I, I, I'm excited and terrified in equal part and everyone else is just excited i'm sure of it. and it's been a real pleasure to speak to you and i can't wait to get it into people's hands it's gonna happen <laughs>
it, it just goes to show, right, like the impact that video games are having, Hollywood stars coming in, you know, lending their voice, lending their face, their, 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 their acting, their skills to this, really bringing these characters to life is just going to add even more layers to this uh, horror. Well, that's a huge thing. If you've never played before, performance capture is a huge deal for Supermassive. They go through, they use the facial animation. They want you to feel like you're watching a movie. So we will see soon enough how the Dark Pictures anthology uh, pans out this time around with House of Ashes. But for now, let's toss it over to the one, the only, Jackie Jane. Brothers in arms, or each man for himself, survival depends on choice. Will you find the path to save everyone or be lost in the darkness? I'm sorry, I'm just a little excited about this title. Uh, Dan, I saw you taking lots of notes. You were taking notes about the mechanics, actually, but I know you're really thrilled with the story as well. Yeah. I mean, I am here for this. So. Well, I'm a big old history nerd, so I was super stoked to hear more about the setting. You know, it's, we, it's really tying in a lot of ancient lore about the Akkadian Empire. You have Naram Sin, this god, guy who declared himself like the god king of the Akkadian Empire and desecrated this temple, and now it's coming back to haunt us in modern day. It's also interesting to use the Iraq War as a setting. It is definitely a fraught uh, time period and event during which to set a game, but also I think a rich uh, sort of uh, backdrop for horror into this setting because you're tapping into sort of Mesopotamian mythology of Pazuzu, this king of wind demons who's tormenting all of these soldiers. And I'm really excited to see what they can do. I did, a, I, look, I told you, I was taking notes. I did some research. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait to experience all 60 death animations. <laughs> I know the 60 unique deaths. Okay, Avi Chan's face right now is just killing me. Uh, Avi, what are you thinking? I'm thinking that if I'm ever trapped in like a dark cave, I'm probably going to stick next to With Dan, Dan because yeah. he understands what we should be doing. King of what now? You're looking up he's, all this history look, on Pazuzu. He's the king of wind demons. No big deal. <laughs> Come okay. on. Everybody knows that. I don't even know what the king of wind demons is. What was it? Oh, he's Pazuzu. Oh, my goodness. Okay, You Pazuzu. may remember him from The Exorcist as well. Yes. Okay. Um, Avi, you were obviously a big fan of the... <laughs> so we're like, Dan, just like, I can go on. <laughs> Azuzu! <laughs> exactly. I was like, okay. Um, but Avi, you know, we've been talking about Resident Evil Village, like, at length. We both like horror survival. Um, but also, like, when someone's playing with us. And I thought that it's great that it's co-op. So we, we can be scared together while we play. Yeah, I'm just going to be sitting <laughs> behind Dan and watching yeah, exactly. him play because that's exactly exactly what I did with Until Dawn because I'm like cool I can't hold a controller and you know try to guide these teenagers to safety I'm I'm going to step on a branch and individually kill them all but uh, Dan was going into like the history of all of it and I'm going is like oh 2003 that's that's a little too close and I didn't I didn't pass all my history classes but I hope that Pazuzu doesn't you know pop up anywhere in a textbook uh, but something that was really interesting for me when we were going through the trailers and going through that little dev talk is that they showed us Pazuzu. They showed us the monster. They showed us what it looks like inside the cave. So there's part of me wondering, like, usually with horror games, you don't show people the scary right away. So I'm wondering if maybe there's, like, a hidden layer of something else that they're not showing us yet that's going to catch people off guard, thinking Let's that they're going in going like, I did my research, I know everything. I know how to deal with a Pazuzu, this is easy. I know. <laughs> so you two would fall into the depths together and then I would somehow be stuck with Michael and he'd be like talking about JRPGs and I'd be like, oh my goodness, we're in a world Listen, of hurt right now. If I make a deal with the devil, I can turn into a very attractive protagonist and then I could probably possess Pazuzu if I do negotiations like you can in SMT5. No, I Anyway, like one thing I want to say about this one is the free cam controls. That's different yeah. for super massive. So I'm gonna wonder how that works because I feel like they're very in, in control of camera angles and what you see before you make choices. I'm sure there's like transition phases where you actually make your choices and all other stuff. It's just uh, something new from them. So I just want to see how that plays out, especially when I'm with uh, a bunch of other people trying to get very scaled. <laughs> and Damon, I know you're all about retro games, but I also know you love a good story. I know for me, I felt like this had a lot of heart. There was dialogue that we saw and it really hit me yeah. to my Core. Yeah, and they showed to the actors doing the, the motion capture. I love horror movies. I love horror games. I'm a, a, a kind of a gore hound. I love blood and guts, and I love kill gags. Whoa. So, like, I'm looking forward to see all the inventive <laughs> and clever ways that Pazuzu is going to kill our soldier friends. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I just like saying Pazuzu, even though it's absolutely Pazuzu. horrifying. <laughs> yes. Anyways, goms, goms, I can't talk. Games have changed and evolved so much over the years, and with those changes, so has the coverage of our favorite games. Outlets like PC Gamer, IGN, Polygon, and GameSpot <laughs> have all led the way in gaming coverage, and for the first time ever, we've assembled the editors-in-chief of all those organizations and our voices of E3 series. Take a look.
Hello, um, welcome back to E3 2021. My name is Chris Dring. I run gamesindustry.biz, which is one of the world's biggest video games business websites. Um, and joining me today to talk about E3 and the future of games in general are some of the biggest names in the video games media from IGN, GameSpot, Polygon, and PC Gamer. But rather than me do the introductions, I'd like to pass over to the panel. Um, hello, everybody. Um, who are you? What do you do? How did you get here? Sure. Uh, I am Christopher Thomas Plant. That's my full birth name. Uh, it sounds like Christmas Plant if you say it really fast. Um, I'm the editor-in-chief of Polygon.com, uh, and it's a website. Thanks. This is Evan Lottie over at PC Gamer. I'm the editor-in-chief. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, Tina Amini, editor-in-chief of IGN. Um, I don't have a cool Christmas Twitter name, but I do have a really cool Halloween Twitter name uh, that someone gave to me, which is Tina Amini Deville. So that's all I got. Hi, how you doing? My name is Randall Franzi. I'm the editorial director from GameSpot. Uh, I go by Randy in this country uh, because while it's okay to be called um, Randy in America, if you say that anywhere else in the world, you will be met with sniggers. You can't say, hi, I'm Randy, to anyone else out there. Yeah, it's definitely true for us in the UK. Mm. So, so, so asking to all of you here, what does sort of E3 sort of represent to you? Um, I don't know if I want to pick on somebody, but R Randy, maybe. It, 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 it's difficult um, to separate E3 um, as a uh, professional working in the industry and as a fan. I, I've been in this industry for so long that, you know, it, it's E3 to me um, is usually just a lot of late nights, um, you know, being overworked, not having enough sleep. Um, but I, I, I think, you know, outside of the professional stuff, I think E3 for me, um, you know, it allows me uh, the chance to feel like a just a regular old fan of video games. You know, I, I still get hyped about stuff that you know gets um, gets revealed. Um, yeah, and 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 you know, for those brief shining moments of those you know major press conferences or you know during you know like a, a key announcement, you know, I can sort of forget that there's all this work that I need to do around this big event and just like be a fan of video games again. Yeah, yeah, having that in-person reaction, like you're typically sitting, if you're at a press conference, which I think probably for many of us, we maybe stopped attending them in, in like a physical capacity and maybe had like, we're in a war room, room of sorts with our team. But in general, just being able to sit next to your team and everyone's like reacting and then quickly scrambling to their keyboards again because they need to be typing up the news. That's obviously the primary element of it. Um, but for me personally too, it's also... It's a bit of a reunion because we'll all see each other in person, um, but it is that opportunity to have that one space, that one week. We all agree we're going to take that time and, and be in one space together and, and be able to connect. Yeah, I think E3 is the center of gravity too, right? I mean, in, in an environment, we saw what happened last year when, what happens when there's not an E3, right? Everyone kind of goes it alone and, you know, there's there's definitely some pros to that, but I think from from a coverage perspective, we like having, I mean, you guys probably all share the same attitude. We like having as much time as possible to, you know, do an interview, cover something and not be rushed off to the next thing back to back to back. But there is kind of an efficiency for us, I think, and the viewer, the consumer and having everything neatly collected under one roof for, you know, three or four days. Um, you know, the intensity and kind of spectacle that comes as a result of that, I think can be genuinely fun and exciting. Um, so, I mean, at least in North America, it looks like E3 will continue to be that center of gravity for the foreseeable future. For better or worse, you get reminded very blatantly that, like, this is a human enterprise. There are some real people who are putting in some, like, long hours trying to make for the best possible event for all of us. Well, this year is a digital event, and there are lots of questions about what E3 becomes in the future. There's a lot of, lot of chatter about that. So what do you hope to see from it? come sort of 2022 or beyond that what, what are your hopes for the for the future of e3 and what, what would you like to see it has to become more social and i think that is a thing that e3 was like leaning towards i i think it's like important to remember like what function e3 served back in the day you know in the 90s video games were for children or dorks um and mainstream publications covered it once a year and the all video game companies need to put all their money into one basket and pray that the New York Times wrote that story, right? Now it's the opposite. I mean, sure, newspapers are still <laughs> catching up, but otherwise, it, video games are the center of culture for young people. I think The Guardian wrote about that. And uh, because of that, E3's purpose no longer has to be, hey, let's get people excited for this one day. Let's put all of our money into it. It has to be something different, uh, which it seems to be more celebratory, right? Like that, that kind of has become a purpose. 
So I, I hope that whatever we see it become in the future um, is, like you said, Chris, more inclusive, that, um, that it is this thing that is bringing people in, that is the center of gravity, that is um, serving a larger communal purpose. And it is significant, you know, obviously, despite uh, the drawbacks of everything of all of us being in a pandemic that's going to be running about two years long by the end of this, or hopefully just two years long by the end of this, um, I think it is significant that when we are being in this digital format now, I think it's it's nice that people can more people can connect. Obviously, it loses some of that social element. So I too, like Chris, hope that that is retained, and I selfishly hope that we all go back in person. But I think keeping some elements digital does help kind of connect to a broader community, and there can be various aspects of that. Obviously, the press conferences are something that are typically digitally available to begin with, but are there some of those panels that have been introduced or some other versions of connectivity or versions of celebrations that um, is something that you know people can experience in, in person or at home too, to feel like they're a part of that entire celebration of the festivities of the news breaking and they can get a sense of that same excitement that they may be feeling home alone because for whatever reason they're not able to attend. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful that um, the, the live aspect becomes a lot more like Comic-Con um, in the future in which it's much more a celebration of games, games culture and community um, while you're there live in person. Um, I, I think the ESA, you know, as everyone pointed out, has been sort of moving towards this hybrid thing where, you know, half of it is still behind closed doors meetings with retailers and then they're trying to, you know, introduce more people into it and they can play some games and look at some big booths. But, you know, I I think, you know, Comic-Con um, does that um, thing where it, it does service the fan aspect of it really well by having that, um, you know, focus on the show floor of, you know, the culture, things you can buy, you know, artists you can interact with, um, while still having that sort of hype vehicle and talking about the next big thing. So, you know, if, if anything, you know, I, I, would, I, would, I would hope that, you know, they push that sort of live community aspect more um, when, when you're there. How far do you think they should go in that direction? Like, would you like to see them take a, a full-on Gamescom approach where there are, you know, potentially tens and th tens of thousands of people, you know, having a full public day, you know, dedicated to, you know, th that's really servicing the public more than the trade side, the business side? Yeah, I, I think a traveling E3 show that goes around all year <laughs> and visits multiple <laughs> cities. Some people um, will hate you for that one. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not in the USA. Um, <laughs> Um, but, but, but yeah, and, and you know, I, I realize that, yeah, like, you know, pa PAX does this to a certain extent um, a, 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 as well. But, you know, I, I think what, um, you know, what, what E3 um, could be is, um, you know, still have that spotlight on the biggest um, and the best things and, you know, allowing people to, yeah, as I said, get hyped, get excited about their, you know, their favorite hobby. Yeah, I, and just to build off that really quick, I, I think the thing that developers are going to have to ask themselves now, and we've really hit this turning point culturally, is, can we let go of the secrecy, right? Because Comic-Con works because they put talent in front of people. But when you put talent in front of people, suddenly they have leverage. And that means that, you know, they, they're they worth more money. I mean, just to be like very blunt. Um, and that goes for voice actors, that goes for designers. And I think there is a version of E3 in all conferences that makes a lot of sense where, yeah, we don't need to have vertical slices for every game. They cost a ton of money. They take up a ton of hours. There can be a distraction. But if these people become celebrities in their own right, that can take their place. That can that can create these Comic-Con environments. And I, I would love to see that. I think it would be healthy for the industry as a whole for people to actually be, again, in front of their games, not just behind them. Evan, actually, my my I'd love it. You mentioned the Gamescom model, but as a business journalist, I actually find I, I love E3. I love all the excitement of it. I love the buzz of it. But as a business journalist, it's a nightmare. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's just like it's sure. busy and noisy, and I want to talk about sales figures, right? And um, and uh, and it's uh, it's it's there's almost there's two almost two parts of me. There's the fan that wants to see the big booths and the exciting the, all the noise and stuff, and then there's the part of me that wants to have a little quiet place to have a cup of coffee and a and a and a, and a, and a bit of wi-fi and a bit of networking um so i i think i would like to have a, a sort of business show and a consumer show 
that sort of sit side by side. I don't know how you, 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 you I don't know how you fit that into the LACC, but um, it, I, I think, I think, I think that's something that I would like. But I mean, I, at the same time, they're sort of moving to that sort of hybrid model anyway, and I, and I think transition is always tough. But I, I'd be, I'd love to see that kind of thing. Yeah. Is that something you're interested in? I mean, with with the kind of competition that we've referenced here with PAX, right? It's just essential that these events have a true purpose that is contemporary and and, and you know really self-aware of what else is happening and the other options people have. I mean, when you go to PAX, right, you see families. I see lots of, you know, thinking back to the PAXs I've gone, it's like mothers and daughters and, and you know, fathers and sons that, that have like decided to take their vacation to this event because they're a huge fan of, you know, GameX um, and they want to hang out and, and be a part of that, right? And I mean, like, it's it's interesting to get a sense of like our, our kind of multifaceted feelings in this conversation because like GDC is probably my favorite event of the year because the press is not the focus at all. There's not like big announcements or anything. And yet we as press get some of our best material out of GDC because it's an environment where game developers are just talking to each other and we're kind of listening in. And it's an environment where game developers like have their guard down. They're not, you know, engaged in the deep secrecy that I think Chris is referencing there very often, right? They're doing panels, they're sort of, you know, talking up their design and, you know, their their narratives and like, you know, what's kind of interesting to them in the moment. And that's a great environment for interviewing and discovering stuff. So I don't know. I mean, wh whichever direction E3 takes long term, I just think it sort of has to not compromise and sort of meet in the middle of all this stuff, but really have clarity and identity. Well, I'm very, very much aware of the time, so I'm going to wrap up with a, a sort of fun last question. So what is a memorable E3 interview that you can share with us? Mine's a little sad in retrospect, but I still very much enjoyed the conversation that I had. Um, it was before No Man's Sky came out, uh, and I interviewed Sean Murray, and he was so excited to talk about this game and to talk about all the procedural generation and the, that work that was going into it. Alongside that interview, he had one of his programmers like showing me behind the scenes how that procedural generation worked. I thought it was such an interesting way of doing an interview where I was actually seeing behind the scenes elements of the of what was actually going into the game while he was speaking to them in what was a really eloquent way. Uh, so it's it's only a little sad in retrospect because obviously those are there are a lot of moments where developers kind of maybe regret like did I say too much? Did I accidentally promise something that I wasn't intending on promising? But I think ultimately at the core. For me in that experience, like I could just see his passion and I could just see his pride for what his team was working on. And I think that there's something still, you know, really genuine and, and true and, and heartfelt about that. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, for me, uh, my, my favorite interviews are, are usually the conversations that happen at restaurants or bars afterwards, um, because E3 interviews tend to be very uh, prepared. Um, people are very press trained for them. Um, so I guess I'll share uh, something else, which is my favorite moment of E3, and it's very ego-driven. Uh, but a, a few years ago, I was at E3 at the front of the main hall, right? And it was the final day, and I was doing a direct-to-camera of like, hey, this is E3, I'm going to wrap it up. And at this point, I'm like running on no sleep, and I'm like covered in sweat. I look like an absolute mess. And from behind me, this very lovely, tall and handsome man comes uh, around front, steps in front of our camera as I'm preparing, bops me on the nose and just goes, too cute, and then walks off. And I, um, it was like the most, it was the nicest I've ever felt in my entire life. Like you, Chris, uh, you know, the best conversations at E3 happen outside the floor, outside these kind of formal settings. Dean Hall is someone who's just an absolutely unfiltered, you know, uh, water hose of, of information and design thoughts. So like anytime I sit down with him, it's a chance to sort of sort of you get the sense that he's peering into his sketchbook. I mean, this is someone who's fundamentally optimistic and imaginative and, you know, half the things that he tells you, like his idea for a mountaineering game or because he climbed Mount Everest, like they're not going to come true, but it's still like uh, just someone who's just constantly dreaming and, and is like completely removed from that scripted, you know, media trained personality that we're referring to here. Real quick for me, just like Chris, not the best, but for me, the most embarrassing, um, having to play Sekiro in front of Miyazaki um, and then do an interview, couldn't get past the first 
the, the first enemy I, I, I came across and then I had to do a 15 minute chat with them. So that was lovely. Um, well, thank you so much. Um, that's it from us. Thank you to Tina, Randy, Evan and Christopher. Thank you so much. Um, do check out all of our websites um, for all your E3 news and goings on. Um, have fun during the, uh, during, the, during, the, during the event and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. IGN Summer of Gaming has officially partnered with the ESA for E3 2021. IGN Summer of Gaming is now all summer long. From major press conferences and announcements at E3 2021, to the IGN Expo with exclusive gameplay and reveals, to exciting first looks at the hottest new games and in-depth developer interviews, IGN Summer of Gaming has it all. IGN Summer of Gaming begins right now. I love Pac-Man 99. I, it's so fun. And the thing is, I'm super competitive too. I'm just like, bet, you think you're gonna get a top 20? Get out of here, get out of my face, get out of my face, get bunched on. It's my first session, I got like top 30. The next session, it was top 20. And then the third session forward, it was top 10. I just, I see what I want and I go get it. I want my first place and they're gonna give it to me. I don't care if I don't get first place, it's fine. But that's like the mentality I have for it. And, uh, yeah, I'm actually super competitive. Thanks to our sponsors at DoorDash. Get more from your neighborhood from restaurants and convenience to grocery and corner stores. All right, folks, well, we got some more great games coming our way. No question about it, but... What is it that draws us into a game story? Is it a whodunit, maybe becoming a heroic protagonist perhaps, or maybe it's just a story that makes us laugh, that keeps us coming back. When we return, more on what stories we love in our games. Summer of Gaming has officially partnered with the ESA for E3 2021. IGN Summer of Gaming is now all summer long. From major press conferences and announcements at E3 2021, to the IGN Expo with exclusive gameplay and reveals, to exciting first looks at the hottest new games and in-depth developer interviews, IGN Summer of Gaming has it all. IGN Summer of Gaming begins right now. Those that surprise me, those that make me think, that leave room for interpretation, 
what I've always looked for in a game was just this really grand epic story that makes you feel like you're part of a universe that's not Earth. Ooh, I'm such a sucker for narrative-driven stories. I appreciate really good character development. Stories that you can shape yourself. You know, I always go back to the telltale. Just having the option to have choices, to really feel like your choices matter. Like, what do you mean? I picked this and he died? Feeding you breadcrumbs of what happened here and what this story is, and it's up to you, the player, sort of like infer what you will and just take you down this rabbit hole. I just got done playing Red Dead Redemption 2. I didn't want to stop playing it. I've been tempted to just start playing it immediately after I've finished it. I like stories that are willing to explore more difficult topics, but not treat it like it's something that you can joke about. Games are empathy machines. And I can just appreciate when they have this absolutely massive narrative and so much going on that it could absolutely turn people away from it and they don't care. Set in places or have storylines that are incredibly depressing or uh, morbid, but then they inject these, these bits and pieces of humor. Um, Fallout does that really well. For me, the stories I appreciate the most in games ugh, are always women kicking ass. Welcome back to E3 Live from Los Angeles. And I want to continue this conversation about storytelling in games. Every game has some sort of story to tell, but some games have really taken their narratives to cinematic levels. Games like <gasps> The Last of Us, Detroit Become Human, Bioshock, Red Dead, just to name a few. Guys, what type of stories do you like in your games? Alex, I'm starting with you. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the easy uh, answer for me will always and forever be Halo. Of course. Uh, the Halo <laughs> 1 story, it, it was actually one of the first, like, as a kid, like, one of the first, like, narrative games I actually paid attention to for some reason. I got into the books, and then I, from there it just became a, a fascination. Um, another one that always stays in the back of my mind uh, was Skies of Arcadia. Oh, uh, okay. I, I, I love that game as a kid. And something about like being a pirate, but believing in yourself and all that, it was just like a very uplifting story. Yeah. And I, I enjoyed it so much. So yeah, th those are ones that stand out for me. Jackie, what about you? Um, I think I've spoken at length about the Super Nintendo games that have had a profound influence on me. Um, but actually I wanted to talk about The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2. Um, you Great. know, yeah, I mean, pff, duh, right? I'm glad somebody's finally talking about it. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I mean, have y'all heard about this, this game This little before? independent studio, yeah, exactly. no, no, nobody's talking about it. It's not extremely it. popular, but, yeah. um, I'll be honest, though, like, that game haunts me to this day. Sure. I just sure. remember, I mean, the opening scene. Yeah. I still have not seen a game just punch me in the face like that. Like, right. I just remember being terrified, sad, angry and then i was like i'm two minutes into this thing and i don't know what the hell is going on here yeah. you know what i mean it's and heavy yeah it was just extremely heavy um and i thought the last of us 2 was fantastic as well i know uh, you know people are quite divided on that title but for me with ellie and abby it's just we saw how human they were yeah you know um there were times where i absolutely hated them and yeah. i was just like i can't stand you and then there were times where they had me weeping and i would just totally empathetic what to their situation exactly yeah, yeah. and i think that um you know there's there's tons of amazing games out there that you know we're, we're just like man that hits me right in my gut and my core that sure. i can definitely relate to that but just those two titles in particular it's just a fantastic well, series and especially yeah. for the last of us and their storytelling right for you're talking about things we can relate to for me it's the ones where we can't but we still love that game and so yeah. for me you know the final uh, scene in the last of us no spoilers right but the final time you're playing the last of us part one yeah. like i remember finishing that and putting it down and be like I, I got killed because I thought I was going to have a choice. I thought it was going to do the video game thing of, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? Mm -hmm. yeah, and I got yeah. destroyed because I didn't do what the thing it needed me to do. And so yeah. I remember finishing that and being like, Joel's the bad guy. And having that conversation about that with so many different people. And yeah. then going to part two and then throughout the game being like, don't do that, Ellie. But I keep wanting to play as her and understand what's happening. Yeah. Like That's the power of video games, right? Indeed it is. Storyline-based games aren't the only ones we love. When we return here at E3 Live from L.A., we are taking a look at our favorite first-person shooters of all time. Hey, Don't go anyway. I wonder what Golden Boy is going to say. Gonna I wonder what Golden Boy is going to say, all right? We'll shoot our shot in just a few. <laughs> Thank you. 
my brain turned on playing Super Mario Brothers for the NES. I started with Super Mario on the NES. 